it going, chat? All right, everybody. All right, all right, all right. Um, okay. Thank you, Offense of some Jewel, H-J-M-I-Y, Civ, Too Tough, and Call Me Jay with a 32-month reset. Welcome back. Um, we're here for the Montreal Major, so, well, I'm home, but co-streaming it. Um, so, first off, big thank you to Ubisoft. We do have all the drops on the stream today. So, if you watch for an hour, I think it is, or two hours, sorry. Why did that not update? I think it did. Hopefully it did, because I spent a lot of time doing that. Uh, shoot. Um, okay, I think if you watch for an hour, you get the Maverick weapons. Oh, no, it did update. Maverick weapon skin, uh, two hours cap can weapon skin, three hours attendee charm, attendee uh, weapon skin at four hours. So pretty, uh, pretty easy. So thank you very much to Ubisoft for hooking that up. Um, additionally... Um, thank you very much as well for allowing me to coast through the major. So we get the coast through the major today, BDS versus W7M, the reveal panel, everything. So thank you to Ubisoft for allowing us to do that as well as, um, as well as, uh, have drops on the stream. So yeah, let's do it, dude. Not bad, not bad at all. Not bad at all, dude. Go Lions, go Lions, dude. All right. Well, I'm excited for this reveal. Um, so, by the way, after the reveal, I can talk to you guys uh, about the new season. I can't say anything yet. happens if i did um i don't know probably ubi just wouldn't invite me to like you know have early access to the seasons anymore also there will be a youtube video dropping um immediately after the reveal so after the reveal is done we have a youtube video going up a little shortly after so He is rake dancing as Rook. Ooh. Uh, Griffin, thank you very much for the 44 month three sub. Welcome back. All right. Let's see what we got. Taking on W7M, storylines galore, it's rich. The history from both of these organizations are incredible because these gentlemen mm. are incredible. Finally on time. I'm always on time, dude. What do you mean? And specifically when we get to these kind of matches, this is where we really get to enrich in your knowledge and your thoughts. Leo, how are we feeling about the overarching theme of this match? You no, know what? I feel like from playing against these guys, Speaking of BDS, there, like I, I just hated it. Like I have to say, like playing against Prime Psycho, it was, it was so, so hard. Every time you play against these guys, like there's nothing you could do. You think about Breed it's the same story. W7M, on the other hand, I feel like you're mm. more of a unit, more of a strategy. In the stream, but yes. 
you know, it's it's gonna be entertaining. I'm just hoping we don't get the same result of their EWC final. You know, I beat BDS, and I can say they were hard to beat, to say the least. And then for WCN, I never really got to experience them, but just watching both these Is that teams good play, or more? it's truly an experience for me, being, you know, a historic player for so long and now being on this talent. I mean, I love seeing the vibrance that both these teams can bring to the talent of both these rosters. I mean, it's truly good now. extraordinary to be in this situation. All right. And these 10 guys here, here we are, are chat. creating history. Yep. They are the first two teams that have contested an S tier event back to back. Esports World Cup, they played against each other. Of course, BDS won that 3 0. And the next S tier event, we're at the Major in Montreal just what, three, four months later? And they're back here in the final again. They're starting history as the, the only teams to have ever done yeah. that. The caliber of players, the caliber of teams that we have coming up. In it's going to be a good final, There's too, no honestly. It's going to be a good final. <clears throat> Well, it, you know, it's been domination, I feel like. I feel like BDS always, you know, always there. Uh, they should have won Manchester, in my opinion. Yeah, I think that was a crazy fluke from Beast Coast, but technically Whoa, the better team was in Europe. That's an now. On the yeah, day, I mean, Beast Coast were far better. Yeah, Listen, absolutely. Beast Coast was not there at WC. They are not here now. BDS is the better team in the long run. If you look at W7M, sure, they were there. That. They were there at EWC. They bias. Were so bias, dude. So looking at the teams, the two teams that have been Alfama's got that bias. No fighting <laughs> for major title. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Like, Do I want to win? Uh, I think BDS wins probably, but I think I would like to see W7M win. You know, BDS is going to walk away with it here, or W7M can conquer them and actually get their first title as a unit together. And I actually like the psychology of it as well. I like the psychology of the fact that BDS has absolutely owned W7M in a final previous yeah. But it, at this event, mm -mm, it's on a little sort gang. Some of vibes. On BDS, so both teams have, you know, they've got. Uh, 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 the thing is, do you count the best of one as like a true testament, especially going eight seven? Don't Lord Kai. Sorry, everybody, that missed getting in here. BDS, which they may be needed in their mind. Had they not played them, uses has a hundred and twelve kills. What the? <laughs> but the fact they've beaten them already allows that in their mind. Now, in terms of uh, the goat discussion, because we're, we're we're getting a little lax here. We're just enjoying this. Where do we rank Shiko in this? How far up that ranking with the history and now the presence? Where where does he sit for you, Liam? I feel like he's missing trophies to even contest with Pengu. I think Pengu will always be up there. Yeah. But as as much as we go into the years, if Shiko can then build his own dynasty with BDS, it's already quite late in his career. I've got to say, Pengu started when he was 18 and he started gaining titles there. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if he can go with BDS and start winning so many SR events, that will be What's for up, buddy? sure uh, uh, contestable, on, I think. Man. I think just at individual prowess Watching the reveal. and what Psycho brings to the table and what <coughs> he consistently oh, is, brings, is that's more mm -hmm. impressive to me yep. than anything, is that he's been going for as that's long as he has, and he yeah. still puts up those numbers consistently across the board. Ooh. That's truly what makes a top tier. You're player. not there? Speaking of Psycho, we did have uh, a, no. uh, an interesting not for this tweet event. come from him on X. Do we call it a tweet anymore? What do we call it? Which one are you going to do? we call it an X? Don't call it X. Maybe I'll be at the Invitational. As of right now, I won't even be at that, but... EWC, and I'll tell you in a few hours, Mercy Boku for the free major. That was a message directly Where are they at? to his opponents. Uh, Montreal. Them, saying that he is going to win the major after he won EWC right against them. Montreal. Oh, hold on, chat. And, Sorry. And develops this character arc. <laughs> and this off. an absolute monster. I was you, about to say it's my Ubisoft connect just popped up. We, we used to not see that from him, but he's been he's been on a run on Twitter I, like this, the past six gonna, months. I was going to say, he's been on his villain arc. Yeah. As long as I've known Shaiko, I barely have seen him talk. I've seen him smile here. I've seen him talk the talk on Twitter. So he's definitely changing his uh, just the way he functions as a whole. Well, we do have the teams getting ready behind us, but we've got uh. something to get ready for that I think I'm excited about a little more. We've got the Year 9 Season 4 reveal panel coming up. Uh, who you have got tired of you sweating your nuts off with a buzz G? What's meant to be a fun match, I guess. Dude, at the time, no one even knew that that, that thing was that good, okay? Listen, I'm undefeated in creator show matches, that's all I'm saying. I feel like it's like the I'm undefeated. I was playing the Chonka. Listen, I was troll. This is what I do. I make things interesting, okay? I troll for like half the time. And then, you know, I also want to make it interesting. I don't want to just throw and get like, you know, 7-0'd. So I make it interesting. Then I sweat a little bit and I bring it back. 
looking forward to seeing that, but also other things. Jack, what's your hopes for this panel? What are your what are you looking for? The announcers' mics are bugging out. Changing? How so? I mean, look, I'm I'm a I would say I'm a super user of this game. I play so much rank. Like I absolutely you have a love Discord it. committed for that. Yeah, I have a Discord committed just for rank. I get notifications uh, uh, every day. Every day. <laughs> so do every I. single day. Do you want to play rank? Do you want to play rank? The one big topic in ranked right now is shields. Yep. So I hope shields do get addressed and that we can have a little bit more balanced gameplay with regards to that. Leo? I feel like for me, because oh. I never answer we'll the notifications, see. that's because sometimes I judge just solo queue. And my experience as a solo queue player in rank is it, it can be frustrating sometimes to face a five stack. I know we've been speaking about like having multiple letters or queue systems. Who's winning this perk? On, I think BDS wins, but I hope that W7M wins. But I could see it going either way, realistically. I think back in Brazil, they talked about like a cross player or something like that, being able to bring Xbox to PC, PlayStation, whatever it is. That's something that's kind of unique for me, to be able to go back that far to now bring them all together. So I'm really hoping that this is in this man. Jack, what do you think the esports community is looking for the most? Do you think it is that shield rework? I, I think so, because it's dominating the way that esports is played right now, because either the esports are banned and there's no strategy at the esports. The shields are banned and yes. there's no strategy, you know, really in the banning, or you leave you try and play the strategy in the ma in the operator band phase, and then Shields just kind of abuse the meta right now. It's the big storyline of what's happened at this major in this season. So I think that's what they'll be looking for. Lax, how much does it impact the community with these panels? I mean, it tremendously. I mean, you get to see a completely different look at Siege, a different approach to Siege, especially with... There was like a buzz? Oh, I don't know. Touched, or just even certain aspects of siege and how you play the game as a whole so i mean it's great for the community it's great for the esports as a whole well this is very exciting leo i was gonna let you talk yeah. but we are getting underway this is the big one this is the countdown year nine season four by the way chat video going on youtube on the new season right after the reveal slightly after so Sub on YouTube, if you haven't already, at King George. Yeah, I already played the new season, and I already have a, I have a video. It's not up yet. It'll be up after the reveal is done. So slightly after. I think it goes up like oh, 2.30 or something. Here it is. Operation Collision Point, the fourth and final season of year nine of Rainbow Six Siege. I'm your host, Camille Salzar Hadaway, here with a jam packed reveal show. We've got a ton of new features to talk about, including some big player protection news. Now, let's welcome Creative Director Alexander Karpazis to give you a full overview of Operation Collision Point. All right, here it is. This is Operation Collision Point, and it's our grand finale of seasons in this year. It ends with a bang, and it brings to the table everything we've been working on together this past year nine. We can't wait for you to get your hands on these new features. It starts with crossplay. We are allowing PC players and console players to finally this play is good with the crossplay feature. So this makes me happy. Are, whatever platform this is great. you can play together with your friends. You're going to see the reputation system come on, on with all of the feedback that you've provided us in the past. We are remastering Blackbeard, and he is the true point man in the Siege roster. Balancing teams bring some balancing changes too, not just for shields in general, but some other operators that you might see. We're so thankful for all of you who participated in the beta. The Siege Cup's pretty it cool. For everyone the reputation system, if it's better. So, so far, we're we're doing siege pretty good. Mode. The BB you'll thing, be to play test all you'll, of you'll what see. We announce next week and let us know your feedback through our six fix. So stick with us. We have a lot to cover and stay tuned. With Operation Collision Point, friends who play on console and PC can now join together in lobbies to team up, hop into matches, and then crouch, teary-eyed, over each other's fallen operators while solemnly vowing to get the refrag. Here's UX designer- This is great. With the I don't see why anybody would ever update. be mad about this. 
So basically, they're adding they're adding crossplay. So the details As will be here. PC and consoles crossplay. <clears throat> we know that fair play, especially cheating, is a concern. So we are excited to confirm that Mousetrap V2 will be a part of this feature to keep things balanced. We'll share more details about Mousetrap Let's go, in the baby. next segment. But for Lee, now, they we are the Mr. to bring crossplay between all platforms in Siege. Console players will have three pools to play in: the platform-specific pool, the consoles-only pool, and the PC crossplay pool. They'll be able to select that in the crossplay matchmaking setting in the options. See, setting. this is amazing. So this is great. Experience for console players in the PC pool. We have made console players indistinguishable from other PC players. Players will be able to invite each other seamlessly I guess across it's PC good. and console platforms through Ubisoft Connect. Console players will be They're, able to they'll get rid of the toxicity. Their PC rank as well as their console rank by playing directly on consoles in the relevant pools. See, that's great. There's three options basically: console, only Xbox or only PlayStation, Xbox and PlayStation or Xbox, PlayStation, PC. That's great. No one should ever be mad about that. It's ten out of ten. Alexander Carpazes and UX designer Rollin Poe are here to give you the full rundown. With the changes to crossplay, we're looking at Mousetrap now. Now that keyboard and mouse is allowed to play on console with PC players, we will be re-examining the way that we tackle players who try to circumvent that. We have a new three-strike system that detects if you are playing with mouse and keyboard in the wrong player pool. And on the third strike, you'll be moved to the PC pool for 90 days. Our machine learning model is constantly improving with This is great. So we are becoming more and more accurate over time. And the fact that we are releasing this now I, means I think for the third strike thing, yeah. Detecting the right players. I mean, if I'm seeing this right, you basically get three Match chances. Is coming but in season four. we'll see. And that means we can react faster to detecting cheaters and getting them out of the game as soon as possible. If you're in a match with a cheater and they're banned, you will see the notification pop up and the match will be canceled. The player will be removed from the game, and every legitimate player will not be punished for canceling the match. I think that's good. I mean, I've only seen a cheater get banned like once in my games, but hey, it's nice. That means we've changed everything top to bottom, front to back. And everything starts with the actions that are tracked in game. Right now, the reputation system is not the best, so if they can get this right, though, it's huge. These are standardized ways of understanding actions and act as the building block for your reputation. The goal okay. of the reputation system is to catch recurrent and highly toxic players, guide and reward players who are showing positivity. And the way we're achieving that is looking over a long period of time to really understand a pattern of players' behaviors. Over the past 100 matches in 90 days, what has a player been up to? This means that a single- This is good. Throw I'll tell you guys why. This is a way you didn't expect so, gonna send your reputation plummet. at least if it's 100 matches or 90 days, like, I play 1,000 matches in 90 days. So, like, if I got reported 20 times, it would just kind of still screw you over. Negative units, as well as exactly where you are in the standing. So how close are you to achieving that next upper bracket? One final note is that with the launch of the refresh reputation system, everybody's scores is getting reset. That means okay. you'll start the season with zero positive units, and zero negative units. We really want you to engage with the system. This, this system is actually really important. Dishonorable still incoming, yes. System, and we'll be listening to your feedback once again. Like if and they can hit the, if they can do the reputation system, space, like and it like works properly, it'd be huge. As of right now, it just gets abused a lot. Acceptable. Full stop. And with year nine season four, Rainbow Six is taking a strong stance against toxic communication with the introduction of automated text chat moderation. And that means that every message that's sent in the text channel will be assessed, and those that are determined to be disruptive will either be flagged or prevented from being sent in the first place. Okay, calling and people- we determined which messages- Calling people trash, I think should be okay. Assemble a diverse <laughs> team and go through many different categories and establish varying levels of acceptability. A good rule to you, think about is if you're in this room, with nine other strangers, would you and they be okay hearing these things? 
saying these things? And if the answer is no, then those are the sort of messages that might get flagged or removed. If a player sends multiple flagged or removed messages during a match, they will be automatically muted for the rest of that match. If players show a repeated pattern of disruptive communication, they will face the preventative mute penalty, meaning they will be muted in both text and voice for 20 matches. We know that okay. many people are going to have different opinions on what's like acceptable and not acceptable. And this is also a new system, but we are confident that it's the right step in securing text chat and we'll be very closely listening to your feedback. That way, working in collaboration with you, we can make text chat a great place for everyone. I know you're eager for the big moment we've got coming mm. up. And believe me, we have some exciting <laughs> things to share. But before we dive into that, okay. we've got a special surprise for you. A mid-reveal treat. It's Maestro, like you've never seen him before. Let's go, baby! <laughs> Yeah, I know. I actually, dude, there's like no nice Maestro skin, so I'm actually excited that this is here. So, Even on vacation, that one's good. So cool. That's great. Next up, we've got a peek under the hood of some improvements to the matchmaking system that live content director Christopher Budgen is going to walk you through. All right. This so. season, we're bringing two new huge improvements. One is team rebalancing, and the other is Phantom Player. Phantom Player is a new way that we calculate skill. This could be really squad. big. How that works? If it works it properly. Two aspects into account. One is the size of the squad. So are you two, three, four players within a squad, or a full stack, for example? Because you're giving callouts, you're playing and coordinating with each other, maybe getting a refrag off of each other. These are all elements that players who are playing separately are not able to do, certainly not as easy. Another is the difference of skill within that squad. So for example, if you're a champion pairing with a copper, that would be a large difference in skill. If a champion pairs with four coppers to drive down their average skill, it's not really fair to anybody in that lobby. With the Phantom player- This is actually really good, if it works. Group, and they'll ultimately be playing in a more fair lobby. We like to call this feature Phantom Player because it's as if there's a sixth player on the team in terms of skill. Phantom Player will be used within all of our playlists, including the Siege Cup, our most competitive playlists. We're also bringing team rebalancing. Now, this is something we've been testing on live in Year 9 Season 3, and we're ready to have this fully rolled out for Year 9 Season 4. What team rebalancing does is it looks at all the players on each team and just rebalances them to give an improved way to calculate the skill of both teams. So which squad should a team go to? Should it go on team A or team B? Now with the team this rebalancing good. feature, will be an improved way to make sure that the, the two phantom teams player are as close in skill as possible. It makes sure that if there's so like a champion with four coppers, that it'll make them play against higher ranks. Component of our engine. And that's why we were able to bring skill initialization last season Big improvements this season. So up yeah, until this point, so everyone knows. Matchmaking. Look out for more matchmaking improvements as we continue to evolve within Siege. Before this, Operation collision point match matchmaking has always been ranked 1.0 matchmaking. The Siege Cup. If you're ready to see what your squad. Yeah, it's harder to do, boost and stuff. So this will be good if it. it works, right? Game designer Robert Cole will give you all the details as we celebrate the full release of Siege Cup. <laughs> I actually the siege cup is cool. I mean last time I tried to play it it glitched out, but like you know, it was in beta before, so this is fine. This is this is a good thing I think. I wish they would make it at like more convenient times though. Like it's it's at like 3 p.m. in the afternoon. 
Stick together. Blanting, make noise. 15 seconds. It's the final. Let's get the win. Friendly victorious. Hostile eliminated. Yeah, there were. <laughs> there were. There, there were. He's holding a controller. There's PC prompts. They were also shooting bots at the end. But it's okay. So that everyone will be able to participate. We want Siege Cup to be the most competitive moment in the game. So matches in The Phantom player will. It will affect five stacks. Yes. That's the whole point of it. It affects everybody. It's. It's. Hold on. I want to see what this is. As we announced all the Siege Cup stuff. We'll be bringing our new Phantom player it, algorithm to Siege Cup. So the, this means basically this, the, the, it's, it's, the way that the Phantom player works is it, it makes it more Siege equal. So let's say there's like a champion and four coppers, right? On average, they'd probably play golds. The champion would stomp all the coppers and drop like 20 kills and they'd win the game and they could boost, right? Now it would add a six player that was also like diamond and it would count as like two players so that they played like diamond players and champion players. How will they be affected? This is the shield That's nerf. The game director Joshua Mills is here to tell you. Kicking off season four of year nine, we're going right after a problem that we're already seeing in our community, which is our ballistic shields. So fundamentally, they're performing in a more aggressive state than we intended. And we want to go in and address that. So what are we doing? One, melee priority will now be properly restored. Thank you! For example, a player melees a shield causing a guard break. The shield user will no longer be able to cancel that shield break with their own shield bash. Two, consecutive guard breaks will now have a stacking benefit. That defender can now increase the intensity of the guard break exponentially. Meaning if Monty This is actually really good too. Able to achieve a 100% guard break opening even on This is actually really good too. Three, we no longer ignore guard break actions due to the animation. For example, you made the blitz and the guard break animation plays. But as the shield is about to settle back down, you melee it again. Previously, that second melee would not have connected and the guard break animation would have completed with the shield settling. But now, that melee will connect and the guard break will be reset and have that increased intensity as mentioned before. Now jumping onto the shield mechanics themselves. We could just delete shields. Suppress the fire is a tool to stop shield users from sprinting and closing the distance. Yep. Suppression this will is good too. less bullets to trigger from 10 to 5 and less bullets to reach the maximum intensity of suppression from 40 to 20. Maximum suppression lasts for 7 seconds when not receiving any So basically I, I think how this plays out is a lot of people are going to be shooting be shields. We're taking it from 65 damage all the way to 0. So shields when they melee you they just only knock you back. You no lethal, damage. You must be able to receive lethal. Being lethal means being vulnerable. The last change is that we're modifying the shield collision detection when shield bashing to more closely follow the detection used for knife melees. This will eliminate some odd moments when a shield bash hits when it otherwise shouldn't have. Thankfully, here we are. There's some like significant shield nerves that that will help. Going after that frustration around the fact that she I don't know if it's gonna, gonna you know and enter it all at once. This is good too. What we want to do here is require Ying to have a little more precision on how she deploys her candelas, but also give our defenders a chance to react to them. They're pretty good nerves, no yeah. I hope that they're, they're, they're enough. Shoot the candelas before but they go off. we'll see. The will now have a bigger window in order to do that. Ying base has a little delay. It's good. Sense change as well. In season four, we're looking into sense. They've had a low presence in the game since they were introduced. We're looking to add a little more functionality and utility to the gadget. This is actually pretty cool. I do actually like this a lot. What can it do now? One, Sens can toggle it on and off at will. So if the wall's deployed, they can go ahead and turn it off. They can even deploy the gadget off and then turn it on whenever they feel like this it. This is actually pretty cool. emits a light wall. So it's not a smoke. All gadgets that can normally see through smoke will no longer be able to see through So even like Warden can't. As we continue to That's actually like a pretty significant change that, that people like, I don't know, evil. haven't been talking about as much. The team is rolling out the beginnings of a new progression system. I think, I don't think Glass, I think Glass still can. Maybe if I, I forgot. To explain how it all works, please welcome UI artist Gaston Rojas. Our goal of introducing the badge system to Siege is to reward your long-term engagement by earning badges through in-game achievements. 
there will be badges for everyone, no matter your skill level. But mastery is highly rewarded. To unlock badges and upgrade them, you must complete this. This is actually challenges. pretty cool too. There are elimination challenges that require skills or assist with certain weapons. It's basically like a mastery badge there are system. Also badges that you can unlock by playing with a full permit squad. Others that you can unlock on your own by making plays and using game tools like grappling or drones. For now, there will be 22 badges and more on the way, with four different tiers to upgrade. Bronze, silver, gold, and chrome. The more you progress on the challenges, the fancier the badges you will unlock. I think this is cool. Career it's something that's like good, it keeps people more engaged. That Can't really complain quickly, about this, doesn't affect the game much. And future stats into one place. This is just the beginning, so expect it's more a cool additions to it's track a cool your menu progress. too. Blackbeard. Once a feared point man, this operator has seen less action in recent years as the game has evolved. But now, it's time to bring him back into the spotlight. Joshua Mills will explain everything about Blackbeard's remaster, but first, Blackbeard makes his triumphant return to Siege Tales. Oh, these are actually pretty cool, these Siege Tales things. Okay, he's not bad right now in his current state, first of all. He is rake dancing as well. Uh, hey, I'm thank you for everyone. What's good, George? Uh, just, yeah, we're seeing the Blackbeard reveal. First off, season four, we're introducing our second remaster of the game. Now, somehow you all figured this out. I don't know how you figured it out, who told you or whatnot. But yes, it is in fact Blackbeard. In the past, we had issues right out of the gate with the fact that blocking a one-shot headshot in a one-shot headshot game is a serious problem. But additionally, being able to be fully protected and be lethal at the same time is another big problem. Being able to address both those is what we're doing with this remaster. New gadget, new gameplay, you've never seen this before. He's the guy that goes first in the door or through the wall. That's what the hall of the <laughs> and burst through it taking that ground and running in first um we want to really adapt the way he plays inside a building so we can open up new to put it lightly i hate this eight we want him to be in the front line of the fire that means i absolutely hate this wants to go combat ready you simply ads and when you do that the glass panel will slide i already played this it is horrible also exposed black um keep in mind it's not that he's like super op or anything okay when i was playing him it's just really annoying to play against in the chest area but of course we all know where everyone's aiming reloads will not be safe reloads with blackbeard he'll need to take the time to reload in cover in order to make sure that he can do that while not exposing himself he used to be the Repel King, being able to be on Repel, hold long sights, and be protected. We're bringing that back. Obviously with the change that when he goes lethal, that shield comes down, and he can, in fact, be headshotted back or take damage back. Well, as far as getting up and meleeing Blackbeard, I highly yeah, recommend Yeah, you can go through castles, that, too. He still has all the same functionality of our ballistic shields. He can sure as hell melee you, you back. You can melee. Custom animations, new models, yeah. new gadget. When new you melee, melee, though, it's really hard to shoot people, make this one I will say. Package. If you want to bring some serious firepower and some protection, you bring Blackbeard. And there you have it. I, I absolutely, I'm not going to lie. I think Ubi has been pretty on point with most things they've been doing. I hate this Blackbeard update. Hate. It's just another shield, dude. With an AR. We're excited for you to experience all the new content. I don't know. It's been an incredible journey through year nine. Now, gear up for Operation Collision Point. And we'll beep, 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 beep. Uh, Shmox, they the five bits. Tell Ubi to revert that VJ. Oh, trust me. It's too. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I have voiced my displeasure for it. I have voiced my displeasure. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Overall, I think it's a good, um, oh, we're going to get two events this season. That's cool. Um, Oh, December 3rd is the release date, so we have that down. I mean, overall, it's a good... It's going to be a good season in terms of, like, the features and stuff that are in the game. I just... I don't know, man. Just not the BB update. Yeah, absolutely. Now Jinxie can really see what it's like playing against those PC players. And obviously, there's no more PC Master Race 
at this point. Now everyone can play against each other and really get a feel for how the game is all collectively together. Lax, uh, not Laxley, oh <laughs> god. You There's don't an look anything alike. You, like, you don't think so? Deep dark, and he's got gray and white. I don't know about the same muscle. Yeah, I think same it's muscle, close man. enough. Leo, obviously another change coming that will impact a lot of players entire, in their entirety is how they solo queue now. This is a big one. Yeah, I think like the, the fact that now you have a skill system. That, that Phantom player for me is a big story. Like I said, I was This will, this, like I said, there's a lot of things that are in this season that are good. I think the Blackbeard change is a complete miss. I'm gonna be honest, it's a complete miss in my opinion. Complete miss. But you know. But I'm glad it's gonna be there, and hopefully that's something I will feel when I go start a new solo queuing ranked. Jack, the uh, one that everyone I think was waiting for, hoping for, praying for, we have seen the shield rework, the crowd loved it, we loved it, the players loved it. What's your initial thoughts? Yeah, speaking of solutions, I mean, you know, the initial thoughts there is that shields needed a nerf, they got the nerf, and I feel like the players that have really high skill ceilings will still be devastatingly good on shields, but they won't be Shields will still be, by the way, so uh, for the shield update, I felt BB was kind of fine too. I would have rather had them just make a new operator, but whatever, it's fine. That would be incredible. I cannot tell you how many times in pro play it happened to me as Mira, as the anchor. I, I, alone against a Monty. I do not like the shield update though. Or sorry, the BB update. I still like the shield update is better, but they're still going to be annoying. Like. Once again, I played it like a limited test environment where we played like kind of casually and for fun. BB still was very annoying to deal with. Um, that was really annoying to deal with, and shields were still annoying as well. This is the game we've been waiting for. This is what we prayed for at the start. Fuck BB senses new prop. Not really, no. We are here. Done, Mr. Yeah, Donut. The grand final. Two teams that have got big story. I hate the BB remaster. I'm gonna be honest. I hate it. Head to head in some of the most important games. Yeah, I didn't get the reveal charm either. I don't know if they just like I don't know. I feel like it glitched out again. I swear it glitches out like every season. W7M, and then they Whatever. Here in Montreal, where W7M set themselves up with that win inside of the Swiss stage. These two teams are now getting very, very used. We're uh, watching in Discord Donut. BB is too good. I could tell you guys all about the new update and stuff. You, being a Frenchman yourself, you've been here before. Any questions you guys have? I've already played the new season. So I could tell you guys now. I'm allowed to talk about it at this point. Because it's like after the reveal is over, I'm allowed to. And I'll have a YouTube video going up, like, pretty much right now. All right, Suzzy, take easy. Have fun, dude. Ying, there's just a delay. You know how you can throw it on the ground and it pops immediately? There's just a two-second delay. He could, he could ADS really fast. It's, it's basically like regular ADS speed. This is the story of someone that earned his spot into BDS, that came in as a rookie and was the IGL, that went into winning his first major mm. with his team. This is the story of hard work, of talent, that anyone can do this if he trusts himself enough. This is the story of Likefak. He's gonna go on this stage as the IGL once again to gain a second major title with that team. You could use a laser with it. ADS is even faster. He has grinded so hard. He has grinded no, so hard. dude, the BB route. I'm telling you, it's... But not only that, it was only in like a limited test environment, but I did not like the BB work at all. Like it was a zero for me. I'm going to be honest, an actual zero. I just don't, I just don't like know why, man. I just don't know why it was necessary. He melees just like a normal shield. He can run through solid walls like Oryx. He could bash through castle barricades. He could ADS very quickly. Um, it's just, he's annoying. I'm going to be real. It's just an annoying fucking operator. It's not going to be like he's like broken. Like people are thinking. I, I mean, he's going to be strong. Psycho Phoenix, I just 68 month three sub. Welcome back. Very much appreciated. Um, but like, he's just annoying. He's just going to be fucking annoying. It's just another annoying operator to deal with for just no reason to me. 
just win. everything else that's coming in the new season great I'm a I'm a fan. And to speak of resilience, I'm a fan. Sheer tenacity in a player, but that is what Bolt's the BB update zero. Does this this tub counter BB? WC. I mean, it slows him down just like any other regular operator. Gets crushed. Another heartbreak. Losing to BDW. I mean BDS. Now I'm saying what you're saying. Losing to BDS, and then now finds himself. Shields will still be annoying next season. At least from my play test that I played, and they were still annoying. It's definitely better. It's definitely better. A lot of different players on both of these rosters, but when we look at these two specifically, how do they match up? Well, I want both of them to win after the after the messages that Leo and Gabe have both sent. But let's put them head to head because not only did they both have big emotional storylines, one of them is going to win a major today. Now, both of these players, both of these people, are the ideals of their team. But they are also both huge, mechanically gifted, and insane. Is there any sort of recoil flinch or even a shield is being shot? Not that I noticed, no. Not that I had noticed. a little bit more. Really, really good KDs. You know, obviously, you see, as you can see here, both positive and both playing very well at this tournament. Whoever wins today, whichever team it is, whether it's BDS, whether it's W7M, I absolutely guarantee you that the person that's on the winning team, Vault or Leafy Pack, they will be one of the key contributing mm. reasons for that victory. We have leading figures. We've got an unbelievable matchup to come, but there's only one more thing that we need to do. It's the proceedings of the map veto, Leo. We've got a best of five coming your way, and this is how it's going to pan out. Honestly, I'm excited, but I'm kind of terrified. Ooh. It's always, you know what? You're always excited, okay. and you're always kind of ter terrified when you go into a BO5. Yeah. Especially when you look at these two teams' map pools. Both of these teams, they only have one perma ban check. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, we're going to see BDS take away. Evie can go right through a castle door, no melee. Yeah. At least, at least, you know, from what I remember. What's on stupid fucking mistakes? But also, BDS absolutely love bank, so it's no real surprise to see these two bands coming out, Leo. But that consulate pick. Yeah, consulate pick from BDS. I'm not too surprised. They're making me taller with this patch? Not possible. Okay, it's not that best of a BDS. Not possible. If you look at W7M, it's one of the worst map. They've lost it 3 7 to FaZe, 3 7 to Furia. And all the way back in the grand final of EWC, who did he lose to in that grand final? BDS. BDS. And that was not even close to seven. Well, let me look at let me look at labs specifically here for W7M. This is a great map for them. They are on a seven game win streak. And when you think of BDS just recently beating FaZe, and again, I think that gave them a false sense of reality and a false sense of confidence because FaZe just did not look like they were in that game. They did not look like they could even get a foot in the door. It's not to discredit what BDS is, yeah. but again, I think it really just illustrates that they feel very confident going into this where W7M really understands this map and is going to show them why it's going to be a regret for them. Yeah, I think they'll change the operator bands up from yesterday Absolutely. at Nighthaven, will W7M. And then we're going to see Border and Skyscraper in terms of the bands from these two teams. Now, obviously, BDS, not really a huge fan of Border, and they lost this map to W7M in this tournament, so get rid of it. For W7M, mm -hmm. Skyscraper is literally BDS's favorite map. It's their number one map preference if they could get to it, so I'm not surprised to see these two maps taken away. Going into that clubhouse, this is worrisome. Fox made a very good point during the stage. You don't bring a team that you're better than to clubhouse. Clubhouse is such a default map. There's nothing that you're going to do that's going to surprise the team, that you're yeah. going to bring out out of nowhere that no one hasn't seen across the region. Every team across the board has played clubhouse, knows how it plays, the fundamentals that it would take. A game of clubhouse, to me, really comes oh. down to who is making the least amount of mistakes. Yeah, who do you guys have? Capitalizing on those mistakes. I 100% get that point, but when I think of that EWC final, Again, I feel you like could you could hypothetically in the new season play Montaigne, Blitz, Few Shield, Blackbeard, and Osa. It tells you that both of these teams are great at it. Well, let me tell you, both of these teams have a crazy win streak. W7M have won Shelly four times in a row now. Six for BDS. Honestly, pretty balanced map pool. I think BDS wins as well, but I, I hope W7M wins. Are we kickstarting an era of the Europeans or the Brazilians, Jack? The right. Europeans, of course. Backing them. It, it's as simple as that. No, I mean, look, I think BDS on paper, man to man, have better mechanical players. I think Leak Fuck is possibly the best IGL in the well, game right now. 
I don't see a world where Here's the thing, though. Don't get the Psycho That's Phoenix, thank you for the Twitch Time 68 month resub. Welcome back. Very much appreciated. But I will say there's an interaction that, that not many people are talking about. That's really strong. That's really strong. If you zap shields with a clash, they stagger. You know when you melee a shield and it like staggers? It um That's what uh you Montreal Major Grand Fight. Pretty good. Um yeah. Sense? I think you're way too worried about sense, dude. Sense is not that bad. I mean, it's definitely an improvement, and we'll see more sense play, but I think you're highly overestimating. A lot of players in this team have a really good, but we are better. So against them, uh, we are going to full focus on the gunfights to have the win at the end. When you face against BDS, you don't see like s such a tactical team. So I'm really confident to beat them. Look at five, but this time I'm going to show you who is the best red player in the world. Bro, get that guy some chapstick. You get your revenge. Now it's my turn. See you there. You need chapstick too. I need chapstick too, dude. We all need chapstick, really. It's pretty gold. Montreal! It is BO5. We're going to do bets for every map. Thousands of miles to be here. You tune in internationally to see the question answered. Who truly is the best this beautiful game has to offer? It's Championship Sunday, which means it is time to lock in another piece of R6 Esports history. Two oh. incredible contenders waiting right here to come out onto oh. this stage right now. And the first are on a Thank relentless you. mission to become number one with a bullet. It's BDS! All right. The Map one winner, chat. Bets are up. Ready to charge the stage. It's W7M! We're getting booed? I hope they win, honestly. cement their own legacy as part of the historic org. Lovin, Licky back. Just briefly, I know that this is vital time that you want to be taking to get ready ahead of what is such a crucial moment in your lives. But this is the second time we've seen you both in a grand final situation internationally this year. I'm going to come to you first, Lovin. Why can you beat BDS this time around? Because we are a better team, I think we are more prepared, and yeah, that's it. Why are you, Likifak, and your roster going to crush the dreams of your opponents here? Uh, we like the WCN, <laughs> it's a really good team, they look better than uh, Esports World Cup, but uh, unfortunately, it's again best of five, and it will be against a victory for BGS. Any final words for your opponent here, Lobin? Good luck. Good luck. Shake hands. All right. It's time to do a sound check in here, isn't it? Who do we think is going to win? Is it going to be W7M? Is 
He is rape baiting in this. Nikki, they had 25 months. Now, one thing I haven't done in this arena right. yet this weekend, and I want to do it right now. This is the home of Siege. It's grand final time. You've all come together. We're like one big family. Let's blow the roof off this place, all right? I want to see how loud we can get in Montreal. Montreal. Make some noise! <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's time to get into it. Jesse in town. Links. It's grand final time, baby. Tricast. Another live event. Communism. Tricast, and I have brought my two children to work with me today. Thanks, right. Dad. That's where you're starting off. That's Ed. where we're starting off. We're getting the jokes out of the way. How else did you think he was going to start? Be honest. Nah, I know. You can't trust anything with this guy. No, I was expecting originally Rob to throw to me, and I was going to make another joke about how he looks like a monkey. But I mean, like, <laughs> I didn't get that option. And Ian is just too objectively pretty yeah. for me to say anything about him. So I had to turn inward, and I had to, you know, some friendly fire. Shoot. You can't talk bad about Ian. Ian no, Chambers. it's impossible. I tried earlier, and I just ended up doing an impression of him by complete accident. I... My instincts wanted to emulate him so badly. Did you before we get into the actual match? There was such an if. Um, in, and then we're gonna everybody. get into the with uh, the very first map. Did you hear during the show match Manix impression of Ian? I did hear that. It was I awful. Think, I think he maybe could work on that a did little you, bit. Did you hear yesterday? Manic allegedly did an impression of me on the desk. It was also terrible. Well, I wouldn't envy anybody trying to sound like you. All right. Well, I envy myself <laughs> trying to sound like myself. <laughs> I think I'm pretty great. I am. I, my heart is warm whenever we get to Montreal. We've had a lot of events here on the same place where this game was created. The devs got to play in the show match earlier. And as Ian touched upon, it really does feel like a family event when we get to Montreal. It is nice to see a full barn today here in a very cold hockey arena. I hope that the matches I heard are is hotter like... than it is inside of this building. Well, Jesse, I mean, I would also hope that we have a better matchup because the Dude, last time these two teams faced, I swear, remember, W7M got everybody that's there has told me it's freezing cold. Maps. Is that is that correct? That's not good. Yeah, that's that's not ideal. Everyone has told me a single map here in Rainbow Six Siege. So we're hoping arena. for a better series, and I do think. I guess it's like a hockey ring. The players, even BDS themselves, have been saying that W7M look better than the last time they met. They got to experience it firsthand in the Swiss phase, where W7M walked away with a victory. So. Eight, seven. Starting to break you liked when people w got mad about the bolo ball joke. World, a Why? Very different from a BO5. Two teams that made it into the semifinals, widely considered to be you like two bolo? Of the teams in the top. Do you like it, the, the joke, or what? Were were you mad about bolo getting called ball? They did battle yesterday, and frankly, I mean, I'm I'm ball. I didn't think BDS would look as good as they did. No, I didn't either. Ball I think it's a case of BDS might just be peaking right at the right time. I know I mentioned in the desk mentioned that I said at one point BDS were looking weaker going into Montreal than they did going into Manchester, and I think in no small part that was true, but it stopped being true and. Half of the quarterfinal on Friday. The joke was funny and people got mad about it because it's funny. The semifinal against FaZe yesterday. Um, they look incredible. I don't know. Folks, friends, and enemies, it's time for map number one. We're about to go to Consulate. Short words before we get into the actual matchup. Either of you, final point. We're going to have a great game here. All five maps. BDS, take it. No, you're not supposed to say that at the start. <laughs> Game is ready though. Map number one. Caster Curse. With Ian Montreal, make some noise for your first map of our grand final. Oh, you'll get it, Curve. They already did the operator reveal. The operator reveal is just like um. The operator reveal is just Blackbeard, and he's become a shield with an AR now. It's, coming out. to be honest, terrible. Fans starting on the defense. <laughs> We're expecting a Dokabi or a Ying based on their previous bans that they've had on this map. And they'll stick tried and true. For BDS, my main question, are they taking shields out of the equation? We've seen some really good shield play coming in from Dots. A Monty ban would make a lot of sense coming out from BDS, but they switch the script. It'll be Grim coming out for them. Now we move on to the defense. I'm expecting a Fenrir and a Valkyrie if we keep with the trends. And of course, we have seen, I think, BDS ban a zombie on the map in this in the past mm. as well. So will they go with that? No. So far, Jesse, we are all three for three on the trends. He just reads numbers and it makes him seem so smart. I can't even. Okay, who makes these numbers, though? I, I find them. That's true. I guess you're not making them. You're not cooking the books. 
Cap game. I, numbers didn't say that one. Numbers don't always tell the story, Jesse. And to be fair, for I mean, dude, I hate you. I basically one thing this is the start of this game. Just this one of them to leave. Is despite the it just, I, I hope one day I just wake up do, and I just see, like, on the fucking Rainbow Six Twitter account that they deleted shields permanently. First bomb site, the basement here of Consulate, and before we actually see a single round get played, operators from BDS will still be locked in over the next 30 seconds. If you watch the reveal panel, this very well may be the last major where shields run rampant, so I know that the audience wants to cheer. Can we take a moment of silence for shields? Just a moment of silence? What part of silence do you not understand? Parker, I don't think they think the shields deserve the silence. The people yearn for change. The people yearn they for do. something new. Dot certainly doesn't. Dot's been playing shields for like a year and a half. He's like, man, they just got good again. After last night, you can see Capcom. I was ready to fly through my monitor. Bro. I was going insane. What's up, Bear? Right away in the hands of Bride. And this is something that BDS, I mean, if anybody's going to play the shield on BDS, it is Bride. However, of the different areas of the meta we have right now, you know, the spawn peak. in one corner, shields in another, BDS have been very firmly in that former category, running the Deimos, the Dokubi, and Bride only, at least in the EUL, for example, only flexing on the shields here and there, not at all a cornerstone of their strategy, but bringing it out right here, especially with Dokubi banned, on consulate attack, you really need every tool you can get your hands on. Saltov, no idea how close he was. They're just worried about this nitro cell or the impacts that could come through, but it looks like on first attempts, the wall gets open with no contention. Here we see a player by radio peeking around. Don't you guys just love immediately going out? Will this prompt the push or they love shields? I think they're going in for it, Parker. And an early death mark as well from Shaiko. W7M spread out amongst this. Do they even know that they're planting? Okay, they do. Uh, Electronaut, thank you for 30 month three sub. Welcome back. Very much appreciated. 30 months of the short king. Welcome back, buddy. If BDS want to get through the breach and get into the bomb site quickly, and you just sit back and let them come to you, how much more passive can you be? Oof. And you can see, I mean, obviously, Lobin with that pick playing a little bit off site, but the entire plan from W7. This is pretty defender sided, so we'll see. They just threw that. Well, they were trying to make an aggressive push. And it uh, did not work. It's mostly it's mostly just like the thing is, is it's just annoying. Shields are just really annoying to deal with. I don't even think they're like OP or anything necessarily. Like right now they are, I guess, but like they're still gonna be annoying. They won it 7-3. This was the first map they played on in their last BO5 against W7M. They won oh, by the way, chat, here's the new season video. Theory, even four rounds here is a good start to this finals. It's better than almost anybody else has been able to get against BDS. So, starting with a strong one like this, stopping that aggression is hugely important for momentum going forward. And I think especially bringing up that Man Manchester final is pertinent because even with Shaiko dropping biblically awful numbers for his career in that yeah. final, BDS as a whole struggling in that final, they still only lost 2-3. It was still a close game that Beast Coast had to overperform and overperform map after map. There you guys so go. New season. Right here. Obviously, too early to tell. But I gave my prediction earlier. I'm sorry about that, Parker. That's fine. It's still very important, as Jesse said, that given how close these finals can be for BDS, that you take away every little advantage they can find. They did write about Shaiko in the Bible. Did they? Yeah, they called him Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. We're going to need a big performance from Shaiko today, obviously, if they want to be taking out W7M the last time. As you mentioned, Lynx, we didn't really see that out of him. Uncharacteristic. Shaiko, one of the greatest players of all time. Nobody would deny that. The GOAT? That's a different question. Mm, I don't think he's a GOAT. That, uh, no way. Strengthen the argument. GOAT has to go to somebody... Who's like, you know, there's people who've won multiple invitationals. I think he's a very mechanically skilled player and a very good player, but there's no way you could consider Shaiko the go. I at least I think. That's the player that I think needs highlighting. Obviously, a lot of ink will be spilled talking about Shaiko potentially. I don't think I'm the goat. But it's been I would say Canadian. He's called inside of a server. Most historically relevant and successful player over multiple different rosters and teams.
BDS as a whole, at least W7M right now, trying to slow BDS down. That much is for certain. On an admin take, that can often be not only the name of the game, but the death knell for these attacking teams. Likifak, good thing we decided to mm. talk about him. He can just seem to do it all. Solitov on Bolo's the super good, the but... We'll find that second kill. He's been on the projector. I think goat status has to go to someone who's won a lot of tournaments. Yet to even enter the building, we still see massive kills coming out for BDS. They've got... I think the I, to me Troy is the go, but I think you can make arguments for Pangu. If Pangu had won another tournament with like a different roster, then you know I'd probably I'd say that he was. But the thing with Troy is he won. The thing with Canadian is he's won two Invitationals, major. You know, Pro League Finals, whatever. All this kind of different stuff, right? Many tournaments. And over multiple different rosters, over multiple different time frames. Multiple... Oh, nice, 3K. Mul you know, just so much, like, time and different teams. And he's still, like... I mean, even in this tournament, he made quarterfinals. I mean, making, making quarterfinals in... Making quarterfinals right now, even like this long, he's nine. We're nine years in the game. Tro or he made, uh, yeah, quarter. Troy made quarterfinals. You know. He needs to retire. It's stupid, like a grown man playing computer games with children and yelling at them. Uh, I mean, to play professionally, you have to be above 18. So everyone he's playing is definitely an adult. <laughs> can play those utility operators but still knows how to position himself to get in when the action gets hot make sure he's hitting those shots Saltov consistently has been so good for bds and for a long time now ever since this first bds roster forms as hard as it is to really find a weak link on what on paper is one of the best teams if not the best team in the world Saltov has often been one of the lower performers mm. yuzus Shaiko, Licky Fact, leading the way in KDR cost everything. But if Solotov not only has a good game on attack, especially on a map like Consulate, but if Solotov is raising the floor of this roster, BDS, who are already looking scary, could really give W7M a run for their money. Yeah, it's going to be a battle of who heats up really in this matchup. You expect both teams to be firing on all cylinders, but for BDS, you always know that these five players are going to bring it there all. Bolo is really good, though. Aggression. Like, as an individual round, player. A piano in open area for the final, for the final site in the rotation. I think you can make arguments for Bolo being, like, one of the best individual players or the most mechanically skilled. We're going to skip past that skip and hit the site. They could decide to do it, but if you look at what W7M are running, they don't really need to necessarily contest a whole lot of control up top because not only do they have the C4s, they've got three of them, in fact, but they've got the black eyes and the heartbeat scanner that if they can just waste enough time on the front end, they can... You guys are saying the same thing for, like, Spoip? I feel like Spoip, Bolo, Shaiko, they're all kind of in the same category where they're, like... Insanely talented players individually, but I just don't think that they could be like greatest of all time in Siege. I think you got you got to win a lot of tournaments. There's multiple players who have been there for a long time and they've won a lot of tournaments. That's the thing. If the thing is, Olo and Spoy and Shaiko, their careers are not done. Here on the top floor, they've entered in top yellow. They've pushed the roamers back in towards admin. Spoy is on the same category. He hasn't. What do you mean, Spoy won a major? The ability for W7M to deny from up above. So this spacing that BDS have taken is really valuable. Spoy won a major with Rogue, his first season he ever played. Volps held off the score sheet for three rounds now. Consistently the best performer for W7M, and they'll be without him for the remaining minute. They will, and something to notice right now, I'm not entirely sure where Loban is. He was retreating down oh. to the bottom floor, but two defenders are going for the retake, and Solotov is on the cut. You guys just hate. You guys are like. Solotov, another double kill. You guys are like, uh, anytime there's like a content, it, you. One major interest. Well, that's what I said. I said that they're not the. I said none of those people are the GOAT. We missed the diffuser going down. The GOAT. Has to be like the goat. There's, there's, there's two, there's two people. There's, there's multiple people who've won multiple invitationals and majors and stuff like that. We were distracted with the uh, with the fuse kick going down below. Looked like W7M were distracted as well. Of course, that's the whole game plan from BDS. You apply pressure up above while the Monty goes down and sneaks that plant. Even if they had found an angle, 
Stopping a Monty plant's very difficult with that shield on his back from up above. It's a hugely important task, but they couldn't get it. I don't know. Now we're seeing the attacks come out from BDS. Two in a row as they're starting to gain momentum. And a theme we've Their seen careers are not over. So far are these attacks that Olo, Spoy, and Shaiko, probably all three of them have many years left. Mostly holding angles outside the building. Only when they get the advantage do they actually push in. That round, no clear of the top floor. They get in yellow, they get the cutoff angle, and then... Toilet paper is better than bidets. Is this, this supposed to be rage bait? Or are you just trying to share with the class that you walk around with shit on your ass all day? ...attacking team through the entirety of this tournament with a 58% offensive win rate. Now they'll have their chance to complete a cycle. Can they win on the basement, a bomb site that they struggled in round number one to win? If they do that, W7M are starting to really stumble. I don't want to see another garage rush. I want to see a full map clear. And to your point, that was the only round with W7M winning. They got five kills in it. They've had one kill since wow. then. One. Six kills across three rounds is a bad tally to begin with. I mean, at least you did win one round, but since then, it's been, I think you said it's been biblically good, <laughs> well, it's been biblically awful for W7M. BDS have the tools to go nask nask is an amazing player i love nask two different hard breachers being but not just one, so thermic charge that garage door and rush on he in. can't be the goat <coughs> piano, maybe cut a flank off that's exactly what bds has done i think Solitov, eliminating Loban, and they have i think that nask is probably one of the most likable players and if you were concerned about Solitov heating up in this Oof, game well this shot bds looking like they're about to set consulate on fire what do you even do at this point 5e3 within the first minute Licky Fack has spent that time opening up the garage wall, and now we do see not necessarily a full clear, but BDS going back to the opposite side, looking to take that control, back server. The Monty aided by Shaiko on this demo, as he always plays this operator if it's left up four in a row now. He uses first death, first Don't death die, tracker, Dems. trying to hunt down that view, push them back, but W7M, they're giving up that space, and that only favors BDS. BDS so much map control. They're going for this pincer push with two players coming in through servers. Of course, that's going to be the defuse kit. W7M need to make something happen. They've got to go for an aggressive swing and find a pick because if this pincer push comes out and it's a 5v3, I just don't know how W7M are going to hold on to it. They might have just gotten a read on Volps as well with that Twitch drone and with the death mark working on dots. That would, in theory, leave Dotas as the last one unaware. A lock in from EFAC, a second kill. Volps now compelled back to the bomb site and he sees a target rich environment but right now it's hard for him to hit those shots damn and leaky back with the final two kills two flawless rounds over the I mean I think W7M perfect rotation sorry for I think BDS wins the wins this pair of like that be a five over the but last three rounds. it is I mean I'm, I hope W7M. W7M right now this might be BDS and I'm rooting for the underdog in a row on consulate attack a good time for this tactical timeout because things are not going right. The only round that went W7M's way were when they quite literally walked into the site and W7M's guns, utility, everything already trained on the breach. Every other time, BDS have been able to misdirect W7M, draw their attention elsewhere, then get man advantage as afterwards to actually convert and execute onto the site. In each round, by the way, as well, to talk about BDS heating up. No power cord kicking. They called an actual BDS, timeout. A solid top. <laughs> 4K, a 3K, and now a Licky Fact 3K as well. These players are shooting straight, and they're not cooling down. Consulate, once again, is probably the most defender-sided map in Rainbow Six Siege. W7 now, M now are one for three. I don't and know about that. Maybe. Even a single defense. This tackle timeout, it's coming at the right time. They can get these last two defenses. That's going to be hugely important. If they go down 4-2, 5-1 in the second half, you're starting to look towards map two already. W7M needs to, to change the pace somehow. It always feels like BDS are controlling the engagements. They're taking them when they want to take them. W7M, whether that means getting hyper aggressive, going for a spawn peak, going for a jump out, taking the pace that way, or slowing things down, playing really close together, and making sure you've got solid trades, they've got to pick one or the other. Now, none of us are native French speakers, but I've got a French word for this moment. I don't know. Given BDS and W7M scoreline right now, and that's deja vu. Oh, I was, I was thinking baguette. Is that one word or two words? It's, maybe it's many. Deja vu. That's I don't like speak three. the language, that's the point. Ah, I got you. But <sighs> you power cord right kick. Now, one power cord kick for round loss. Listen, there's no NA teams in here. That's not happening right now. All the way back to the actual stage that they played in before qualifying.
Jesse and I have had quite a few conversations about uh, our split <laughs> opinions on W7M. And I'm humble, I'm honest, I can say that uh, my take has not aged very well, given their run this tournament. Listen, uh, this team has had so many bright moments, even back during the... Was I superstitious for anything? No. Not really. Right I'd take a dump, yeah, that would happen a lot. I, I get, like, nervous, excited shits. Uh, and it's funny you say that because I really feel like they got that ability to survive under pressure very recently in that final game of the playoffs when they played Fury to make it here. There was a radical shift, not just from stage one, but to stage two. A fellow gold dust enjoyer. And this aggression that we really haven't seen before work out that successfully in big matches. But this is the biggest stage that many of these players have played on in quite a long time. Sure, Loban, Dots, and Dash were on Atlanta, but nobody really thought they had a chance here. But with how BDS have been looking and how W7 have been performing... That dude from Brazil rolling around holding his wrist yelling at the mouse like kicked him. Maybe. Or something, but it's the Could be. It's not trashy. W7M. Once again, Solotov's going to be making this move up the spiral stairs. This is, again, BDS controlling the pace of these gunfights. They have no idea Solotov's working his way to the top floor right now. My final I do. Opportunity. He had one. He let it slip through his fingers. Loeb been drawing first blood in this round. Breedy goes down. He's answered right back. By I think if BDS goes. won an Invitational, there could be there could be some arguments made for them being like like Shiko. I think for Shiko to be the goat, uncontested, he's got to win. He's got to win two Invitationals. A single point of HP for Shiko. Solotov now to the rescue, and it's all up to the clash. Dots in a 1v2. He will down Shiko with the electrification. You think of driving to Montreal with the traffic sucked in your business weekend? Fair enough. Barbed wire. Barbed wire does damage now, by the way, and when Shiko's on 1 HP... It's enough to kill you. That's actually a hilarious way to lose a round. I'm not going to lie. I appreciate the dedication to the comedy on that one. But something I do want to say, because I think it was a decent attack. From he forgot BDS. that Barb does the damage. Overall, while we saw hey, you can't be the best of all time dying to barbed wire. To draw W7M's attention was a drop from Yellow Skylight. If you saw Breede go down on the Monty, he hopped over there, and as shields were often meant to do, draw the attention of the defense, and what Solotov wanted to happen was likely somebody rotate across or for there to be a gap that he could push in, backstab the site. But that didn't happen. The Cade spots him, he fires a shot by him, and the defense plays a little more passive. The five-hour drive? The opposite side. W7M were able to win the round, as you can see. But the moral of the story that overall is that was still a 1v2 that Doc I feel like if they ever did a Chicago major, I would just drive. And still they almost lost. Well, I mean, when you lose the Monty <laughs> jumping in the sky like that early on, Bree Day had no real ability to influence that round. He was a shield vaulting in, most vulnerable, and he's dead. You need that guy that was coaching all of a sudden to play Siege? Dude, that shit was ridiculous. How BDS could have keep, how could have kept just slowly they're inching their way up to that CEO office. People often talk about Consulate as a defender side of map, and sometimes they ask why. And the reason why Consulate's so defender sided, one of the reasons, is that it's very difficult to get into the map. As an attacker, you've got to swing in windows, you've got to drop a skylight. And W7M, up until that last round, hadn't done much to stop BDS from entering. Finally, they get aggressive on the yellow stairs, they find the pickup onto the Monty, and that exactly is what they needed to set themselves up for a push. They'll go down to the basement for their final round mm -hmm. on defense before we get to mm -hmm. overtime. And again, we're seeing a pitch in the from BDS. Listen, dude. They're starting to open the visa hatches. They've got players that direction, but still the main focus of the breach. Brie with the defuse kit is over. That chicken is full of chemicals. That's fine. It was good. Predicting where these BDS points of entry might come and able to put Yuzus down to very, they were very good chemicals. Player, especially while we've seen Solitaire doing a lot of the lurking, Yuzus, Leaky Fac, either of those three players exhibit that play style as well. And that was Volt tossing the Nitro Cell up through the yellow skylight and almost claiming the Twitch's life. I mean, that's you're gonna play off of sound, you're gonna wait till you hear the repel and then hope for the best. See, right now, though, a couple players on this top floor, though, the thing I'm most curious about is our. BD is surely not going to read into this. Those two players up top. Oh, Ooh. Think about going for a cutoff. Dota just brazenly swings the main door. That's another opening kill going the way of W7M. They're third this half. Controlling the pace. That's exactly what they had to do. The attack timeout seems to be working for them. But it's not going to do them much good here. With Lincoln lurking on the visa stairs. Takes down Loban to equalize that man count. 
going to be a big important I show the mail of the food rumors, of course it's just bolts who's still on yellow stairs though it has on this main you eat a lot of chicken and cow you don't need roids or any of that just go to the gym yeah it's all secondary dude look like the not medical advice by the way hatch is being opened up as that's leaking but you know just doing the hey good getting utility work down he and Solotov have combined for 16 kills. Wow. Chico is the uh, the America pistol. Chico can be an honorary American. Yeah, I do the eating part, not the gym. Ooh. What an inhuman shot from Efac as Dash falters. Dots is next in line. Volts being tracked by the death mark. Efac finished off, and now Dots is looking for yet another. BDS have information. They're very close by. Breede getting Diffuser down. Uses and Shiko sitting to watch these last two players. Dots miles away, though, and now the clock. Oof. Them. It's a bad thing for W7. They didn't kill Uses earlier on because what an influence he had on that round. BDS take it, and they take the first half. It's the kind of round that BDS I'm glad to see the stands filled up a little bit today. Leaky Fack and Yuzus are some of the best lurkers in the world, and how do they compensate for that earlier damage or the struggles on the clear? Leaky Fack lurks up Visa, holds an angle, waits for a timing, and he gets it. That's a play Yuzus could do. That's a play <laughs> Solotov has been doing this game. Brainless so wall far. shooting? What do you mean? So good or can be so good at recovering disadvantages. The ironic thing is that's something we didn't see from them a lot in the EU League. They had some of the worst recovery percentages of winning 4v5s. But seeing them have success with that to make it a 4v4, then to convert that into an advantage and an execute and a win. A, there's been a lot of worrying signs for W7M in this series just on this first map. It might be their pick, but everything that I am looking at for a victory is looking good for BDS. I will say, this looks very much uh, like a map win for BDS so far. They're going to the stronger side up 4-2, that's great. But in a BO5, you always <coughs> expect to be winning your initial map pick. In a BO3, we say that, but in a BO3, before your opponent gets their first pick, you can ban two separate maps, they'll be banning two maps. You can probably force it to a map that you're at least somewhat comfortable on. In a BO5, you can't do that. You played hockey there, it's like 2K max. Have hmm. lost consulate the last four times. Well, that's a good size for um... tier one professional teams. This is not a map that they came into it expecting to win. I thought right with that very first round. Maybe that's actually a good size. To run away with it. Maybe they've got some fun strats in store that can really catch BDS off. For a siege bench. So Ranked after the games. I'm down, Crook. Brede with that entire half, by the way, without getting a kill. His only two deaths <laughs> coming in the two rounds that BDS lost. This again. Goes back to something that Jesse and I touched on in that VP game mm -hmm. on border, and it's Bree Day is not at the forefront anymore. No. When BDS picked up Uzis and picked up Solotov, it has allowed Bree Day to play farther back. A different role on attack, a very different role on defense. And these old Bree Day clutches where he'd be in a 1v2 or a 1v1 and win it for BDS. BDS doesn't usually allow that to happen anymore. So Bree Day's numbers are mm -hmm. going to look bad. How many plants did he get down in that first half? Three, was it? Yes. Two deaths. Like old Go guy, dude. Successful plants, zero kills. That's a terrific scoreline for his role. You're not going to complain about that. I did file verify. And it didn't really, I don't think it did anything, but we'll see. On these starter defenses, Licky Fact already looking towards one player pushing in through admin. They have a lot of aggressive players. Maybe Breed a bit more passive, but the rest all like to get in their share of gunfights. And so they'll do exactly what I imagine W7 and we're hoping to Britta's do. Britta's your big defense, dick playing. Go, dude, Britta's actually been playing for a very long time, too. He's been playing since I was playing. That's how long he's been playing for. Nonetheless, that's the game plan here. Volps is sitting within striking distance of Shiko, and he gets the read on him. Shiko saw the drone. Also spotted Efac up top. As the Monty of Dots will get in ever closer. Loban dies. BDS striking first. They picked this map. They started on the unfavorable side. Now the hard work for BDS ought to be done. What's the saying? I brought my horse to water. Smooth sailing from here on out. Exactly. <laughs> Shouldn't be a problem. Of course, getting first pick is huge. And the main hard breacher for W7M as well. Oh. Uses slow peaking bolts on the stairs. Who am I rooting for? I hope W7M wins, but I think BDS wins. But there's a lot of bodies that W7M need to find and not a lot of time to find them. 
Now, I mean, what do you even do at this point? We see Dots trying to get into the site, but with never really effectively taking that vertical control. No, no, yeah, I've been retired since, up, like, yeah, yeah 2018. Super shorty, or even Bride with that shotgun. They're just catching W7M off guard, even in Oof. positions they are previously holding, keeping the man advantage consistent all throughout. <clears throat> that was a trade, by the way. That final kill was a one-for-one -one trade, but BDS had players still alive, so they survived it, win the round. W7M called their timeout what feels like ages ago. No response still. This second half, it looks just like business as usual for BDS. Look at back. Some of the greatest zombie play that we've seen. Notice how he was constantly peeling back. Mm. He started off on the very top floor, right? Throwing those kibas. The thing that's mistakes, rough is Consulate is pretty defender-sided. Never getting into gunfights, but he wasn't confident he was going to be able to win. He ended that round on the basement spiral stairs, going all the way from the top of the map to pretty close to the bottom. The way that he was able to find those kills was hugely impactful, and we still saw some more great play coming out around the map. From BDS. I mean, Slow I know you're joking, but it could change. Out, making sure that every inch W7M took, it took a lot of time, and they didn't get any picks for it. BDS were playing so safe. And I want to contrast what we saw from Volps on the Nook that round with what we saw from Solotov on the Nook on BDS. You had both players trying to creep up right close to the site, get a pick on somebody rotating, catch the defense off guard. When Solotov did it, it was in tandem with an execute that was meant to draw attention away from the spiral stairs so he could get a kill. There, the execute's coming on the opposite side of the map, sure, but Volps is there for okay. ages before the execute actually happens. He even reveals his presence by firing shots. So what happens? BDS say, hey, there's a guy yellow. He's been there for 45 seconds. Yuzu's come flank down the stairs and take a 1v1, and we can trade him out with the advantage. That's exactly All what right, happened. George. I mean, Volps droning himself in uh, on Nook is less than ideal. I'll talk to you. BDS okay. had good, for the Nook. That's how you play it. Or no drone yeah. at all if you feel like the element of surprise is what you're looking for. Uh, 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 yeah. Typically what people do with Amaro I mean, I, like I said, before the match even started yesterday, I mean, BDS should win this. If they don't, it would just be like a throw. I, I don't see how they lose this, like, in any way. If he can get a kill on Debride, force him into a position where he can't deny that plant, that's going to be the win con from W7M. Because there's going to be so much time denial and plant denial. If they just rely on the Amaru, they're unlikely to get it done. And this is something I'm really concerned about for W7M. Yeah, you get all the same drops here as you would on, like, the actual Rainbow Six stream. Well, reacting to the positions held by W7M. If Loban reveals himself, but there's too much time between that and the execute, they could send somebody down below. Take it I, I don't even think it's entirely. like the, the best fraggers or anything like that. The second time Dots Ooh. Bait with the sound, maybe? He's like baiting I, the I sound, so. I guess. Yeah. Um, it's not even that. Their, their coordination and like team play is just on another level. Oh my god, bro. Dude, that guy's using all of his Gara hooks. favorite site to watch in the entire game i swear the way they're able to bait out that tachanka right it, it feels like we're trying to play around with the sound we get in we get out we get in we get out eventually though of course it's dodez who makes that entry point yeah. they heard the gar hook they thought okay he's going in for a plant and he did start to plant i mean they knew that he was in there with the defuse kit but that's why they start to swing and that means dodez is ready with his gun up nine times out of ten when an amaru's jumping in that window and committing to the plant leaky Connor, fact also igls is pretty well yeah it is pretty crazy I I think like as of right now he's probably like I'd say he's probably like the most valuable player currently in the world. And the reason I say that is because he frags out plus IGLs, so it is, but I really think Dodez is the MVP there because I really like trying to bait with the sound from W7. Dream is goat status. How does that make any sense, bro? I like Dream. He seems like a really nice guy, but I, I don't think he's even won a single tournament ever. How are you going to be the GOAT when you're not, like, winning a tournament, even? 
face of that attack. But is this just bait or something? Inside of the room, swinging ahead of the Amaru, that's what made it work for I mean, there's a lot of... I mean, I like a lot of players, you know? Like, I like Shaiko a lot. He's really cool. He's always been nice when I was, you know, been around him and stuff, right? Bolo, I know super well. I love Bolo. You know, Spoit, I like Spoit a lot, too. I hung out with him before. But, you know, they just don't have the wins. They're amazing individual players, but they just don't have the wins to, like, you know. MGS is asking ChatGPT for the worst worst takes and copying and pasting them probably at this point. Again, he's been their best attacking player, but on defense where he struggled. 2018, I was 28 when I retired. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's Brady on the drone hole. Maybe waiting for somebody to get up to the window, then hop in. But TCSG too, he could light up anybody that tries to take an elderly man. At the same time, no electric loss in pocket. Actually, I think I was still 27 because like I retired way before my birthday. I re I stopped playing like in January of that year. Oh, and Dot's taking an awful lot of damage. Down goes Shiko, and the Blitz will chase down Musis. W7M have found that this is maybe an attacker sided consulate. All right. This we have a game going. Why did I stop playing? Um, originally I stopped because I my grandpa got sick and like passed away. Um, that was why I like I originally did, and then after i took like a break and stuff like that i was just like i don't want to play anymore i just want to like stream because i was basically getting up every day and i was streaming from sorry i'd get up and i would like watch like vods and scrim and stuff like that all day and then i would stream all night and then i would just like wake up and just do the same thing over and over again and eventually it just kind of like was just like wearing on me and I didn't even realize that it, I didn't even realize how much it was wearing on me until I had stopped. Like I took a break from playing pro. At first, it was just a break. So yeah, some burnout too. I would literally, I would literally like get up, shower, brush my teeth, all that kind of stuff. Right? Eat. I don't know. Was that take a half an hour? Right. Then I would like watch like VODs slash warm up. Then I would like, which is maybe like an hour or two, scrim for like six hours. You know, talk to the team about what we can improve on and stuff like that. Maybe another hour. Then I would literally just stream and play ranked until I was like too tired. And then I'd go to bed and just do the same thing every day. Maybe some disagreements between these teams as to what the strongest site might be. But for BDS, of course, this is where you try to pull the momentum back. Do you MG, listen, back Gray Fox just had a lobotomy. It's fine. Maybe jump out, you know, something like that. Or you just, gonna play just room temperature IQ like activities. It happens. Notice as well, no IQ being brought by W7M. Frame setter? Um, I don't know. I think it's just on your end. I didn't notice anything. And then my stream has no lag right now. Round, it was within 30 seconds. BDS might have already tried to implement that aggression in the previous round, and maybe it didn't work out. Maybe the vigil got caught. But here, will we see a bit more forward play from BDS? There is a Cade spotted all the way up top. And Amaru prepped right behind it to go hunt down. How many, <laughs> how many Amaru Gara hooks will we see this round? Needs to win these fights. This won't be a bait in and out. This is going to be committed to the top floor. They're not trying to bait it or anything. The defuse game will have to go. 700 Gara hooks. See, there's not really anybody up here that they've got to worry about. BDS, for the most part, have completely retreated back to the main floor. All five players. That angle's kind of nasty. That's on the door, but you see how he has it like broken just like that, like a very small amount. Hey, well, thank you, Mega Boss. I appreciate it. The noise bait. 
feel like it was trending in that direction. It's kind of crazy how like this map has been so attacker sided today. The casters were saying that this map is the most defender sided. I don't know. I don't feel like it is. It's pretty defender sided, but I don't know. I'd say Nighthaven is still more defender sided, probably. I don't know though now. Maybe Consulate is the most defender sided at the moment. I can't really think of anything that's more defender sided. I suppose. You've lost your entire team from repelling in. The most important part of the map, though, right? I mean, W7M have full top floor control. They're gonna go in yellow for the plant, most likely. They throw out their first candela, but they're not making moves off of it now. They'd like to be able to open up this hatch because it will give. Actually, maybe Sky. I don't know though. This is good positioning. That's what I was worried about because Bro, what the fuck? This guy's actually just fucking walking in. He's just Gara hooking in and crouch walking in. Is this ranked? It's working, I guess. Okay. I'd be blowing our eardrums out when I got him. Sure, BDS were retreating, but at least they got onto the second floor in relatively decent time. They even were able to react. Easiest points of your life. Lobin's but listen, dude, there's five maps, okay? Concern after that. I mean, what do you even happen with that positioning? Well, we have a call in from one of the best dressed people on the desk. With great hair, too. Look at that. Laxing, you saw something in that round you wanted to talk about. I mean, just W7M as a whole, they need to rely on their aggression here. That first half slipped away from them because they are playing so passive. They are playing that discipline game where they need to be meeting BDS with this aggression. Even in the round prior to that, the aggression is what got them that round. They were being proactive on those attacks. And this round, it looked like they were going to bring it back, but then they got too aggressive. So I need them to not only be aggressive, got you, but be able got to you. control it at the exact same time, especially with this being on match point. Thank you very much. So be aggressive, but not too aggressive. Like be aggressive, but like dial it back a bit. Like bring it out, dial it back. Very simple stuff. Maybe a seven, not a ten. Maybe a, yeah, just somewhere average, somewhere right in the middle. It's not controlling the pace again, right? You want to be in control of how these first fights go down. And in that round, W7M, they were in control of the opening couple of fights. They eventually spotted Licky Pack. They had a two-man advantage. How do you convert, though? If you can't convert with full map control in a 3v5 situation, mm -hmm. what are you going to be doing on these next couple of rounds? Because it's only going to get harder from that. That looked like the easiest round for W7M, their best situation that they had found themselves in the late round. All right, and let's see. Shiko finds two. BDS don't fall at all on that round. And it just feels like W7M are struggling to crack these strong sites. Do I have a charm? I do. If you subbed to me on Twitch, you get it. Convert, but by the end of that round, mm -hmm. they only had two drones left. As they went in for that execute, and it was a lot of those site positions that had gone undroned. Yellow stairs, smoke holding the cross from the art run in, takes down the ying. Players holding angles inside of the site. That could oh boy. W7M here More shield action. Now. Look, we're down below. How entertaining. It's a labyrinth on that bottom floor. So many corners and server rooms on the bottom floor. If W7M don't drone, that same problem could hit him here. Could you say lots of nooks and crannies? I don't even get me started. Do you know this guy's here? Already opening up from the server. This is a fast push in from Dodd. He droned it out, knew that there was nobody here. That's good drone work as well. Finding out Leaky Fact. They've got an angle actually in the visa hatch, but nobody's watching it. The Monty was just holding up above to make sure there was no aggressive plays. There's no way Leaky Fact gets a shot from down here, right? I don't know. At this point. I want to see what they're doing exactly here. Like, what's the, what's the, what's the, like. Dots for a second as these two teams exchange words with one another. Solitov eliminating Lobin. The player who I, I'm sure they have a plan here, but I'm just, I'm not. I'm not really seeing this at the moment. If you're, they're doing a back take, I don't know why they didn't take like some hard breaching gadgets maybe, or like Habana instead of Ace. Is there like another wall that they want to open here with this Ace? I'm trying to see what they're doing. My big concern, though, they are just barreling right into this lineup. They've got Dash on the breach to at least control some of that backside pressure. But pushing forward, BDS have had all the doorways. I know, I don't really get to use my charm that much. 
we see a rotate if there's somebody actually on the top floor i actually um feel a whole lot more confident lately i've been using my well yesterday i started using my own charm again because i don't think it really matters that much anymore dude i swear like lately it's been kind of insane how many people snipe so Ooh. I don't know what the, the plan here was exactly. Like, like this guy has been chilling under this hatch, like, the whole round. If they would have just brought a Habana, they could have opened this. No diffuser in hand. Not much right now for W7M. They started to put in a Valiant effort for a comeback, but... I think what it is is because there's, like, less cheating now. Like, that's what you get to deal with instead. We said it at the start, the last couple of grand finals, BDS... Map 1, BDS... All right, I'm throwing these plates in the sink. Give me one sec. Give me one sec. Let me put these plates in the sink. I'll be right back. Lynx, you're 100% right. They showed some fight in the end, but it's not enough. BDS, just too much class for one map. Lax, that one had us on the edge of our seats from start to finish. But what about that BDS attack? That attack, I mean, you have to give them their flowers. They were just doing such a good job at finding the gap in all of W7M setup. Whether they were exploiting it or they were just taking the map sites or not taking it, they were always forcing W7M in an unwinnable position, catching them on their rotates. When they would catch them on the rotates, go up in that man advantage, they would almost immediately then slowly start to constrict that site and leave W7M practically in unwinnable position. Positions. That's when you recognize a great team. A team that won't go head on in full obstacles, but rather a team that will seize an opportunity if they see it, go in that gap and punish the defenders by leaving that, that huge of a gap and exploit it to go then and defuse the plan. Now, it happened multiple times. Either it's the kills and rotating and cut, cutting off the roamers, either it's going for that plant, but consistently Likefak on VDS finding that opportunity and calling it for his teammates, that was the huge difference maker in this two attack side. Leo, not only were they adapting on their attack, but their defense midway through that half, they flipped the switch. Round 10 was the big difference maker for me. That attack timeout plus two flex, props to this guy. He completely turned the tide. Look at this. At round 10, that's exactly when they close out the two rounds that they needed. And that's because they decided, let's go turtle, let's play intel gathering, and let's not get punished by the aggression of W7M. Their mid-half adaptation was class, but it was their mid-round cane call that absolutely changed that one in the first half. We got Jack to break it down. Thank you very much, Rob. I'm over by the screen here now. BDS, they're attacking is round three. They're attacking onto piano, and what they want to do is they want to drop the yellow and get the kill onto Dash up at top yellow and clear out the top floor. As this is going on, we see Shaiko drops. He actually gets killed by Dots and traded back out now. W7M have what they think is a read. They think that BDS are going to try and clear out and take all of this top floor work vertically. So they move all of their players. You can see, you can see Dash, you can see Lobin. They try and get all of their players back towards the visa side. They want to waste the time. They want BDS to come and get them and then not have enough time to hit onto site. But what do BDS do? They make a mid-round adaptation, a mid-round call. Now, normally we will attribute Leakyfak with this, but actually this is going to be Solotov that makes this mid-round call. He ends up droning. He drones out the CEO. You can see his drones just outside of bathroom here. Drones out the CEO room, knows that it's clear, and then when he does that, he knows that BDS can execute what is called a half clear. And that is where you only clear half of the bomb site and the verticality near the bomb site that you are wanting to control. So he gets free day and he gets the IQ to go downstairs and try and start planting, make a big racket, get seen on the Valkyrie cameras, and then he holds the cutoff because W7M, they've had the wrong read. All of the players that are on the top floor, they have to come back and try and challenge the verticality because as you can see, the plant is going down here and in the end bds get this round win it starts their snowball of momentum onto the attack and it all comes we we attribute leaky back as the ideal a lot but it all comes right there from solotov and his shot calling inside of the round that was a key reason why bds won onto consulate now we're going to go to a very short break before we head to map two
right. Let's get it. Have a clean desk chair. <sighs> no politics, buddy. No politics. New bets, new bets. All right, all right. Map two, chat. Map two. Next map, Night Haven Labs. All right. BDS W7M. Map one's done. Saw your YouTube video. You looked extremely happy with the BB change. I was just, dude, like, I just don't even know, bro. I just, I don't understand. I, it's just, it genuinely bewilders me how, how, like, I will, I think Ubisoft has done an incredible job lately overall of balancing the game. Um, you know, they really have uh, just general, you know, generally the game. Um, has been good. It has been good, but like, I don't know, bro. <laughs> just... Mm-mm. Back on PC now. Labs. I don't know whose pick it is. I have no idea, actually.
Mm -hmm. Labs a W7M pick. You're betting W7M as W7M, the odds are too spicy? Maybe. EDS will probably win. I don't know. Did I buy Glacier? Did I get it when it came out? I had it when it came out, yeah. I've had it for a long time. Had it for a million years. That skin is actually okay if the G36 wasn't horrible. We saw a little bit of a fight back from W7M that gave us hope that now leads us into map number two. Joining back to us is the incredible analyst team that we have for this event. Minus mm. spots. Sorry, had to do it out there. But this one, we break down a lot of what we saw. Leo, we've seen this map from BDS before. Just yesterday, in yep. fact. How will this translate? So now we're going on W7M speak, right? And the, the story of the BO5 is that they really need to win that one because the third one will be again BDS speak. So they really need that map, right? You look at yesterday, yes, on paper, BDS is supposed to be weaker on that map, but they went 5-1 in the defense side on laps and they're starting defense again. That for me, that tells me the story if they replicate exactly what happened on Consulate, where they play together as a total and they're ready to trade each other whenever W7M gets aggressive, they will win that map because the defense side is what matters here. I think it's worth saying though that yesterday when BDS played on Nighthaven, they played lots of mirror, they utility. played lots of Cade, lots yep. of utility, and they made it very, very hard for Faye to establish map control. I could very much see a world where W7M get rid of the mirror, get rid of the Cade, make breaching easy, whatever they can get rid of that will allow them not to make the same mistakes as Faye's yesterday, which maybe levels the playing field a little bit. Outside of operator bands, what did W7M have to do to bring this back, to turn it around here on their map pick lax? I think we were slowly starting to see a mountain that come back outside of that timeout that we did Definitely. see from BDS, but they were getting worn up. That's the hard part about starting out on defense is sure, it is the stronger side. You should be able to go up and count. Sometimes it doesn't go that way, but what defense doesn't allow you that attack does that they're All right, I'm just like reading something really quick. Ground, work at their teammate. Work on controlling the pace and the momentum of how this game is. And like Jack was saying, if they can get rid of some of these operators starting on this attack side, that will really allow them to control the momentum and overall have the entire pacing of this first half. Jack, the theme for us on Consulate was the adaptations from BDS, yep. both mid-round and uh, mid-half. How do you break that down? If you're W7M, how do you break through that wall with a team that can turn on a dime? I think it's about giving yourself the best opportunity that you possibly can. That starts in the operator band, which I think is going to be very important inside of Nighthaven. I think they're going to be on the attack, so they're going to get much more chance to have the mid-round adaptations themselves. When they get on the defense, they've got two choices for me. Yep. One, they really need to lean into aggression in the early round and don't yep. give BDS the chance to have a mid-round adaptation. Or they need to lean in and allow BDS to execute and get it to the late round. The mid round is where they're losing it, so they need to not fight and play their battles inside of that mid round. So if we have to summarize, the fact that they will be in attack makes them proactive yeah. instead of being reactive. And yeah. that's something that they need to be because they need to control the base. And you're right, when they switch to defense, one of the main things they have to do right now is close that gap. If there is no opportunity, no gap, then BDS cannot take it. Maybe play a little bit more turtle and play layers of utility. Well, that was the thing. In the beginning of that half, they were playing turtle. They were giving up that map control that yep. BDS then was abusing. Sure, this map isn't going to be that concrete of, you know, you're giving up that much free space. It's pretty tight and condensed. But the biggest thing for me is they need to be playing into their aggression because that's where they lost that first half where we then started to see them be aggressive, be proactive on that attack. I want to see this on the defense path. Does anyone want to change their predictions now that we've seen map one? Is anyone getting antsy, Jack? I think no, you're looking no. at me. I think you're looking <laughs> at me when you say it. Obviously, you have to be lax. He's the one that needs to change it. No, 
I'm not changing. I'm sticking with W7 now. How does this translate onto lads now? How, um, how does this all work? This is a map that they're yeah. comfortable on. This is a map that they have VODs on. Again, them BDS beating FaZe was not a, really a testament for them at all. FaZe looked confused. They looked lost. And the bigger picture to take from yeah. that, it really sets in a false sense of confidence, a false sense of reality, if that truly is the case. That FaZe just did not understand how they wanted to play that game, which ultimately makes you look significantly better than what you might actually be when you play a team that actually knows how to play this map. Yeah, very often you can look at games and, and scorelines that are 7-1, and obviously BDS played that part well. I think they strategically absolutely. yesterday on Night Haven got that absolutely correctly, but FaZe fell apart, breaching absolutely. walls and just trying to take map control and bds took advantage of that so i think it's going to be a much tighter night haven lamb than we first maybe anticipated when we sure. saw this this isn't you know cut and dry for bds it is obviously w7m's map pick and they will have looked at that you know if we've gone and looked at that and yep. said hey phase play badly then w7m will have done that and they will learn from phase's mistakes now one thing we saw in the first half individuals standing up for B bds it was a, a, a solid performance but realistically uh, W7N, they found their way on the back end of that map, Leo. Does this give you hope? Does it give you hope that these players are going to start firing? Absolutely. I, I was just about to say, when Lux was saying that aggression maybe was a solution for W7M, I spoke before by saying BDS had the better individuals. I'm not so sure. I've just seen the kills from Lobin so far. <laughs> He's been frying them. He can get that back. And the rest of the teammates, Phobes as well, they can all step up. They have what it takes to win these engagements. If they need to go aggressive, they can win as well. Well, the wait is over. Labs is ready for us to go over to your tremendous trio of casts. Thank you so very much. It was a great first man. Sorry. What are you doing? We're casting the grand finals. I'm okay. Sorry. sorry. I was like finding this something. Okay. It's good to have both of you here, and what a first match we had. Mm -mm -mm. I expect the dial to be turned up a little bit on Nighthaven Labs, and I don't know if you'd agree with me. And well, you know what the thing about this dial? It goes up to eleven. <sighs> It needs to. I mean, from what we saw on map number one, BDS were in control from the start to the finish. Maybe with the one exception of the first round. I don't know. This map. W7M, they went for a bit of a gimmicky W7M is good at Night Haven. We'll see. This one could be, I think. Absolutely. I mean, you I don't know. I think maybe W7M wins this map. Maybe. Anybody want the KG charm that is now it? Well, if there's anybody that does, let just he knew. There you go. Every step of the way, but you've made it to the finals. You've cemented your place. Got it. Okay. Now it's time to prove yourself Come on. against one of the best teams in the world. In I hope it at least goes like I hope it goes five maps, but we'll see. Will W7M be able to fight back on their own pick? Will Nighthaven go their way? Do they still have some fight left in them? Montreal Nighthaven Labs begins right now. He is rake dancing in here. Uh, and Ghost, thank you for watching the of the Mega Boss. Very much appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The analyst desk you better sub the then. <laughs> would be, and now okay, the that's just mean, dude. Traditionally, BDS have banned Buck that has been on Nighthaven. It's been a very odd ban, but it's an extremely powerful operator for both the top and bottom floors and the mid floor. I could see. still see a Monty ban because W7M have been strong with it, but they'll just Mav. go rain and take out the Maverick instead. That makes Mav is actually really good on this map, I will say. Do you still want to do it without a Mav? This makes the defensive bands the most interesting to me because no matter what Think of the term, isn't it? Band, true, 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 true. true. We see some hard reach to Malgo, right? We should, but that's going to be, of course, the Shiko uh, counter pick. Demos taken off the board. Dancing. Shiko's most played off. Uh, Ghost, thank you for your truth. This up the gotcha. Oh, by the way, just see he. I know you like GTRs. Um, it's not mine, but I have a GTR in my garage right now. I have one of the limited edition ones. That has like the skyline like blue so it's um one of my friends and they needed extra garage space for like a few months so i told them like hey, i have room in my garage if you want to leave it in there put a pic i i haven't asked them like i don't want to put a picture of it and it's not my car steal the engine <laughs> And he always has been going back throughout his career. He's had a very limited pool. No, it's a brand new one. It's an R35. It's a 2024. Uh, really like it has, I don't know. In the European League that really started uh, it has, I don't know, 100 miles on it. 
They just got it, and they need the garage space for a little bit. They told me I could drive it as much as I want. I'm like, I don't want to drive someone else's car if I like, you know, mess it up in some way or something. What's up, buddy? Paint your truck blue and just swap it. Your YouTube video. Mm -hmm. How was it? I'm very, dis I'm very displeased with the change they just made. The BB. Yes. It is garbage. Let me be real. What are they, they thinking? He could repel with it on his face. He Yana. He has a very You're gonna trade your Z for a GTR. We will make it work. It does make it fun though, because every now and then you get these like new. It could work. Like a shiny Shiko could work. Like sometimes they put him on Bramba, and I'm like, oh, they're yeah. like Shiko, you got a drone and hack some utility this round. It's like, all right, whatever. Basically, no one will notice. <laughs> We'll see what it ends up being in the second half. He's starting yep. off on his favorite defense. Once, once it hits a thousand miles, I'll drive it. They didn't counter bad both of his operators. Once it has a thousand miles, I'll drive it. I drove it. I I haven't driven like this is like it's like um especially too they only made this is like the last run that Nissan's doing for the GTR. So like I don't want to I don't want to I like I don't know. I will I will drive that car on a track when the time comes like when they have a thousand miles plus on it when they in, I think the engine break in's a thousand or something like that for it Oof, why are they not going below at all bro this is like even in ranked people can do this Mm -mm -mm. They literally, yeah, let's go ahead and dedicate. They have a buck. <laughs> they can just shoot through the floor, even. The IT wall is so important. It's the most important wall on this entire map. Keeping it closed means the Raptors players are going to be so much safer. Yeah. That second pinch coming in from the north. Was bucking in. He's not bucking yet, dude. They got tricked again. Doesn't hold the diffuser. 45 seconds remain. He's giving his position away. They know he's inside of servers. This is a common plan spot. People say 500 miles. You say drive hard after 1K. Yeah, I don't know. I just, it's just, um, I don't, I don't really like driving other people's cars unless like they're there with me, you know, or maybe if I'm tracking it and they're like at the track. It's, um, because, like, I don't know, if something happens, you know, maybe something happens that when they were driving it and then they think you, I don't know, it's just, like, also if you do mess it up, you just feel bad. So, how dominant was BDS in the first map, George? Oh, it was like pretty close. I think it was seven, five, or four. Something like that. What map was it? Consulate, which is a good map for BDS, so. Oh, yeah. Even if someone dings it when you drive, it's not your fault. You'll still feel like. Yeah, well, the heart, the, the thing that's worse about this particular car is it's it's the. It's not just a regular GTR. It's like the they made like a last edition GTR where they made a, a limited edition amount of these cars in skyline blue so it's like you know the classic color like from fast and the furious like the like that like you know the blue the blue one that like you know for the movie they basically made a limited number of those cars in that color for the because this is the last year the gtr is out it's gone after this they're not making it anymore i think they're making it one more year in japan and then it's done after this so this is like the last addition basically it's kind of like the last run you know but anyway they were more they're more expensive they're really hard to get so if you fuck it up in any way it's like it's you probably can't even replace it that's the other thing too a side blue yeah that's what it is whatever yeah these are the types of contributions though that do not 
Go earned on the score. They'll probably make an EGTR, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. To general viewer knowledge, or it really falls onto our shoulders to explain to people why somebody who currently is zeros. I think I think it's gonna be I don't even know if Nissan will make another GTR. I don't know if it economically would make sense. Alright, he's putting his batteries down early. He's gonna leave the trick in a breed mostly. It seems like he wants to just Get some impact with the C4. Have a bit of the util coming out as well. He's feeling saucy today. Did you see his tweet at W7? <laughs> <laughs> He's been Where saucy he said, for a said, while. He said, thanks for an eSports World Cup championship. I'll message you in a couple hours and thank you for the major too. Can I go? Oof. Oh Volp's got the first kill in round number one. It was short-lived as it was answered back. Not just once, but about four more times. Ooh. This time, W7M has bought themselves some breathing room. Wait, did his... All right. How did his C4 just get destroyed? I think his teammate threw a C4 from below and it blew up his C4 through the wall. BDS will retreat. They know that they don't have to hold the top floor forever. This push from W7M is going to come in through EXO. They need an angle on the main breach. With Maverick banned out, though, can they really get one? Exactly. That's the whole point of this strategy right now. You put the batteries down early. You don't need to trick. As long as you hold the top floor, you're fine. So W7M, who want to get this defuse... God, I hate how you can throw stuff safely. You, like, throw it through your shield Shiko right now is completely prone he's allowing the rest of his teammates to draw the attention he's just been droned out though a nitro cell will go wall looks to be successfully opened up as dots moon they get shot i think i heard a c4 blow up from below but maybe i'm like wrong i don't know Lobit eliminating uses and the shield is cemented itself right now inside of assembly diffuser going down we love shields we love shields here What? <laughs> he has a shield on his back. Oh, he's dead. This has got to be a W7 round. We'll see, though. This is a smash. This is Pro Siege, dude. struggled in that position bds falling apart too early in the round for Breedy to have much impact time management just perfect from w7m mm. they did struggle in the early round clear you know they didn't take too much time with it by the time they were in exosuit there was over half the round still to go so when they got dots in on the monty he was able to take his time shoot the goo mine shoot the camera, we shoot love the shields battery. that allowed the angle to be opened up by the ace and now all of a sudden they're in a great spot for a plant yes brie above is bad news but dots recognizes Oof. this he's aware that okay wait we don't have top floor control i probably shouldn't plant in the default spot he instead moves out of position he waits for his teammates to come back and provide that support it's on strong really good timing coming out from dots there one of the best monty players that we see out of brazil and for good reason I also think something important we have to highlight going back to the operator bands is, of course, Deimos is taken off the board, but Dogby is up when she was not on the previous map, and that's something that I think is really going to help W7M on this clear. They've struggled on all sides of console, and let's just get that out of the way with, but for mm -hmm. their attacks, still clearing that map was a bit of a problem of the more limited sample size that we saw. But being able to run this Dokubi here, it will be a boon for BDS once they get to the attacking side, but at least here, it makes finding players like Leaky Fact, like... Consulate was a BDS pick, yes. W7M picked this map. I don't know, I mean, W7M is, like, I don't know. I'm thinking it's going to be, like, 3-1. I feel like they W7M has to pick up, like, one map, but we'll see. Also extremely effective with the Korean attacker, and they're going to try to find some of these players out as they go for the early pick. There's nobody from BDS roaming on that main floor except for Solitop. Are we going to go below this time? That could be great news. I think they've got bigger you could even just no shoot the floor with the DMR. Are we going to? Right on it. Breed again. Licky Fact shooting the drones to make sure that nobody knows this hard breach denial is right here. They do have the Thatcher. Remember, that wasn't enough last time. They used all those EMPs, and now that the site is right down below him, you can't get Loban into position beneath it. Selma out again, and he's going to be able to time this no. properly. No way! Again! Go below! Seeing that same part of the map. 
Dude, just take Dokubi. Spray the floor. Take Ash. Shoot an Ash charge. What was the operator lineup? Eaten alive on this I don't trick. know why they're not going below or just shooting the floor or something. Uh, I like... Dude, you could even do things like Thatcher the wall and put a fuse charge down at the same time that you put the ace charge down. Whatever, something. The trades that are coming every round are perfect. Other than the round that they lost, obviously, but like... Even in that round, the person in Forklift Hall got pinched by three people. I just don't get it, dude. You know he's in a great mood today. And he's earned it, right? This is Chico's sixth grand finals. He's played five of them so far. He won four. The only time Chico has ever lost a BO5 grand finals was in Manchester against Beast Coast. And that one went the whole distance. Right now, they're certainly looking in strong form on Nighthaven Labs. The thing I love No, I just don't get it. Like, they're not going below at all. They're just, they're, they're, their goal of, like, stopping this bandit trick is just, like, Thatcher and just, like, throw two ace charges. Like, that's not going to work. The BDS structure on the top floor was so good, and especially with like getting that five just anything. Oh, it looks you like could you could zo the floor, about this. you know, you could zo the floor and then use a zo charge to keep the bandit off with the concussions. Like, there's just so many things they could do. All right, this is adaptation. I don't even know what this is. I'm gonna lose my fucking mind in a minute. Oh, ghost, thank you very much for getting the sub to gotcha and oh, there uh, Mega we go. Boss. Okay, very much appreciate it. Is dead, finally. Oh my goodness, finally, they figured it out. <laughs> They completed what a fucking gold ring stack could complete, finally, after getting Bandit Trick twice. Yeah. Alright, 3v3, they got this. Unless I'm ahead. Am I ahead of you? Uh, no, same thing. I'm at one one fifty right now. Whatever, a few seconds off. Okay. I just don't want to spoil anything if I talk. for example, and then what would BDS immediately do? They let it quiet down for just a little bit. Then Shiko or Leaky Fact would peek the breach, see if anybody was out on the window, and take a gunfight there. They were playing with a level of confidence that was good enough to beat tournament favorites. But right now, they're doing the same thing against one of our. Hi, dude, I'm losing my like mind. I'm literally losing my mind right now. Like, I mean, they finally did it. So we're okay. He's working together so well. Perfect with the shots as he oh so often is. Now it's man disadvantage. They beat Brede, but that's not the game. They still need to make their way into sight. We saw how it fell apart when they couldn't get that part of the map opened up before. They've done that. You know what? At this point, I was rooting for W7M, but the fact of what just happened with that bandit trick, I'm rooting for BDS now. I do not care. Like... <laughs> At this point, I hope like W7M does not deserve to win. He's now lost that visibility through the black mirror. Low, but if he can win this duel, the round for W7M becomes far more winnable. Whether it does or not, we'll have to actually have to see. I mean. With you still have this mirror window, sure it's cracked, but all the angles inside of the site, Loban as well, just one concussion, barely any secondary utility for W7M. We're spending so I much time. I am actually gonna so lose it, bro. Guessing if BDS have all of these angles. Looks like Loban's actually concussed himself. I don't know where the the plan was there. He runs right into Shiko, who finds his second kill of the round. The goo mines from Shiko will now give information to BDS, and Shiko just does it all himself. Three unanswered kills. BDS win the round. And what BDS do better than almost anybody else in the world, and yeah, we'll say better than anybody else, is they get aggressive when they're in kind of a bad spot or even just an even spot. You saw twice in that round it happened. First, when they stopped Le uh, Brede from going from the bandit trick, what happened? Leaky Pack immediately pushed up to the breach, immediately got a trade back to make sure that man disadvantage didn't fall apart. Then what happened in the 3v3? Shiko does it again, follows up the Nitro Cell, pushes in through connector, is able to make that happen. Some Something that Fresh said on the desk is that in the mid round is when W7M are losing. The funny part is W7M won against BDS earlier in the mid round. They seem awesome. I don't know what they're doing, dude. There's a strict script. 
very similar to how I don't know about that, dude. It's just there. It's just like crazy throwing here like how do you not even like okay maybe the first round you get bandit tricked on and like you know you weren't really thinking about it too much or like whatever it might be right how does it happen two rounds in a row bro like what finally though Like they're like, BDS is not even making holes in the floor to fight it or anything. It's just, you know. This is the issue, though, right? For W7M, they played this map a ton throughout this tournament. At the Montreal Major, they played 19 attacking rounds on Night Haven Labs. They have a 58 percent win rate on it, and the top floor that jumps up to 71. A big number. These are great numbers, that and that's supposed to be the the numbers that should push them to at least a 3-3 split. You see the panic in that tack timeout. They did not expect to be down this heavily this early on their own. W7M's map pick too. Yep. I know. Oh, to be fair, this map is very defender sided, so we'll see. Big said I love Pengu. Me too. Big dog. I can reach Pengu for These are like default rank setups. What's I don't know, dude. What are you doing right now? He got mittens on? He's got his mitts. He's got his toque. He's I force fed him a uh, contractually obligated control cookie earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cheer for Pengu. Everyone say hi to Pengu. Georgie. Yeah, it's not Piff. Honestly, W7 might need Pengu if they keep getting <laughs> <laughs> like this. He used to be a player, then he was a caster. Now I don't think that's how that works. Well, he's always been a content creator. John sick. W content over there. I've been Baseball sick for like a week and a half. <laughs> Basement Let's defense coming out from BDS. What we saw last time was a last bit of a roam. And will well, this like go around? Better. Well, Sorry, it's Jay pretty Meyer. much the same thing. Sure, maybe not Brede sitting in the Still plays. I think he's on SSG. Got players moving around the top floor, not trying to get too, know, know. too early on. If W7 give them the, give the fights, they're happy to take them, but BDS aren't looking necessarily stop them at the end. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking mostly at Licky Fact. He's all the way over in cafeteria. That's an easy spot to miss drones. You can, yeah. Even what we've seen at this tournament just it's a good angle, too, for the buck. And he pushes deeper. They expect him to fall back, but he doesn't. He right now is in a position right to go for a real late round flank. Oh, destroying W7M. I was going to say, they're eating him alive right now. Anyway, so he's in a really strong spot. I really want to see W7M address him. If they just completely ignore him. W7M got thrown off by the Maverick like man. They're taking. Yeah, but if you're a good team, you should. Be getting thrown off by a Maverick fan. Is taking this. This is good. They just need to ignore Solotov. I don't think they know he's there. Solotov. A hidden man who might now be found out. The answers to phone. They're nowhere near. I mean, like I said, W7M does. Uh, Solotov's got a flank. They have all the information. W7M does get to defend after this as well. <laughs> okay. Uh, W7M does get to defend after this too with a Maverick ban as well, so. That Valk cam has been up there the entire time. The Twitch drone went through, the feedback got information from it in the first 20 seconds of the round. It has continued to be a thorn. If they don't know he's there, oh, they know he's there. He's screwed. As you can hold. He got one though. He did his job. Solotov gets spotted and takes out Bulls before Dota's answers back, and now the time is the bigger issue for W7M. They found Shiko. I don't like these smokes. Dota's will be up top. Ten seconds remain. Diffuser now going down into the corner. Use this looking for the swing out. They gotta know he's there, right? They got they got Case down, though. Oof. Oh, that's that's big. It's a big pick early. He almost hit him. Oh no, W7M got that. I was going to say, there's Oof. no way. He has to go upstairs. 
Denies it from Uses, but what good play coming out from W7M2. Yes, they might have missed drone a player that was over inside a cafeteria. I don't think that that was a miss drone. They knew exactly what was I going on. I just don't think Saltoff they drone that. Flank. Saltoff still hit a nasty <laughs> shot. Okay, still got the job done. Went one for one, but that's far better than getting caught off guard, being distracted, meaning that your whole push gets spiraled out of control and you just fall apart. That was a solid execute, despite the fact that there were mistakes, despite the fact that there were things that caught them off guard. In the late round, W7 M, we're still able to stick is the base. new season we'll good everything looks good about it except for the blackbeard rework a split second earlier could if you want you could um oh did it get unpinned that is the important thing right for this immediate round to narrow the gap i had a video dude maybe tires have three three i guess i didn't like save it but the problem i'm looking at right now is solitaire was allowed to exist or at least was unspotted for a long time was able to hit a flank and get a kill a Valk camera was inside a garage the entire time. On. I think I have two videos my editors put up on the new season. Exactly when they're going to hit this, we can take down the thermite with the diffuser. They had all this information, all of this control that they could retake with players stationed off site. And what ultimately came down to it was, yes, poise from W7M in the late round. But most of that was in BDS's control. If somebody doesn't overperform and get a kill there in the execute, it very well would be BDS round in the end. We are going to it. kitchen and cafeteria for our oh. final round in the half. In the 19 attacks that W7M have had on this map through the tournament so far, not one of them was on this bomb site. Often considered to be one of the worst in the game, teams generally like to avoid it. Even W7M themselves have tried to defend it twice this tournament, and they failed both times. Teams have very low win rate on this site, but BDS think they're different. They're bringing the clash. They've set them up inside of lobby. They've actually got this wall open behind the clash. They're trying to make that rotate back into site when they need to. That's weird. I'm excited to see what they've got. And I think one tool that really makes this bomb site uh, 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 viable uh, is that clash, because you can see him moving around bottom house right now sure that air jab goes in but there's no vert you can play I actually that clash you can't really work up that hallway and pinch her if she's pushing Flash is so obnoxious and annoying bro it's pinned for you still oh for me it wasn't pinned and in the side itself once you actually eh, whatever we have a new pin do the same thing all over again this is one of the better sites for clash in my opinion on this map in general because it's very difficult to yeah it's a di down. i mean this is a good setup we'll see. i mean we'll see how it goes right here into site but there's no blitz no ying it's gonna be tough to make that happen if that's the game plan from w i i actually don't like opening that wall i know what they're like doing here but i don't know it just makes me like I feel it's like if the people that you have that are playing in there like die somehow, you're like completely screwed. On top of the standings for W7M has regained his form, but ultimately trails. But it looks like they're not really able to stop it. Why is Ubi pushing more shields? I don't know. Where are these defenders? They don't seem to have information. Dots falling off of this position. Bolts with one kill. Hughes, this is the last one remaining. A one yeah. Critical That's the only thing that I'm like, I don't really like about that setup. Is it's like once you get pushed off of like the lobby and stuff, which once they take upstairs and like there's too many windows there. There's a window on each side. There's a door. It's like you, I don't know. And then if you're having any pressure behind you too, kitchen, that's what's rough. I mean, I see what they're doing, but I, I mean, for me personally, I like to set that up and then still, like, reinforce the wall. They were struggling to get vert, struggling to get control into the site, but they were able when BDS either peaked or when they rotated in front of them to win those engagements and actually find an entry. It is a tie game, and I think that should be commended. BDS still felt like, though this round being an exception, they were in large control that entire half. They get the 3 3, though, and that ultimately is that is all that you need, even though there were mistakes, even if it was a little messy. W7M have mission he is rich dancing This is their pick. This is the must win in the BO5, and especially when you look at the stats. Uh, Trickster, thank you the 22 month resub. Welcome back. Great to see you, champ. Thank you, much, Trickster. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're just watching the major. All right, W7M is waking up a little bit, at least keeping things interesting. I mean, honestly, though, now W7M is going to get defense. Like, this, remember, there's no Mav up chat. There's no Mav. And this is BO5. Yeah, there's only one map so far. BDS, one consulate. 
You called this. I, I did. Six I mean, rounds I, I, ago. I mean, he plays the op. It's not like that was... I wasn't... One of three ops. Yeah, I wasn't pouring in the data. No, I know, but I'm just saying it's... I think they're going to do an A slash Thermite at the same time. Maybe? Wait, they're not running the... Not Am I losing my mind? They're not running Denial? What about the Fenrir? Well, the traps are still there. Fenrir's dead. The traps are still there. Why would they not run any Denial? EFAC opening up Electrical, or IT wall rather, and this is the one part that W7M struggled with on attack, and they will struggle with it as defenders as well. Something I will say I find interesting from W7M. Remember how strong they have an Oryx. I mean, I get that. Well, they do play a lot of shields, I guess, or potentially. Instead, it's Oryx, and it's you know, mirror windows are being brought oh. out, even if they are getting popped sometimes by these twist drones. Wow, what a shot! The long range also pops the second window. Ridiculous twitch play coming out from Solotov. Look at the lineup. Yeah, ridiculous. Solotov, I mean, yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't know. It seems like they're really set up to counter shields, maybe. Uh, the mirror. Yeah. All they care about is the sweet, oh. sweet gadgetry of a complex game. Looking for more. There's not a lot more to find with that twist drone. Instead, the guns are up, and Doss is looking for the oh, Raptors. That's he ugly. Find it. So oh, it is still pinned for you. I don't know. Well, we have a new one, I guess. Now. They go for an aggressive swing, but that's still getting punished. I don't know what's happening, dude. This is a throw. It's an actual throw. Is successful. Well, it was very silly of me in hindsight to say in round six that W7M can. They're just actually throwing. I mean, I feel like they have a lot of stuff to counter shields and maybe like a a glass maybe because they have warden and stuff or Ying. Okay, so fine. Keep the warden. Keep like keep the Oryx, maybe keep the Lesion, but instead of Fenrir, take Bandit. W7M try to peek inside of the site like VDS usually do. They do lose those fights. Dots whips that bag into on top of Raptors. The moment they're able to take down Shiko, Rita immediately reacts and is able to trade him out. And maybe it's okay to whip some of those gunfights if you're getting like three Bandit tricks in a single round. But they're not bringing that utility. They're bringing the Oryx. They're bringing the Fenrir. They want to be taking these gunfights. They want to be playing it aggressively. That's why they go for those swings. But it doesn't seem to matter. Playing against BDS, one of the greatest teams of all time. Now going to be a hard task down 1-0 in the second half. For the second round on defense, W7M, they're going to switch it up a little bit. We're seeing the Bandit. We're seeing the Kaid. We're seeing the Yuto play a little bit more. And we're also seeing some counter you fill. Leaky Fact bringing out the fuse, not with the shield, as we've seen for the vast majority of this tournament, but the AK instead. No shield bands, by the way, just in case you can't tell at the top of your screen. He wants the util here. Look at this. He's going to use the cluster charge to clear out the bandit batteries. But Ooh. there's a claw, isn't there? They missed both of those EMPs. Yep. Why would they not take a Thatcher? On the wall and a claw up above. Just this is like, this is what I do. This is what I fucking do in ranked. I throw the claw at the top of the wall. Okay. Any updates on Boston yet? I mean, as of right now, I will not be there. So we'll see, though. I was going to say, Thatcher's pick rate's been quite low through most of this event, but obviously so is great application. A single EMP would have disabled both of those. You wouldn't have needed to rely on those pocket EMPs. The question is, which of these operators do you substitute from the lineup to bring the Thatcher? So the pivot needs to be now for BDS. We got to get some kills. I mean, the clear, right? we can't allow them to both keep the main I would have probably gotten rid of Twitch, also have personally. Even, even I mean, I don't know. Maybe they didn't drone out. I mean, I would. You got to drone out and see if they have a mirror. If they don't have a mirror, you don't really need a Twitch. You know. Punishing these aggressive players. Loban is upstairs inside a connector. Almost everybody else is on the main floor in positions where they can retreat. But maybe they weren't able to drone it, and they like had to, you know, take the Twitch in case. The Twitch was really effective for them last round, so. In the Blackbird rework, hate it. Zero out of ten. Smoke lasts long enough to conceal the Fenrir, but he'll lose the rest of his team. 
Volps gone, Loban gone, W7M surrendering. I think there should be a drone hole down there too. Maybe not right next to the wall, but hoping that maybe this map will tilt towards the attacking side just somewhere. Perfect time for those Rotero drones to go in. Losing one, but still two more in pocket. Four Shiko on the Flores. Two rounds on attack, two drone ops, by the way. Brava over towards Flores. Dodez needs to get a kill here. I mean, somebody from either Dodez or Das, they gotta get this pick, start bringing it back, and if he doesn't win this fight, if it goes down 2v5, I think we're cooked, and again, they're just missing all of these shots the moment the opportunity arises. I don't know, man. The fact that W7M is throwing these rounds away right now, like, with a Mav ban, is crazy. I don't know. On this second half, Jesse, you called this the most important map in the best of five. They have to win it, and now they're down by two. W7M, they just don't seem to be recognizing the game state, right? They managed to stop that wall from being open down to the basement. BDS pivot, as we suggested that they would. They hunt down those roamers, and what happens? They get picked off with no remorse. Issuing a correction here, game does not recognize game. Uh-uh, not in this round at least. And I mean, you start to look at some of those deaths. I think maybe what's like kind of happening... Like, W7M is not reading into what BDS is doing very well. Like, they're running a lot of stuff to counter, like, shields and other stuff like that, right? And they're kind of, like, missing what BDS is running, and they're not really adapting to it very well. I mean, now they're running a shit ton of denial. It's like they keep going, like, extremes. They at least got seven. Really, really given they have a Thatcher now. Listen, the, at this point, they got rid of the dope. They're fighting for whatever they can get because BDS are outplaying them. That defensive lineup in the previous round. The you don't have to. You don't have to roam clear as hard here, so I guess it makes sense. The F knots, the goo mines, the barricades. Yeah, it's like they're they're not. Uh, they're definitely playing from behind. It does seem like. And face all of this utility that we've got to work through that's going to slow us down. And it just doesn't matter. They get a 5v3. And right here, the breach denial's back. The F knots are back. They need a 4 7 coach from the mean streets of Detroit shutting the way. Okay. Yes, W7M is also losing their ones, too. We're saying we're going to play with this electricity. We're going to do just what BDS were doing on the last round. And what worked for us in the previous round, number eight, even if it didn't result in a win. Some that electricity. Why are they not actively denying? There's no trick to be seen. Dodez, far from the Make wall, holes in the floor so that if you're about to get double zoned from beneath, you know. You have a person playing rafters. You have a BP. Like, what's the problem here? The funny thing is, too, it's not even like the breach messed them up the first time. They still got it open because there was no hard breach denial. This time they're like, oh, you know, we're going to bring the Thatcher anyway because we think that's smart. They're not even reacting to mistakes they've made or problems they've encountered. Sure, maybe I don't know, yeah. Case, but on this side, it wasn't a big deal. BDS are still thinking one step ahead of W7M. Shiko's getting all this free utility inside of the site. Utility and information. He got a read on two defenders, one of which is that smoke of Volps who's sitting idle. And now a third player has been spotted, which appears to be the legs of death. Dude, Brava drones are so Single fucking annoying, drone. actually. It's an incredible nuisance for W7M, and he just continues to harass enough. them while the remainder of BDS get into position. Banning Deimos might have been a mistake. It feels like the intel is even more valuable than which I could usually get. The first Candela, actually the third in the round, it won't be an actual prompt for a push. They're trying to blind the uh, bandit so he can't go for another uh, trick, of course. Out of batteries now. The opening pick goes the way of Dash, and they'll start to breach from rafters. This will be the execute. At least all those EMPs are down, so he uses his gadgetry. not that important. Solitar they had... Oh my... Dash. He got... How did he get Pillar? Four is gas now inside of the site. Will chase Solitov out of his position, and he narrowly misses onto the smoke. Both of them now walking away, quite wounded. Leaky yeah, W7M is getting outplayed like crazy right now. To stave off match point, but when you've got Shiko hitting shots like that, is the inevitable coming, whether you like it or not? Dots has been down three plays. I mean, it's right still winnable for W7M. Is alive as he's punished. He has positional and health advantage, so. There you go, 1v1. Woo! I thought he hit that shot almost there for a sec. That would have been crazy. 
keep this matchup close. His scoreline wasn't enough on Consulate to ultimately mount a full comeback from W7M, but as you said earlier, Jesse, at least it's something. At least it is something that they can think about to make them feel like they have a chance. I was a bit worried by that W7M lineup, especially dropping the Mira. You don't have a lot of ways to necessarily contest Garage. Obviously, they reinforce the rotate late. Then you can play the Breach Denial from it if you want, but BDS were again. Sure, Dash gets the opening pick, but BDS were getting so much control. They had Enter Garage, Enter Connector, had in Intel on players close on the door with that clutch drone to get Solotov in that position in the first place. Again, they are making these moves with the credit we can give W7M. At least here, they were reacting. At least here, they were firing back. BDS might have had control for a lot of it, but W7M... All right, we got something. In the last second. Dodez performing in the clutch as he's needed, but it's Logan who makes that aggressive play. Jumping out to Raptors... Possible. Otherwise, they could have just gone and planted in the other site. Wouldn't have been an issue. But Loban sees the opportunity and he takes it. When he was back in the Atlanta Major Grand Finals, Loban was the one that carried at the time Los to that position where they managed to go so far in the tournament mm. and nearly get the victory. This time around, if they're going to put up a good fight against BDS, if W7M want any hope of winning this final, they're going to need to rely on big plays and smart decision making, just like what we saw from Loban. Bandit tricking to be had. It was a big problem last time. They pull it off this time. BDS learning from their mistakes. Thatcher. So, wow, look at that. Learning from their mistakes, chat. Imagine. Imagine learning. Imagine. Put the Selma on, then throw another one. That time, it's Imagine so learning. An exothermic and a bit of a hard breach charge. And sure, you lose the hard breach charge, but you open up a big hole in the assembly wall. And exchange, I'd make that deal. I don't know about you. I'd make that deal. I think it's a pretty damn good deal. Damn good deal. Toad has, what is this positioning? There goes the Nitro, but it won't find anybody. It does stop the wall mm. from opening. That was the cluster charge, I believe, from Liquid Back. So, you know, you do a little bit more of that util damage. Gets a safer position as well as he falls off of that. This has been an awkward round from BDS. They're trying to use these cluster charges of Licky Fact to make the impact. Opening these castle barricades, they'll start to pop these open now. It'll be the Animus push or coming in from the main breach. Regardless, the smokes are going to be hugely important when they go for this defuse kit. It's going to have to be the smokes in all honesty because right, they they're like actually adjusting, you know, round by round. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know what W7M is doing. I'm shocked it's 5-4. I think W7M is quite literally only losing by one round because they've just been, like, I don't know, kind of gunning people. Now they turn the attention to the anchors, and they're already seeing success. Dots is far enough back that he'll see them coming, but just as what happened with Dodez, just because you see him doesn't mean you win the fight. Dots eliminating Leaky Fact. Numbers again go back to even. First Blood has really not been that influential because the trades about 20 to 30 seconds after the first pick have equalized the playing field for both teams. Whether W7M or BDS strikes first, it doesn't matter. The other always keeps it close. W7M have a winning hand here. 4v4, two toxic canisters left, and a C4. So long as they can hold this neutral advantage, they should... W7M, yeah, they the should have this. The coverage, use this they missed the smoke. Side, okay. Up. Bomb is literally going down. Going Why? Off of the plan, and BDS remarkably okay. Make it out alive. Oh. <sighs> Never mind. Okay. Dots as well as Loban with two very big kills. It's all up to Solotov in a 1v2 as W7M goes for the counter punch and for the most part lands them. Here's the bigger deal. Got to shake Solotov okay. off of this spot above. It looks like it's Loban tasked with dealing with him. All the wild dash getting on diffuser, firing through the floors, missing his opportunity. Dash falls off. Solitov is no info. He's got to go for it the last second. Oh. A slight misplay by Solitov and W7. How did he not make some holes above there to begin with? I thought they were going to lose that. I thought he was about to hit that too, but. Just on the Goyo up above, down below, the diffuser still falls off. He second guesses the counter diffuse, and that does give time for Solitov once he wins that fight to open up that hole, to use the pistol and get that kill, but still somehow, as if given a second chance by fate, he still...
still able to stick it in. Solotov has no idea. He is none the wiser. That round came down so close, and it was such a winnable 1v2 for Solotov, but a must-win round right there on a must-win map for W7M. It's those little moments. It always feels like W7 able to hold it out. In, even in the post plan, that felt like it was going to be BDS running away. They had top floor control. They had the fuse kit down, but it doesn't matter. Dash sticking it the entire time. He knows how important it is to stop that. You only want W7 to win because of your bats, dude. Maybe he fumbled the smokes. Maybe he wasn't able to stop the plants, but he still made up for it. Jumping on for that disable. The player up above wasting just enough time to be able to distract Saltov was perfect for W7M. Saltov has often been called one of the best attacking players in the game. He's one of the best Twitch players, I would say, in the entire world right now. And he rarely misses with that DMR and with the pistol. But when you don't have the information, when the panic starts to set in, when the pressure is this high and you're on a stage this big, mistakes are going to happen. Oh! I was just about to hunt. I cast or cursed him in my brain. That is brutal, because <laughs> you'll see why. Solotov has been on Twitch every single round up until this point, and what is he Georgie doing? missed a chance of putting your bidet on every toilet at the venue for the major. Dude, those toilets are probably so nasty. Can you imagine taking off a public fucking bathroom toilet seat? Ugh. Ugh. Waiting for the next player, though. So scary. What a shot that is for Ethan! Oh, my lord. Dude, I feel like this this game is just like... I don't know. It's kind of sloppy right now. I mean, am I going crazy here? Or does this just feel like, you know... It's not really who's like, wow, they're playing so great. So it's just like, all right, this team fucked up a lot. This team fucked up a lot. But you know what? This team, like, kind of, like, fumble fucked their way through to a round. I don't know, man. This, this, you know, like, Consulate felt a little bit more, like, clean from both teams. This is just a very sloppy map from both teams, in my opinion, right now. completely over. Uses has no hope in the 1v5. Jump in, in barbed wire, in a banshee. This is really going to be the time to talk to your teammates. <laughs> Try to reset. Get oh, he team killed. Line, I, th really I thought he team killed for it's a sec. Going at it with brilliant IGLs. Uh, we've seen it from Uses, and we've seen it, of course, well, I should say, we've seen it from Licky Fox. Yeah, like, they're just, the they're just misplays, dude. The like, they're not, exactly, they're not even, like, how can you talk to your I don't know. Without a tactical timeout? And they'll use an official one, too. It's just weird. This is a weird game of Siege. I'm not gonna lie. Three rounds in a row, and that site setup, especially something I wanted to highlight, was enabled to allow Loban to make that play. The clash was. It's just a weird. This is just weird games, honestly. This is just really weird. Which is where exactly he was waiting. The strategic setup from W7M that round was excellent. And the onus really is on BDS because the opening picks after the first two have completely slipped away. In the three rounds W7M have won, Lickyfac was only mm. able to get one in the basement uh, attack. And even then, they were still able, W7M were still able to hold out through that diffuse plant to take the fights on site and still win it out and neutralize that earlier this is just a weird game sure. dude maybe that's luck in this case it was skill for w7m mr donut when they're able Howdy. to basically win a flawless oh. round just taking the fight to you that's not a w7m we've really seen up until this point bds in the last major grand finals they had to ban this map they were fearful of it from what drops still available no they're all available right now like the the charm the gun skin there's like three gun skins actually i think you're against w7m and this is their bread and butter map this is the one they love to play more than any other in the entire pool and they're showing that now it's not always the cleanest round this is some uh, the, the sloppy gameplay that we sometimes see mm. from some of the top european teams but it doesn't mm. matter because this is one of the sloppiest matches in, for a finals i've ever seen maybe the sloppiest <laughs> it kind of looks like we're, we're playing the uh, first couple of rounds of the major. Dude, it looks like like our team playing ranked when like everyone's tired at three in the morning. <laughs> I do. 
on round 12. I don't know if it's that sloppy, but it's pretty sloppy. Bro, it's pretty bad. Like, I don't yeah. know. What the fuck what is the? that C4? <laughs> I just... <laughs> you were saying, Padip? You were saying? <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> I lied. Oh, he's lining it up. This might be a double. Oh, yeah, he's cooked. No. This is why I say we need to put the mirrors on the wall these days. Okay. George is the one that plays the mirror. I don't play mirror on this site ever. This is not the angle you need, though. I mean, you want this to be bigger so you can walk on in. They're still playing around catwalk, too, with Dota's mm, up here mm, ready for the mm, swing. Lick it back, found a kill with the pistol. Oh, and nice trade. That's huge. Oof. Because I feel like a lot of the time, there's usually, like, one good mirror spot, and then the other one is just like, eh. This one way is crazy with that mirror as well. Yep. That Volps is holding. Back, of course, bringing this fuse a few times, oh, this might cook him reinforcing this. this. Oh, he got it off. Nope. Yeah. Oh, I'm saying it's going to cook BDS. Late. Oh, yeah, yeah. The ability to open the wall. There's no more breaches, yeah. They have clusters, so yeah. bamboozle the fuck out of them. I mean, they do have that. They might be able to clear this out, but if they don't have any you impact shoot. off these cluster charges, it's going to be a... He can shoot? Yeah, okay. Maybe not. <laughs> he's just not going to shoot. He just, like, looked at it, and he's like, nah. <laughs> okay. Oh, he doesn't know. Oh, this guy's oh. in a meeting. Oh. No. Yeah. This is a W7M round. If, like, a fact clutches up on this. Biggest Frenchman on the stage has something to say about this. Full HP on the three remaining players from W7M. 30 seconds left. Cluster charges go out. Yeah. E back now tussling on that Yep. Didn't the fuse cluster you used to leave a hole in the wall? Uh, no. It only leaves holes in like soft walls. So far, I'm cave. spot on on all my guesses. Uh, Pollinator, they dropped 64 about three sub walk back. I did it for hard walls. Just left a little tiny holes. BDS falling short at just uh, six, and now here, not only do they surpass that, or they'll ever be streamer gun skins, maybe. I don't know. That's it for Matt. We might have a long probably pretty terrible. But what does the desk think about that match? Let's hear from them ourselves. Thank you very much for that, Parker. A uh, very interesting second map. We were pretty much predicting a very quick finish for BDS. We prepped all our notes, and then all of Listen, a sudden... Listen, chat. W7 Next M map, I mean, BDS. It, I think it'll be 3-1. I think they're going to win the next two. Yeah, and the red is dressed like he's ready for Anchorman. Yep. <laughs> Wait, who? Fresh. Uh -oh. the sweater. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon now. They reset the bracket, kind of. They don't have to worry about it. They can yeah. go into clubhouse, but they need to be better. It's absolutely crazy. You know, they, they started the game awfully, right? Obviously, BDS got themselves up. But I think it was very, very, very important for W7M. They managed to achieve that 3 free split. There was a basement round. I think it was round... It's actually five, crazy. It took them side. three rounds to do that. To that round back, basically from the brick Bro, that was... I, I honestly cannot believe they won that map. The amount of, like, misplays that they made was, like, ridiculous. Early on was really yeah. bad. Like, that was really rough to watch. I told George that really I think it was pinged. I think it's a, a spectator bug. It had to have been pinged. There's no way that guy has a lineup. Just shoot the mirror window. Or maybe he's just that goaded. Maybe. I mean, it's, a, it's, the, it's the normal mirror spot. Maybe he just has the lineup. 
Oh, yeah, BDS. Sorry, no, no, you go. That's you, insane. Believe me, your point is going to be more valid than my point. Look in the general oh, area and no, hope it's was, in the... Uh, nothing. You're aiming at the right the spot and he was. I don't think there's any luck. Anything these guys do. Maybe there is a little bit, but... I don't know the amount of misplays I've seen. I <laughs> <laughs> this game. <laughs> the most important thing right now for W7M is the fact that they got the victory. Sure, that can make that. Okay. I like Fresh. I okay, he's a good lad. Map, though. I think Don't be hating on the that. casters, except for Intero. We can hate on Intero all day. Yeah, I completely agree with uh, what Jack just said right there. Basically, if we look at that victory, W7M in terms of fragging power is winning the game. But strategically, there were some issues. If you look at the beginning, we're on route four right now, and it's been three consecutive rounds and they cannot problem solve a simple banditry. At least so he says time, it, dude. The entire lineup for it. Nobody's covering the jump out. You see Thermite, Thatcher, Zofia, get ready to get rid of that bandit. And it's exactly what happened. They do it perfectly, right? So we start bringing Zofia for that. And win the round. Look at the reaction. It only Brody took him like three right years, here. but they did <laughs> it. Aggressive. He's not letting them that mind control. He wants to get that man advantage back. Look at Bride right now. He just died. And this is for your rank stack. When you're dead, go on that camera. He's calling from IT bulletproof to for Likefak to go aggressive there and get that man advantage back. It's 4v4. Likefak will get traded. Look at what Yuzu is doing. Exactly the same thing. They're not giving them any space. They're always, always fighting. Now at this point, it's a 3v3, and I want you to pay attention one last time to these guys that are dead. Likefak is already on Lobby Stairs cam, but that's a default cam, right? Why is he on a default cam? Because Dash, solo from backstab right now, is just coming in, the, in between here, the guys, and backstabbing, but he didn't shoot the default cam. And that's a big issue, because then look at Shaiko and Yuzus once again, going to play aggressive and getting that frag. Once again, an issue consistently for WSNM, getting rid of that information. They can close off the bomb site. They've went from a 4v5 to a 3v2. Look at this beautiful setup. Once again, Yuzus, Solota, Shaiko, triple crossfire. They can do it, and it's exactly what happens. They get the first pick, and Shaiko will get that last pick here. Consistently fighting for that man power. That's BDS playing together. That wasn't enough for this match. Now mm. we have a match, ladies and gentlemen. It's 1-1. One one. The third map is coming after a short break. I don't know, yeah. They, listen, listen, there's, uh, this. Is that Cap Cape? Uh, is it like the Mew Elite or the, or the new Smoke Elite one or something? Maybe? Ooh. Or T-Bird? <laughs> kind of looks like everyone. <laughs> no, 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 like I'm, I don't know. I'm saying maybe, okay, never mind. It's just a cookie. Never thing. mind. It's, it's just, just a protein ad. cookie. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. <laughs> hmm. Have you ever tried one of those protein cookies, George? They're actually really good. I have uh, one. I've tried one. Yeah, I actually, I actually have one behind me. Like in the mm. closet. Uh, Do they only uh, have one flavor, George? I've only gotten one. I think they have a bunch. I think they have a bunch. Hmm. BDS was playing such good crosses on defense. They were trading so well. They do that pretty well. I feel like they're pretty aggressive. Yeah, but they're aggressive when they need to be. Mm -hmm. They're not. They're not like the normal Brazilian team, like. Five people are dead in a minute. Aggressive. They just aggressively trade. Yeah. Hmm. Wait, why doesn't um why doesn't Macy J have drops? 
Um, no clue. I think that's one of the main people that would get it. <laughs> Um, you also have to like sign up for it as well. So maybe he just didn't do it or didn't do it on time or something. That's fair. I feel like every time I watch Macy is that more? play this game, he's always super sour. Well, it is it's it's sour. everyone's kind of out to get him in this game now. I don't, don't understand. He is he's, a very nice human. I know. It's just he's so cute and the bad part of the community always just stream snipes him and fucks with him. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, people. I'm not gonna lie. People in the community, in the siege community, just like absolutely fucking suck. You, there's, there's, just. Let's just put it this way: there's what you guys see, and there's just way more fucking weirdo shit that always happens. Trust. <laughs> just I, I don't know, man. People are just so unwell. Like, just so weird. People are just definitely really fucking odd in this game. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's not just... It just comes with the territory. Like, you stream, you just get, does. like, mm. weirdos all the time. Let's see. Look how, look how much they lost, dude. So what this is, is this? This is me. Open this bets. is Visa. Beat we Gilly. just we just trio queued and I guess got god tier teammates. Always oh, smoke these guys. When uh when was this? Last night at like three in the morning. Jesus. <laughs> thirty seven, dude. Losing thirty seven is diabolical. Oh yeah. With a dot seven KD. Five and seven. Oh, oh no. What, you get four ELO a game? <sighs> That's a lot of ELO to lose in champ. Hmm. It's nine games. A little over nine games of ELO. They instantly left. This is like the second kind of crazy stuff. I mean, it's not insane. It's not as bad as uh, um, when we beat Ivan. <laughs> Dude. Donut, 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 Donut is like printed out a fucking picture of him leaving it's the just game. Funny, he put that on his dude. fridge. He put it's that just, on his fridge. It's 100%. just funny, bro. <laughs> we were all on alt accounts and just shit on him. Donut didn't even see my C4 on that match. Did you see it? Did no. I show you guys? Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm gonna do this. Um, it's here. Hmm. So he's in between the shelves? Because I saw him. I saw him the, the shadow. I know he's there. Kobe. Is that when he left the game? <laughs> uh, no, this is early, early, early. <laughs> the game. 
W7M and then this guy gets, this guy gets fried on the stairs. And then I overextend here on the breach. I can't see outside that breach at all. I don't know what happened with you that came. You like decided to not be actual bedip shit. Playing good players, you gotta lock in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, BDS. I gotta be honest, Donut. They were in control of that last sick. And now you find yourself on Clubhouse, and to me, I don't like this pick out of them. And giving there's some weird things going on. So mental space isn't quite a hundred percent there, but. But the fact if I really need to, I can lock in. They know how it works. They know the functionality of it. <laughs> the last game Ivan played was three days ago. Now, like <laughs> when, we, when, when we beat him. <laughs> he oh, hasn't no. touched the game since. Going into this match, and that creates, Donut's like so proud of this. this. He's just like... It's just funny, dude. You want to be spawning hope for the likes of W7M. For me, it's not only about like winning that map, it's the way they did it. Yeah. They did it with confidence. Because uh, this they were one, I like. Fights, because they were going aggressive and gaining that control. And for me, doing it that way is the best. I just best don't understand. And be like, like, yeah, we can actually beat yeah. these guys. A 99% win rate is crazy. But unfortunately, we don't want to hear from you. It is time to get underway with like me on my Furrow account. With the incredible trio. <laughs> Thank you so now 98%. Beautiful trio on the desk, and then you Correction. Bob, you're, uh, Asterisk. There's a zookeeper running around looking for you. You've escaped your enclosure. So we have I wonder what that shows for your win loss and really game. Rob. He's just like, he's so big, man. Like, it's kind uh, of. I, I get scared like, a little bit. Like, I, I don't know. I can I'm look at two, sure. 300 he's wins. Small. I love Rob, but sometimes I Four or five losses. Like, he walked by the casting booth in the middle of the previous. It's going to be a 40 or 50. The ground literally shook. Yes, it was quite uh, I can tell you. Hold up. Anyway. Clubhouse as our third map. There was I on Drone Bozo when we beat him? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. they the map. Jesse, you said they were on a seven game winning streak on that map. I'm they looking at the eight. matches. But how does Clubhouse shake out? It shouldn't have been that long. Teams. Theme Park I mean, this Village, LA. The BDS Club chose in their last BO5 right, against W7M, oh, and they won go. that one 7 2. So if history repeats itself, it looks good. <clears> well, are they going to prevail? Which of these teams will go up to series point? Because a win here means you're at two of the three needed to secure a championship. Um, Clubhouse is ready. Let's find out. That's his lifetime. Intero does look like an absolute caveman. I'm going to be real. His favorite operator to ban on Clubhouse historically has been Thatcher on the attack. But with the way bans have gone Thatcher, in this series, man. I wouldn't be surprised to see a shakeup whatsoever. W7M will get the first ban of this map. And on attack, I think he's in just hit an event. Well, I think it's Intero's new tradition, casting tradition. duo. Let me try that again. To the tradition. 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 Nailed it. Third time's a charm. BDS, this is the question. They've not been banning shields so far today, but this is a map where they tend so to ban the multi So he's 263. Yeah. First time. And big thing I'm looking at right now, Deimos on the board for Shiko on a map with a lot of important soft floors. Yeah, this has been really That shows a 52.6 win-loss ratio in well. game. The reason I thought maybe we wouldn't mm. see a mirror is because it's also W7M's most banned defender. So now that BDS have taken mm. out the pool, the question for W7M goes, well, what do you Probably want to do? Probably showed a, a lot more before, before that. Powerful playing on with only four losses. BDS should win this map. Like, so I don't know. Maybe for the Valkyrie as well. Like, the first map, I was pretty sure BDS would win. Actually. Well, they should win 3 1 now. I think. I guess Ivan should know if he ever wants to play me again. Zip is smelly. I'm keep dropping. Real. Are you guys unhappy or happy? You need with that four other players that are willing to lock in. Yeah. You know, there's some mixed voices out there. Remember, they do love car batteries. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Half the people in this arena cheer every time they go to the mechanic. They're like, yes! It's obviously a great map for Bandit. Playing up above, you see that often on the CC wall, but not today. You know, Jesse, I think now would be a great time to talk about your car battery experience when you and I went on vacation together last year. What happened? My car battery died because it was minus 40 below in BAMF. And, but when your car battery dies, Parker, you normally... Did he just cade for a jacuzzi wall? Right? He did. So yes, he did. Drive away. I can drive you there. In bathroom. And I called the mechanic, to be clear. And Nerdy. Said, well, it was almost Christmas, so we're booked up for a week. BDS will bring... The so they didn't bring a anyway. Twitch and a, a or a Brava? That's true. I don't play Bane. Huh? I play Kaid. You needed Bride. I did need Bride. They're going for a roam clear here. 
Yeah, it was for a full day. Was I'm a not gonna lie. Year, uh, <clears> I don't understand yeah. how like reinforcements are like spread out so much. Minus yeah, it was, it was what do you mean? Go play. Uh, are freezing going into mountain number they, three to win seven. So in sight, you gotta have like and also, some core spots. I, I think you're you're overthinking the fact that like they understand that the gap to hit side is there, even though they got less of and they just dirt teams right that will hit it. Right. There's like your TV most safe of all. I got is are the Lions playing yet? Let's see. Lions. They, find, they are playing right now. Oh shit! They already played. They went 52 to fucking six. <laughs> okay. So they they move rotations. Wow. <laughs> Move reinforcements to help them hold upstairs. Oh my lord. What? All three things happened. It would have been like plus 2,000 odds. Damn. Did you end up putting a pick in for that or anything? What is he doing? Is he typing? As we saw through much of Nighthaven Labs, the team that gets the opening pick very quickly gets traded right back. So far, Clubhouse no different. He said all uh, line spread 20.5 with Monty and Gibbs score. It's got to be the worst place to stand gotcha. in the hallway. Don't Dobsy. Yeah, Pam is good, dude. Hope everyone is for you as well. Another kill from Shiko now is the Death Martel look to get it. Out. Mm. Efac finding Dodez and Volp says no mm. choice but to run into the ball. I saw that was Dots to get that. Oh, kill. Dots just made the play. Two v two. By the way, BDS thought they had an opening to the map from Blue, bursting into the bomb site, and now they've been knocked down to just two remaining players. Usus is swinging in. He's getting that pick. Yep. Up against Volp. Nice teamwork. He allows Usus that information to find the kill instead. Nobody on BDS. How's my son been with throwing up? He's good. Yeah, yeah. He only. It was only like two days. Who he wasn't even like you? sick. He was just like I don't know. He just threw up for some reason. Yeah, so who had it though? Um, I think Breeday did. Ooh, he almost got both of them with that C4. In map number two, and Shiko just showed us exactly why. Maybe it should have been banned again in map number three. The I think there's a lot more so depth the to their that's just good strategies right. than even yeah, we Shiko understand. The, Donut you know, the as well. To find that opening pick. Mm. But it's right even though they're they're being burgers right the now, there's there's floor. definitely the some depth. Comes out. Well, there definitely is. I think they were honestly Shiko just something was going on on Nighthaven. Like this looks a lot cleaner. Honestly, no, this does. Yeah, this is like a well-founded map. Well, that's really? that's what I'm that's what we're saying too. It's like they've played this map for years, right? Oh, yeah. Same iteration. So you have to understand that there's there's like lines in the defense that they want to hold as long as possible. They either play their life or they play for a fallback, and sometimes playing your life, having another reinforcement makes or breaks around. Threatening about this BDS squad mm. when they are performing well is even though Licky Fack is gone, even though it's just Shiko and Yuzu's calming, they still know how to make that right play. Every this is an interesting time. choice of bomb site, though. Knows when to step back and in oh. basically initiate for one of his teammates instead of taking all the action for himself. Dota's getting a little bit too Aggie much Dota action early on, put down a very low HP, and that's extremely important. When you're the Azami holding rafters, sure, there's Kibas and Magnets here, but with a Capitao on the board... That you see that, George? Really you see that Castle Strat? OP. <laughs> that's actually Donut's Castle Strat. <laughs> that is my Castle Strat. <laughs> Look at those head holes. Wow. They were they were literally just wait they they were wow. watching my stream They're like oh Donut E Donut knows something that we don't. <laughs> All right, Diggy's Joshi. This is so interesting. I mean, he just threw up a lot for no reason. No, yeah. I don't know. It was actually like uh, I don't know why he would do it, but he would just like shove his hands in his mouth and just make himself puke. I'm like, okay. Holding lounge. So like, just basically what we we did as like a. Uh, 
you know, obviously we just like tell him no, you not to do that. Heathing, I don't know. Garage. We would just like, you know, really watch him to make sure he like couldn't do that. And then like, know, look how much time is also we would just make sure that before he like went to bed, that he had like a lot of time to like crawl around and stuff like that. And it seemed to have both done two things. It made it so that his like food was, you know, and like normally we would, you know, give him a bottle or they, you know, he'd eat, then give him a bottle, you know, then you have like an hour to play around, but then you have a bottle, uh, and then, you know, pretty much you'd hold him up for like 10, 20 minutes, something like that, right? And then he'd be like, good, you put him down, he'd just sleep, but I don't know why he, uh, he, there was like two, it was only like two days that he did it, but he was like putting his hands in his mouth and making himself throw up. It's a big one, my dad. So, but we just made, basically, after he has his bottle, we kept him up for like, we let him held him up for like 10, 20 minutes. Then we let him crawl around um, for like another like 30. And then, what, what are they that? doing? I don't know what they're doing. No clue. <laughs> they can't clear garage. <laughs> they could not clear garage. Then we let him crawl around for like another like 30 minutes. Then, what happened? To normally he's been good since then. Yeah, the this your own mouse. I really can't genetics. He didn't even use one. No, he, just, he would just put like his hand in his like mouth. I don't know. That's unfortunate. I felt like they had good control. And when the timer started to tick away, they went for a brazen rush. Don't no, play in 75 S FOV. Am I tired? Um, I, I mean, kind of. I think that would have really. worked if Jaiko had hopped in the window at the same time. The cash door guy actually. Oh, three, of, oh, three of the fucking BDS guys just died in half a second on that breach. And they were just like, let's just go, like, push, see if we can just frag yeah. out, and then they all just got fried. <laughs> like, this, this cookdom right here, like, he's not even focused on the CC window. Well, the thing was, Shaiko was just holding for the little my swinging. On the head walls, I think. Breach, and there's a very high probability he gets shot from one or the other. I, Instead, they just send Leaky back up a little detached from the rest of the push. Because he, he had those he guys, I my those, targeted. Mm -hmm. I think those guys, garage, uh, yeah. are cooked. Oof, they that's rough, Topsy. Maybe he inherited just, my fat function and I was going to eat everything, including yeah. himself. Hey, listen, that only happened like recently, okay? Where is this when I was, I was when I was younger, that castle. probably on the bed. On the bed, probably. Listen, okay. It reaches all the way to the top of the window. Yep. <sighs> I uh, I was in really good shape. Until recently, okay. Have you seen the dock strat for holding rafters? Where you just where you just tank the flames and you just heal yeah, yourself? Yeah, yeah, that's old, old dude. That's not, um, that's like dark corner and uh. Rexon did it. I find Rexon did it. Last few years. One HP. It popped up and no scoped the guy to save the round. Nine years ago. What happened Probably, to yeah. Matchup. Who did they play BDS Listen, or... once I started playing BDS Siege, I blame this video game. I remember. George should know. Maybe not. Wait, say that again? Who, uh, who took out Sonic? Uh, FaZe? I think it was... Yeah. Wait, no, FaZe played BDS. Or before that. Yeah, before that, though. Like, they played in, like, quarterfinals, and then BDS versus FaZe was semis, I think, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. See the Dokeby call go out in response. I was curious how Licky Fack was going to try to deal with that prox alarm, but they just rush in. They're trying to get the kills. I mean, this didn't work out so well for BDS. Oh, oh Ooh. they're just in. Jim, Jim, Jim. Oh, they don't have this castle open. Uh oh. Is it nine hit though? You, I was going to say, do you think it's prepped? Great <laughs> hit. <laughs> and now they'll be hunted down by Shaiko. He's got yet another player from W7M to get through first. 
It's time over by weight room. Just still stacked. Five kills so far. And now I'm pretty thick right now. It's got to be a hit. We'll have Solitan for backup. With 30 seconds to go. Block management for BDS has been a bit of an issue. How does he not know that you can't hit it from that angle? Oh, oh. Ooh. 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 I feel like, but yeah, I, well, I feel like stacked is actually nice. Okay. That's two opening stat. I feel like when you say that someone's stacked, it's like they're like really built. I feel like I'm definitely not that. I think I'm uh. Actually, now I feel like I feel like I was actually a fat ass, like maybe a few months ago. But I lost at least like the like the large amount of extra weight, and now I'm just you know got a few pounds to lose. I'd be pissed if I was the IQ. True. He was aiming for the IQ. He wasn't aiming for Dokubi. Oh, that's Forrest. Oh, those are all the SSG guys. Was that Forrest that they just showed? That was. Forrest and Ashen. Everyone loves Ashen so much. Why you gotta bring it up? It's a spot for me. Because... Why he talks a lot of shit in the server. Justy, he loves Ashen. I mm. what I think about you could be His an favorite SSG player. When you're not casting your okay. okay. SSG know firsthand what it's like to go up against this W7M team, and yep. they should know better than anybody. Being eliminated by this Brazilian squad, it's no easy task. Even for BDS, in a matchup that they are heavily favored in, don't have the ability to take CrossFit and such an Olympic weightlifter. Extremely strong threat, and they're proving it now on. <laughs> I don't think so, dude. Away from them, but they're <laughs> so good at this late round decision making. There's never a round that you can count out for W. You know, listen. It's okay. I've just this is this is uh. This is, I think, who I am now, I guess, for the time being. I'll have more time to work out down the line, maybe. Probably not. We just don't really care about this side of the map. They'll fire some shots up above, but Zoltov might be wasting his time on this side, but BDS as a whole not slowed down by this whatsoever. Is that a dirt run out from Dots? It sure looked like it. This combo is making you a midlife crisis. Dude, you want to, you should just buy a Corvette now. You'll feel better. Time, yes. Motivation, probably not. Yeah. Needs a stronger supporting cast, though, is... Gunfights have been hard to come by for both Solitov and Leaky Fack after having two outstanding maps, but a slow start for them on Clubhouse. Oh, look at this creep from Dash right here. Just spots the Shai. Oh. oh, no. Oh. Right. There's a lot of oh. damage, but on the counter swing, not working out. Ooh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Was that when W7M go on these fights? Look at how much damage Justy, they he loves SSG. It's his second favorite team behind M80. M80 is his favorite, but, you know. Actually, no, he was rooting for Sonics in Discord pretty hard, you know. No, that was a big fight. Oh, yeah. That was a huge fight. The Kami commentator. We have the commutator. <laughs> is very different from the way that he used to play on that old vitality roster, the old supremacy roster. I will Back give I will give Parker credit. He's actually a good caster. I'll never say that to his face ever. But he's a good caster. In other offensive threats. Your reliance on your anchor to win 1v2s and 1v3s over and over and over again. It's going to go down. And because of that Breeday's numbers have suffered now he finds himself staring down four players on the side of W7M trapped inside a dirt tunnel. He could just be a gentleman, sit outside, let the rest of your team talk through this. I suspect BDS walls, walls, walls. You see that? Walls. Providing, of course, Breedate does not pull off the clutch to the century. He gets a single kill. 
No, and Tiro is good. As much shit as I give him, he actually is good at, you know, he's good. He's a good caster. Dude, high fives are very stressful on stage. You don't want to. You don't want to leave your teammate hanging, dude. Six and one to start off this clubhouse game. He doesn't stutter, doesn't repeat phrases. He's fun and he's really good. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Remember that clip? Which clip? Well, yeah, Kix will always be the best caster because, I mean, Kix had everything, right? Like, he was a pro, he was good at the game, he knew what he was talking about. He had good pacing, conversation, all that kind of stuff. And it was BDS uh, is losing a lot of their drone economy and they're capitalizing yeah. on a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, sometimes, you know, life's not fair. That's still coming off of good drone information. I think when you do lose those drones, though, the thing about Deimos, he's only tracking one off at a time. Yes, you can find out where one player is at. But How did he miss w that C4? That was actually kind of crazy that it didn't get shot. So that's wild. What is this? That was just, that was the turning point of the round right there. Oh my god, I hate this clip. I remember this now. Sometimes I swear it happens where you shoot the fuck out of a C4 and it just like doesn't break. I don't know. I don't know if it's like the hit registry of the game or like maybe your bullets are literally just going through the hitbox and it's fine. Something happens there, dude. I don't know what the interaction is. But it's a very annoying one. That's for sure. It sucks when you're like shooting directly at a C4 and it just like somehow doesn't get hit. Seven of your drones. As long as you get a five e three afterwards, you could call that a win. But look, at, they're bringing in the Grim. We've not seen that operator so far. This Grim is so broken so right now for high level play. Intro. When you spot the player logistics, you put a B down in the middle, and they're either forced to push towards the Jacuzzi breach or pull back instead. It forces them to make a decision, and if they decide to get aggressive, like W seven M have been doing in the mid round, they might have to walk through those Bs. Also, if BDS do take too long to get into the execute. You're really gonna appreciate that you're able to be red, put one CCTV, push one cash, mm -mm -mm. and even the gunfights are taking far better than what we saw before. Yeah, I'm just I I am kind of tired, but I'll be good. A minute twenty left. They haven't even entered the building. I went to bed like late yesterday. Was to assess that hey, if we get into early altercations, things don't tend to go our way. There have already been very lethargic rounds from BDS on attack. It's hard pressed for them to get any slower. But maybe if they're a little bit slower and a little bit more calculated, better use of their utility, better use He's going to fly out of this wall. There's actually a little bit of the wall up there. He needs to get that. Yeah, there you go. Dude, who is on Maverick? Holy shit. <laughs> they switched cheese the wall, that's why. Yeah, that, that was crazy. Crazy work, folks. As that breach opens up, Volts was a little bit too close to the front line. Uh, Mr. Bill. Posted up outside, still governing over this breach, has found two kills from this spot. In bursts the buck. Shiko in as well. Nitro Cell from Dots will take care of Uses. The tracker now oh, going on to no, Dots. They win. They win this. Lost the plot. In 13 Ooh, seconds maybe. of the Nitro. No, no. Triple? Oh, he missed it! Oh my gosh, if that Nitro Cell landed, they would have lost that. 
Uh, if you want, join up in Discord, Mr. Ville. We're just watching the games. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. And who's sitting on the other side of that breach as it opens up? It's Leaky Fack. Leaky Fack won a major in his rookie stage. One of a very small class of players who can say that they've accomplished that feat. When he won his oh, last no. major in Yongshaping, he was fact. not the same player yeah, yeah. he is what today. That's now he's doing. leading the charge for BDS. Their IGL, their main caller, he's very vocal on this team. The reveal is already done, yeah. I have a video up on, like, um, a lot of it. Well, I already played it early. You guys feel like they've they've promoted that elevate skin like thirty times? Yes. I haven't seen it. In the, well, actually, I've seen it a couple of times for Iona right? or the G36. I haven't. Yeah, I've only seen them do like that skin and like the OXG the blast one. skin. The blast skin, yeah. Maybe sales are down for those. I don't know. <clears throat> Probably win the whole final. I mean, doesn't elevate like they're they just have what an APAC team like you're not really talking about the final, right? They don't exactly you're not really talking about the final, and it's about that bringing the team in saying, No, guys, we're not gonna overthink not exactly the org that I think of when uh, let's take it one step at a time. I'm still like extra promotion, especially being the youngest. He could get he can get that through there. Ooh, he's just not here. He probably thought it couldn't hit him or something. Yes, the new BB has a shield. It's fucking horrible. I don't know why they did it. It's just annoying. Screaming at me. If I was the Maverick on the wall. Yeah, why would I not be screaming at you? George. What? I think that's crazy. You know, like, not back you know, like, in up. But that's just me. Oh. 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 Don't has eliminated Leaky Fact. There's another over in that position. Is now Solitov is crept in his position. Oof. That shotgun does so much damage, damage, dude, on land. So it just does a lot of damage for everyone that's not me. That's what I'm Okay. So, like, if they realize that they have two con cash side, they can just rotate this push. Unconventional sight. Oh. What? I don't think the they open the other open. side though. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> and Mav is dead. <laughs> push the main stairs and launch the edge. They can hop in the gym for free right now. Zone flipper with a bunch of feels and someone yeah, waiting for them to hop together. in. Oh no. Oh no. Unfortunately, he gets to Volps a little bit too late for Yuzis' sake, and now he has to retrieve Solitov as the last... How about the mess where he'll kill both of them? <laughs> like, there's no way to Deimos track the mute, because he's got mute jammers, right? Yep. You could always, uh... They don't have a Thatcher. I was going to say, you could just, like, Thatcher the room and then do it. Yeah. He's banned. Dash is still upright. Uh oh. Did you guys hear that? It sounded like a fucking pig snorting in the background. Yes, yeah, I did. I did okay. I wasn't yeah. going crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah. it was like, <laughs> the fuck was that, dude? <laughs> I think Intero got hungry. <laughs> oh, no. Do you guys hear that shit? I'm not going crazy, right? Like, Intero got hungry as wild. He's able to call information for his teammates, clutch up in a 2v2, but not this time around. They know that game. They know the tricks that BDS like to play. And W7M are able to counter that and get the 4-2 split. 
you've also got to give huge credit to the way that Volt played inside of Cash. He wasted so much time. Yeah, he was stuck. He was dead to rights. He was never going to get out of Cash unless he killed every single player on BDS, but it didn't matter because they were still getting the kills. They never lost that man advantage, and they were always wasting time out of BDS. I thought that was me. No. The MVP right there, but also a small thing on that attacking side. I wish. Comms from BDS getting a little muddied. It's He's searching for a truffle. It doesn't matter that much in the grand scheme of things, but when you walk up that red stairs, it's a bit of an angle heist for Shiko walking in front of Licky Fack as they're both looking at and trying to take down the same guy. It's a small example, wouldn't really mean a whole lot in the grand scheme of things, but as you see them struggle to clear out that one guy in cash, death marks can't work. Multiple guys looking at it. Still doesn't work. Volt still gets out of there with multiple kills. BDS's problem solving is really taking. Dude, like it's weird that like they're they're like promoting like the oxygen skin now. Like, isn't oxygen like not even an org anymore? And then tossed right onto the opening that he was working on. There's really no reason why a Maverick all by his lonesome shouldn't hear that C4 get ripped. I don't know. So again, maybe. Tintero's mating call. He's in heat. For the French team is that Wait, did he just No, he doesn't he hasn't seen him yet. There's no way that's a missed run, right? <laughs> okay, he sees the feet. He knows now and it will be in a station. I just came back, back to that. I was going to say I, I mean, it's Oops. defense on Clubhouse. Historically one of the most friendly Oh, if she lost her major spot to a tier 2 team. I don't know, dude. I don't know what Oxygen's deal is. They're like pretty bad right now. I have a feeling that they're just going to like dissolve as a team. Their org, I think, is done. Right? OXG as an org is like done now. So, yeah, they're done as an org. Their team is not doing well. You know, if they don't have a spot anymore, they'll probably just dissolve as a team. And look at this. Talk about BDS's drone economy. It's fine if you lose seven of those drones, so long as you get something. <sighs> they drop their man. leader with no plan. I, they're, they tried to do the five man, like, fragger strat. It doesn't work. It's been proven time and time again. Sure, they've cleared the map. Sure, they've got that middle floor control, but over half the round is gone. You've lost most of your information. You barely got anything off of it, and you still got to open up hatches. You still got to set up for an execute. Sure, they have all of the new season deeds. Uh, I made a video on it already. I already played the new season. You could type uh, exclamation point vid. Really, really difficult spot. Five kgs. Hey, listen, dude. All the walls will be reinforced. Rotates made. No. You just need a balanced team. That's all it is, really. Imagine if the tub canister uh, stuff your torch from working. Oh, I think that's the big... Uh, idea is the match the counter. You win 13 are needed. I feel like, Crook, your spawn peak on this map would actually fucking work at a pro level. No one would see it coming. What just happened? Put Crook on the Frost SMG. He's at least getting hit at least one. This is just a terrible job speculating yes. about one. <laughs> Who is this observer? <laughs> Fucking, it's like a three v three, and we don't see one kill. <laughs> we saw one kill blue, and then they the chance of harbage. It could be. Even What's it called? The um, they focus the backstab. Bill, do you know if if is OXG done as an org now? I thought like they like. They were getting funded by Robert Kraft, and I think he just, like, cut funding. I'm pretty sure. So, I think they're just fucked. Uh, yeah. I feel like they look identical. We're Dodez and Lobin. Mm. And even though Lobin only gets about one kill, he still wins. Without the, the face tattoos. Blue. Look at this right here. Sure, he <laughs> Put a face be... tattoo on that guy and they might be the same person. Yeah, they're twinsies. <laughs> able to win their respective fights. It makes what should have been in every single Well, somebody every caught all the kills. A BDS round for what they had, but oh! them hitting shots and Dots hitting a spray transfer like that. 
taking down one element of the crossfire and then the other once they swing. W7M are just not losing these fights anymore. Yeah, you heard they're done from some people and other things from other people. Who knows then, I guess. I heard that they were, like, completely screwed. Maybe the same team will have a new org. It's like it's weird. I don't know. Maybe they can secure secondary funding, but, like, I don't know who's going to fund OXG. And I'm not even saying that as, like, a thing of, like, hating on the R6 team or something. It's just... Basically, OXG was a massive money sink, and if Robert Kraft is backing out of funding them, I don't think anybody else is going to, you know? Anything's possible, but... I mentioned that Loban and Dodez were the two lowest rated players this map. Dash is right there alongside Volps and Dots. Both the bottom two players on this roster. They were the bottom rated when they were loose. They're typically the bottom rated now, but that floor. W7, so are the current world champions? No. Uh, Beast Coast is. They won the Manchester Major, so C9 BC. Well, we might not be in Manchester anymore, but we decided to import a Brit. <laughs> who now lives in Australia, Tom J. Sherlock and his cohorts. Leading the charge on these chants, trying to keep the energy high for those that cheer for BBS. The crowd started off hot with technical pause. Kick the power cord. Come online and, I mean, if I was a fan of BBS right now sitting in the audience, I don't know if I'd be cheering all that much either. But a huge shout out to our content creator and our cosplay community keeping the energy alive on this side of the arena. One thing that Logan said coming into this game is that he loves the NA crowd. He's been used to getting that treatment, right? In the grand finals of the Atlanta Major, he, he was the underdogs on Los. The whole arena was rooting for them, and it felt like they really were able to use some of that momentum, at least to get to that grand finals and put up a good fight up against W7M, their now new org. Here in, Man uh, here in Montreal, you don't quite get the same treatment. It's the city of French. We see BDS really trying to lean into that, but so far, the home crowd advantage twice now hasn't worked out for BDS. No, it is not really. W7M up five to two on BDS's pick. Just watch my BB video and wow, wow is all you can, yeah. I'm gonna be real, I'm not like super happy with it, but. But it wasn't looking great. It's for okay. But once they started, you know, what are you going to do? Toward the end of their map pick, what are you going to do, Chief? Momentum on Clubhouse, winning three rounds in a row, going up 3-1, briefly interrupted by BDS, then immediately getting back away with the action in round seven to now move up 5-2. to two. There is no shield being brought by Dots. Instead, it is Volps on the Blitz. Dots might not be comfortable on that operator all the time. Maybe he prefers the Monty, but Volps wanted to get in on the action quick. Was it Volps as well on the Monty that we saw back? Yeah, he played a little cons? bit on. Yeah, yeah, on cons. I think Nighthaven too, perhaps played a little bit of it, or it was banned on Nighthaven. Never mind. We did see Volps picking up shields every now and again, and I think a big part of it too is that Dots is a big Maverick player. He probably plays more Maverick than anybody else at the in the world at a highest level. So you want him on that off when you can. Oh, oh, oh. Oof. Solid time between a rock and a hard place. And nowhere to go but down. W7M, after that brief tech pause, have come back in with the same gusto that they had previously. They have another opportunity now as well. The Zofia AR is not what it used to be, but in the hands of Loban Neo. Still pretty good. And the person he's tangling with, Licky Fack. Bringing in for the first time this map. Oh, the Tyson fight? Do a new map tech. I don't know, dude. That shit was weird. I'm not gonna lie. Still likes bringing that Specchio scanner, shotgun SMG 11 combo, and likes to go for those lurks. The problem is, when you've lost Solotov early, the Azami especially, by the way, Kiva Barricade's not gonna be a factor as big, but now Licky Fack is gonna feel a lot When's the next major? That'd be the Invitational. It'd be in February. In Boston. In Boston. Oh, good night. <laughs> he fucking zoned it. Or I think he zoned it. But often used for pocket strats. I know it might be a comfort op for leaky fact. Actually 200 IQ. Ultimately the value brought from the gadget is in what it was. Hold on a second. This is just a jump in. They're in. 
Dogs with a kill on the breed. A shike of fall. Oof. It's all up to you. Oh, they don't know he's here. Takes down Lobin. Dots on very limited HP. Uses as his work cut out. I mean, he's still pretty fucked. Yeah. What? It's almost like a 27-year-old kid should easily be able to beat up a nearly 60-year-old man. I don't know. There was like a whole bunch of like, there was like... He's talking about Call of Duty. There was... Anybody in Boston is elite. You wish you I love Boston. It's a great city. Boston is a great city. But it doesn't matter when your whole team dies. You're not going to be able to deny that plant. He decided to get... I honestly was really, really impressed with Boston as a city. They had excellent food. Really good food there. Um, I'm confused on how they're going to be there. Oh. So well and when they had really good food there. Tons of American history, which is cool. Like, tons of history in general. Some pretty cool architecture. Um, I don't know. People were like pretty nice overall, um, and like it was pretty clean overall. Like overall, pretty clean city. Like really, like I don't, I don't think I saw a single homeless person there. Maybe, maybe one. You know, at most, I don't even know. The person may not have even been homeless. They might have just been like a Montane player or something. Good luck navigating in Boston. I mean, I just took Ubers everywhere. Time and time again, we always talk about when you get to the very top level, you need every single person on the team fully committed and functioning. And for w there it is again. Did you guys hear that? It's like a fucking pig or something. You guys heard that shit again, right? Like the fucking snort growl thing. I think it's in tarot, dude. But again, if BDS have watched these VODs, they might have to react to it in the moment, but with no warden present on the board, this could still catch them off guard. It actually might be in tarot just like belching into the mic realistically and thinking he's muting his mic and it's not. That really might be what it is. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. I know I was memeing at first, but like. No. We got a nice opening now into the bomb site behind those two OSA shields. You were stationed in Connecticut for your in the Navy. You spent most of your weekends in Boston. Boston is your favorite city I've been to. No, dude, it's it's actually like it's just super good, man. It's a super good. It's a super cool city. If you like American history, you do do the freedom. If you guys end up, are end up being at the Invitational Freedom Trail, that goes over it. Freedom Trail. They've chased Uses off to the top of Red Stairs. Breed A is still upright as well. Those are the only players that remain. Case will need to be retrieved. This better not go to all five maps. It probably BDS will. Hang on. I know what well, it was actually funny. After I went to Boston, there was a person that used to, you know, they still do. They're like a regular viewer of the stream. Their name is Ironsides. And when they came in the stream and they subbed after I got back from Boston, I was like, oh, shit. Oh, Fred's crazy. What's Yusuf doing? He's like, Fred's insane. Anyway, um, okay. I got to know why you left top red. Montreal is on its feet with the support play coming out uh, from Rene. He may not always get the most kills on BDS, but when he needs to, the okay. spray transfer the Freedom Trail. Yes. Ironsides. Better than anybody 
You've done the Freedom Trail and you met Ironsides. Fallout 4 was fun. Okay. No, anyway, there was a viewer named Ironsides, and that's what they call the USS Constitution, which is the oldest, like, active U.S. Navy ship. And it's, like, an old-school ship from, like, you know, it literally was around in, like, the Civil War and, like, things like that. Like, it's really old. And, uh, you know, it's cool. You should definitely tour it if you go there. That's crazy. Freedom Trail is, like, a 10 out of 10. I actually really, really liked the Freedom Trail. But anyway, after I got back from Boston and they subbed, I was like, oh, shit, I know what your name means now. Is the, the uh, nickname of the USS Constitution, which is the oldest life. oldest ship in the U.S. Navy, active, I guess, is um, it's old Ironsides. Lately, it's just all taking like and I actually, to enter a fucking door. Or a I actually spent like you guys are probably gonna laugh, but I spent like hundreds of dollars on pens. There's these pens that are made from like reclaimed wood from the ship, and it's like actually made out of the ship. And uh, I bought one for me, one for my dad, one for my father-in-law. Because my father-in-law, like, my father-in-law likes pens a lot and stuff like that. I want to see a random, like, direct site so, rush. They were, like, $100 each. So I bought three of them. One for me, one for my dad, one for my uh, father-in-law. Grammy Funa here, KG, talking old to something. We're talking about places he worked again. Okay. doing that? I think yeah, it's so funny that, that your whole your years whole years shield only there. makes Not one little punch hole. Mm -hmm. Oh, it should be for Blackbeard too. Listen, dude, you get you get a piece of American history. Yeah, okay, I think it was worth the money for sure. Are there any shield changes, George? Yeah, there is. Yes, they don't they don't do any damage now. Like if you get meleeed, you know it does fifty, and then you get meleeed again, you die. Yes. It does zero now. You can get meleeed a hundred times in a row. You have a hundred health. <laughs> so that's okay, big. Does it, make, and, does it make a difference? Uh, yeah. It, okay. So like, I think it. There's a few things. So like the shields. Um, you know, like the shield suppression thing, where yes. like you shoot it, it only takes like five bullets now. So like that helps a lot. Ooh. And if you melee a shield. It respects, like, the melee priority. Like, the shield just doesn't override you. Oh, okay. So it, so it is about timing and yeah. not just priority yeah. now. It, I don't know how much it's going to, like, play in, like, ranked. I mean, we'll see, I guess. But they won't be as bad next season, I don't think. Uh, uh, it's still dumb. You need a new mouse, Phil? That's a crazy shield. story, dude. There's this website called Amazon.com. Oh, you can head over there. I'm sure they can help too. you out. That was, <laughs> that was cool, but at the same time... Oh, the other thing... Sorry, was, too. Go ahead. Sorry, for, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry. I was going to say for the knifing with, like, where it progressively Yeah, I was going to mention better. that, too. I like feel it, like it takes a little too long. For like it should be, like, two hits, and it should yeah. do that instead of, like, four or three or whatever it is. Yeah. Because, like, at that point... A shield can't kill you without using its gun, I mean, no. And There's that like fucking hog to... again, dude. Hear it? I turned off my volume. Oh my god. I'm telling you it's in tarot. <laughs> You're just going crazy, George. Oh. Oof. Oh, they won. What the oh my fuck? God. He just stayed alive. He killed the... He must have killed the fuser. The wood from the pen is literally from a guy's shed. <laughs> probably, dude. They probably bought that wood from Home Depot, and then they're like, they just made it into pens, and like, ah, that's stupid. Hey, look at this fucking stupid oh. boomer. He'll fucking buy one. I'll just say, are you okay? Do you normally hear farm? I'm telling you, dude. There's fucking. It's it's, it's in tarot. He thinks he's he's like muting his mic, and he's just like grunting. If even one thing goes wrong, if even one gunfight doesn't go your way, the defense there, there it is! You hear it? Win it on time, and that is what happened there. Low time is still low time, and if one gap exists, BDS can win it. And right there, it's You guys heard that shit, right? 
inside of Armory and stopped the players that ran down main stairs. That was the brunt of the push. That was the tip of the spear. It was two players with the fuse kit coming down main stairs to try to make that happen. There was a lot of distractions. There was a blitz. Okay, I agree. I'm going insane, but you know. That was going to be do or die for W7M, and they died. Okay, whatever. Anyway. Listen, I'm happy with my my USS Constitution old Ironsides pen. Okay. In a tough round to figure it out. I there think it's pretty cool. Are the pens certified? Yeah, yeah, they're certified. I bought them from the actual USS Constitution, like, gift shop. And they come with, like, a certificate of authenticity and, like, a bunch of other stuff. I think it was worth it, dude. I don't know. I mean, realistically, it wasn't worth it. It was, like, $300. I think I spent, in that gift shop, I spent, like, over $400. Because I bought three pen, actually probably five hundred. Because I bought uh, I, yeah, it does work pretty good generally. I bought three pens made from reclaimed wood, and then I bought um, I bought bracelets uh, that were made from like metal that was reclaimed from the ship like they were made of copper so i bought what like i bought one for my wife and i bought uh one for my daughter i forgot what i bought my son i forgot what i bought him i bought him something too i'm like blanking on what it is what if you love America, it's worth it. It's, it's cool, dude. It's a, I don't know. It's, it, listen. It's a cool piece of American history to have. Wow, that was a very, very, very dominant round. Yep. You gonna go to the invite, George? Uh, maybe. As of now, no, but that could change. In all seriousness, this is an awesome thing to have on your desk on display. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. In Boston. Oh. Fast and. You can see Kerf there. I, I can't wait to go get a Yingling with Kerf. Is, is Kerf gonna be there? Yep. Yep, you said he'll be there. Kerf, I think, at this major, too. Kerf was very, very, very drunk yesterday. He came in my chat, and he was, he was gone. Oh, really? He was saying that the photographer loved him and took pictures of him in his underwear, and she got stuck in a washing machine or something. No. Got, I'm like, what? I'm like, wait, what is going on, Kerf? What kind of hangover night did he have? I, I don't know. I was like, Kerf, like, what kind of story is this? <laughs> Oh, Step man. curve. I'm stuck in them. Stuck in the dryer. It was the dryer. That's what he said. He's starting it off. He's getting a C4 pick on the map outside the building. He gets a face check from the demos. He said, Get the hell out of the round. I'm not even thinking about you at this point. I'm thinking about map four. I'm thinking about this four round comeback. A flawless that forces W7M to burn that tactical timeout. And now let's go back down to that bottom. I'm going to see the dates for this. Wait. Not quite, Lynx. It's uh, February 14th. <laughs> no. No. February 14th. No. No. Thank God SSG are in the room right now because they're going to start shaking at the side of this Still. one. <laughs> it was bar stage that SSG were eliminated from the tournament on. Wait a minute, they pulled out bar? If I am correct, this is the oh, no. That is so it's burr. On Clubhouse. SSG thought they'd pull it out against W7M. They didn't All right, find George. success. BDS. Time to start they taking notes. Bar strength. Bar and rank. This because Lynx has become a pile of clothing. I'm on my knees, bro. Oh, no. Not again. It was a 1v5 Fultz was in. This is... Have we learned nothing? Or the bar site? Not the friendliest site for the defenders. Dude, it's crazy how efficient they are at mapping. Every time I do that, fucking try to do the map trick the way they do it, I fucking mess it up and, like, the wall doesn't break. I, I know how to do it. It's the two beams in the middle. 
just no right. You have to point. make sure that you get like fully to the top of the wall. Sorry, yep. And then it'll work. That's still gonna be one thing though that does Damn. separate BDS. Yeah. Uh, ooh. Typically how we see players on this side. Drone. The Echo is extremely common on this map. You can play in a ton of different spots on the Echo to try to hide and win that late round. Play Plane ticket battle. is only. I don't think there's if there is no live or recording of matches. Oh, I don't know. I mean. Probably was, some people would be. So I was able to buy two tickets for me and Misa and get my plane tickets from Utah for under 800 bucks. Donut. I'm looking at Alaska. So it would be the 13th fly in for 129. And then I'm going to fly out for 129. You like Alaska that much? They've soaked up a minute and a half uh, on WCM they're just, opening they've been cheap lately. I also have their credit card. Uh, so I get more miles. George is like, I fly first class on my private jet. Yeah. That doesn't even make sense. Those two things don't go together, Bredip. <laughs> you got a Trump plane. Sure. Don't lie. <sighs> you fly I, I, I do not have a jet. So I, I would not I would easy. I would not even buy one like if I it's could fucking afford it. one. I don't fly. It's only if you like fly a lot out of weird airports and your it's time is that valuable. I think it's like business wise it, it can be very useful. I mean it's honestly a flex like 99% of the time. Yeah. There is flights available literally everywhere. <laughs> In that engagement. Oh, he's immediately going for a flank. Oh, no. Before they said, listen, dude, I don't have private jet money. That's fucking crazy. Oh, no. W7M gonna lose it. Oh. oh. What the fuck? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my oh. Lord. What a fucking comeback. Take take notes, George. We're playing bar next time we play Cub Labs. I Okay, I do remember attacking bar during a scrim, and that <laughs> shit was terrible. Dude, Bill is watching right now in chat. I guarantee you when you said let's play bar, his fucking eye probably just twitched. 100%. Oh, seriously? You think so? <laughs> 100%, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Feels like started a plant. It just Bill's the fuck you just say. Right opinion all the time. W7M can't be. Had the time he was right. He'd be pro. It's are available on Ticketmaster.com. Crazy. Three day ticket. Playing inside of kitchen. Never did he face pressure. Never did he move from this one. Wait. He just held one angle. Um, I do not fly Final first class. No. Open to the public. So you can just show up without a ticket. I, I am not, like, I think first flying first class is a waste of money. I fly economy every time I fly, unless, like, whatever, maybe, you know, unless some company's, like, flying me out or something, and they're, like, you know, they get me a first class ticket, then, hey, that's different. I'm not paying for it. Sure. Um, I, I mean, I have flown first class a few times. It's nice, but there's the gold experience. It's really not that much different, and it's way more expensive. Like, especially for international flights. International, like, I have gotten free upgrades too, because like I have like status with a bunch of the airlines and stuff. You get probably a lot of So like that's nice when that happens too. It more passive instead. That's the thing is, like, you're just, you're, you're on the same plane. You're getting there at the same time. You know, I don't really have a problem sleeping on a plane in a regular seat. So, first class for a three-hour flight is pointless. Dude, when I went to, um, when I went to, uh, like, I, I used to fly to like Hong Kong a decent amount and stuff like that. And dude, a regular ticket was like eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars for economy. They do know. They do. First class. First class was uh like four or five grand. It's you know, first class is nice, but it's not worth that much to me. I'd rather just go blow four or five grand on something like that I like. You know, if if I got 
If I was like getting there in 10 minutes, maybe it'd be worth it. <laughs> but not to get there at the same time and just have like a slightly more comfortable seat, you know? Loban always makes those plays in the high pressure situation. He's not afraid to lose. You know why? Because he's used to it. Losing in Atlanta. Bro, this guy is using so much gas on this hat. Dots just designated to the Maverick. You have no even nitro cells ever seen. Yeah. You flew first class once with Alex to JFK is more like a common alcohol for those. Yeah, dude. First class, especially on a domestic flight, is it is such a waste of money. It's insane. It is insane, dude. I've I've flown like I'm from Detroit, you know Detroit. So I've flown in Detroit to LAX or you know West Coast first class before. It's nice. You get a bigger seat. You know, you get food on the plane. But I looked at the price of my ticket. I didn't pay for it. The company that I was like flew me out there flew flew me out first class. And yeah, I looked, Blue. an economy Blue. ticket at the time, because it was kind of a last-minute flight. Economy so ticket was 800 no. First class was 2200 It's just nothing you can do. Against I wouldn't spend $1,400 for a slightly bigger seat and some shitty food, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's... I don't drink on the plane. I don't like drinking on a plane. That plane blue is cheese. To be honest. They didn't even reinforce her. A lot of times teams don't because they want to use the reinforcements in other places. Ricky Fag should have just got the damn kill. To be honest, the second... I think he they had six reinforcements left? Oh, I don't fucking know then. I don't know what they're doing. Crazy. Like, cause he fucking, he knew, like, a hundred percent, that drone hopped in, he saw him both. And Shiko probably feels bad, because he couldn't shoot the drone in time to make that good play. Frida's usually great in the clutch, but it's hard to clutch up when you're full blind and there's a blitz sprinting at you through dirt tunnel. That was an awkward situation for BDS. You're your pearls at that point. You really are. And so for that uh, team of BDS, now you're starting to look at this like, okay. I don't know. I have no idea why they wouldn't reinforce everything then. We had to win four in a row. We did that. I'm surprised that the invite is completely sold out. I'm not. I think it's only like 2,000. Oh, invite, yeah. I don't know. How many How many uh, people does the venue hold at invite? It says MGM Music Hall, Fenway, Boston. We'll make the same decision to fall off. I'm looking at these roamers though. If Volks makes an aggressive move, if Loban goes for a play with the boss G, that could be all it takes to throw BDS off guard and steal the round right here. I understand that you're trying to paint a positive picture for BDS, but W7M are the defenders, and the defenders have had their way with this map so far. BDS's it holds 5,000 people. On their first events, not great, but I'll be pretty hyped then. Things yeah. tend to go upside down. <laughs> if attack wants that wall they get it it's not that deep yeah but if you have the reinforcements anyways like why not just do it i mean unless their setup is so crazy that like i didn't see anything that would prevent them from doing it but just running a person down dirt quick and going for it it really could be really funny to go to the bars with curve though at the end reset with two minutes still to go reset indeed gold's playing an important position to allow the legion to get back to or he'd just be a drunk menace. Kerf's <laughs> just trying to fight people. I mean, Kerf is probably, probably three or four deep every time he plays ranked with us. I know. Yeah, but imagine him in a bar where he's like 10, 12. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than that. Kerf Kerf is going to be fucking pre-gaming the event, drinking at the event, then wanting to go to the bars after. <laughs> Yep. By Dash again, these trades working so effectively for both teams. Volps also on the board. Are you going oh, to invite Bill? No, oh my no. God. How do you lose it? Ooh, nice trade. 2v2. With the 
opening to give the numbers to W7M. BDS trades it right back. You don't know. I think Shaiko's crashing out. He's one and six. You've cleared this down to just two players now. You dealt with Shaiko. You dealt with Liggy Fact. It's just Breeding and Uses that you've got to worry about in the 2v2. They have a lot of time. They gotta get down there and start clearing some stuff, though, because they got Goyos. Why is he trying to We've got two bodies. Where do we want to push them? Probably the only drone option he has. The secret hatch is a lot of time. You've got a couple of options for where you want to go, but Moto and main stairs are the safest. It's going to be double Moto. They open this, the Goyo pops. They open church wall. You might just run through that, it looks like. Just if cross goes, maybe. Fire will meet fire. Volts can easily derail this push. Playing behind uh -oh. that bomb chassis. Uh oh. Oh. God's getting swung on. Uses his drone. No. Uh, oh, like just fucking shoot him. I did not think that they would win that map. Honestly. Why <laughs> are they yelling at each other? <laughs> Um, no, that map was like much, I mean, overall much more, uh, well put, like, played, I guess. Like, it, well, there weren't, I don't know, Night Haven was really, like, full of mistakes. George, can they talk to each other after the game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know, it depends on the venue sometimes, yeah. Normally you can, though. Just go to the bag and just start getting shit talking. Thank you very much for that one, Parker. And I can only imagine the things Ashen says, says backstage. Entirely. We thought that was entirely uh, W7M's yep. map. Very quickly did BDS start to snuff that out when it was on the defense, Jack. I mean, what's the theme for this match? The full theme for this match in my mind, there is one word, composure. Absolutely. And that is what was encapsulating absolutely everything. As we go through these replays, you know, we saw, I think both teams, I, I won't say strategically, Gabe, was like I, amazing. I think they were making mistakes, lots of them. It was getting to the late round very, very often for the attack. They were slower than maybe they usually would be. Oh. And it was coming down to these big late round moments. Yeah. We saw clutch after clutch after clutch, 2v2s, very often won out by the defense. And I think that's why we saw the BB7 M. They tore into a lead. BDS brought it back. And then I've got to call it out. That first round in overtime, the decision from Shaiko and Leaky Pack to make that little double play was a huge mm. gamble and it didn't pay off. I mean, I was talking about hope being a big factor here for W7M and they almost walked away with it go, going 6-2, but it just shows the resilience from BDS being able to bring that back. So that's good now going into this next map. But I mean, for W7M to be able to come back. Yeah. I don't know. Win, and I feel like Cafe probably BDS, <laughs> but I don't know. Defense again. Yeah. I'm glad we're able to take a look at this. Composure. They both ran at each other and then he ends up getting it. I mean, yes, this has been a game of nothing but composure, but everyone across the board there's not yep. one single person that you can call out here that isn't putting up a performance that isn't playing up to snuff i also want the five uh, maps i want to end the bar stage debate that yes. is raging on i think that was a genius move by yep. bds to go bar stage yep. reason being w7m round 11 all the other hmm. the site that they expected bds to go to that was unlocked and suddenly they'd hit them wham bam different different site that you're not expecting and they got it over the line i as much as that site is not as good i do think it was a good move Jack, I've got to say, the line between insanity and genius is so fine. It's exactly. not funny. We saw it in round 12. Genius. In round 13, that double play in blue, we were sitting there going, you are insane for taking that. I mean, look, if, if it comes off, we're both sitting here saying they've won the round. Big but brain. the way that the game had been going for 12 rounds was that the attack was slow. The attack was making mistakes. The attack was not, you know, not getting into that late round and was not winning in the late round. So when BDS took the aggression in the early round and tried to do that little rap play that we've seen, you know, in the blue sides very, very often, you know, that's not a, yep. that, that's not an unusual mm. thing. It cost them. And that I think you should buy a pro league spot, George. Time, put them on the back foot and W7M was able to see Bill, it. I'm gonna say, uh, are you joining? I think it was around joining the pro league team? I'm going to buy a pro league spot. Cost, and then one, we'll do it. We'll make the shit stack. George's Little Kings. That's a horrible name, but... But when you saw those stats lines, he's actually at the bottom of the BDS. Well, just listen, listen. I'm, I'm making a, I'm, I'm, I'm making a comeback. Okay, what we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is just buy a spot. 
on the okay here. for pro league like and uh we're back we're back baby i'm not gonna scrim though or practice at all i'm just gonna show up on pro league day and basically just meme Isn't there still like weekly go fours? Yeah, pretty much on top of it. Yeah, there is. They're called go fives now. Honestly, what we'll do is we'll literally. Oh, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna buy a pro league spot. I'll put Vil on the team, and then I'll just we'll just I'll just do things that make Vil mad. I'll literally I'll specifically pick players that make Vil angry. So this way, when we're playing. And Vil, Vil could just be like, we're throwing. They're pretty <laughs> easy. I think it'll be, it'll be good content. It'll be worth it. Is that your IGL of Volks is the one that is putting up this performance, the one that's leading the charge as well. And that's a tall ask to be doing. And the fact that Volks is able to do that, lead these guys while they're also performing. Off the chat during matches. On the GoFi website is donut.dash. No, I was thinking the last time I played in a go four was May 1st, 2020. T1. has won the opening kill in the first three rounds. So they want to be disruptive towards the entry to get that opening engagement. It starts with this setup here. Yeah, you could bait for KD. You could bait for KDville, and guess what? On this team, you're allowed to team kill. Because it doesn't affect our rank stats, so who cares? You know, rank is more important. Which will be a mousetrap for Shaiko. And a third layer is that Vigil upstairs roaming around freely with that boss G to be another layer of disruption. If we look at the gameplay and the footage, you see that safe zone they've pick created. The Kaid is now aggressive towards Shaiko. He wants to get that pick. Shaiko was not expecting that and he's going to get killed by the C4. Now look at the reaction from Likepak. He's the great IGL we mentioned. He sees that opportunity, kills the anchor and calls, guys, rush side now, rush side now. This is a huge extension. And actually, Volps is the only guy that was blue helping. So he's the only key to the bomb site here. And if you look at this, Likefak has a long angle onto him. Solotov rushed, following the call from Likefak. And they have a perfect 2v1 on this player. It would be okay. It would be a win round winning condition here. But it's Volps. And you're gonna see one of the craziest 2v1 I've ever seen. He escapes that 2v1, prefers the first one on the left, prefers on the right, it gets away. That two pinch, he, he kills them both. That's Donuts has spent point, a lot of time on He's cams and Bill gets all the team kills he wants. You mean a lot of time on TikTok. That's W7 and for you. Yes, there is great strategy. Yes, that was a great way to deny the entry. But the talent of that is <laughs> bossy. <laughs> <It's a bossy. laughs> I just still don't know how they haven't nerfed that gun, dude. It's just like blowing my mind. They didn't even mention it. And... Huh. When's the new season dropping? December 3rd. How long are you going to be on, George? Uh, All night, probably. Okay. After this, I'm probably going to go to the gym and then make dinner and then come back. Mm-hmm. He'll play until he's back. <laughs> you know, I already know exactly why you said that, Vil. You just had this, like, as soon as, like, Donut started talking, you just had a flashback to where he, like, impacted 
like Tom in the back of the head and then like right, got George, Tom killed and then threw. Do we go map five and BDS chokes? Uh, I don't know. I feel like BDS definitely wins this map, but I mean, well, I don't know. Likely. I'd say like 80% they win. And then it goes to the last map, which I feel like BDS would probably win. They're good at chalet-ish. So, I don't know. Um, now I'm getting an ad for that water filter, George, that you put in the chat. <laughs> You're welcome. The one that was on the next level, that was actually infuriating. I'm not going to lie. I almost blew a blood. Like, there were multiple. I, I feel like actually yesterday was some, like, vintage-ass rage. I haven't been as mad at this game and, like, things that were happening inside of it in a long fucking time. I was exploding yesterday. That throwing, though, is, like, honestly next level. The, the one that was bad was that border game where I kept hitting every trap in existence. These guys would run, like, ten fucking beepers. And they'd run, like, Capcan, Legion, Fenrir, like, every round, dude. They would run, like, every trap operator that there is in the game. And I would hit all of them. I was I was really close to just completely losing my fucking mind. Just on the verge of exploding. Lost Mr. Podipsky. Guess so. I did. I found every single trap with my body. Chat, are you guys buying? Are you guys looking for anything on like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, or nah? I feel like every company already started all their sales. I gotta piss actually. Let me quick. Four terabyte SSD. I have that in my main gaming PC. It's fucking nice. I don't have to put anything on a on a fucking mechanical hard drive relic. Hold on, I'll be right back.
W7M have bet on the right bulls. This roster have turned things around here in this grand final and are now looking to potentially close this out in four. Clubhouse disappointment from BDS, but Leo, ultimately, that is just how this story goes. What do we need to expect from Kafat? You have to move on, you have to go on that map, and you have to think, what do I do here? I'm, on the, I'm gonna start on the defense side. That's the strong side for BDS. So we expect them to start strong on this one, especially because that's what they've shown on Labs, that's what they've shown on Clubhouse, and they've been struggling in attack so far. I don't know how you find it, guys, but I feel like they're very static. They're waiting for opportunities. Yeah. They're not creating those opportunities. And that's a problem for me, compared to Consulate, where they were proactive, they're being reactive all the time. I mean, I think it's a little bit of a mental warfare at this point because when you look how BDS has been playing so far, it looks like they've always been in the driver's seat. They always look yeah. like they have an understanding. They always have a solution. But this is the first time where I'm seeing where they kind of look lost. They don't know what they want to do. They're waiting for something to happen to them. And W7 is either giving it to them, yep. they aren't taking advantage of, or they just aren't being fed anything at all. And then they have to forefront an entire attack and to lose it as a whole. Jack, how important is this now moving into a potential final map for W7M? There are so many elements that come together, but sometimes it's up here. Well, that's the thing. It all gets very all real. Right. So the mentality, the pressure. Yes, the um skin is very, today. very real. W7M chasing their first ever major as a roster. They sit, they're finally on the map where they win this map. They are major champions. Does that add a layer of pressure? Does does that free flow in that aggressive style? Do they think twice about doing it? Do, because do, they do, don't do. Win? And it's a big pressure moment. Oh, I am like but cold, also, dude. Guys on your screen, BDS. It's huge pressure. It's, it's huge for them right now. Actually, just cold. Because if they lose the Manchester Major Final and the Montreal Major Final, they're going to be heading into Six Invitational with a reputation that they bottle it, and they don't want to be doing that. It is huge um. for both of these teams. Everything just got real right now. All I want to add is that W7M as an organization have won everything with their previous roster. Imagine 2023 belonged to these guys. SI 2024 mm. belonged to these guys. They bet on your new roster and they're on the verge of making history by gaining another major in 2024. That's completely crazy. I mean, realistically, now going into Cafe, what we were seeing out of W7M on this clubhouse is exactly what I need to see in the, this early game of Cafe. They cannot let them mm. put off the gas where they were. And I hope and W7M wins this that Cafe game. Seven just four, so I can they to get in their fucking own heads, and this is why go saying, do something. This is a mental battle for both teams. This is about composure. But again, you got the win here. You're the one that can sit here. I'm honest, I honestly don't really care who wins that much either. There's no NA team, so it's like that we were seeing two teams that have nothing to do with this. Mr. Kerf, how's it going, buddy? Holy shit. Kerf, do you want to like explain to us what happened yesterday where like, you know, the the photographer got so. stuck in a dryer and you know <laughs> oh you, my you bang god the photographer dude. curve what's going on <laughs> no. here buddy <laughs> oh my god dude oh. dude last night was insane <laughs> oh. it was a good wedding i'm just gonna put it that way <clears throat> you came into my chat like at like i was in the i was morning. i was four sheets to the breeze <laughs> I don't know. You came in and you're like, the photographer loves me. She took a bunch of pictures of me in my underwear and she got stuck in the dryer, but I got her out. <laughs> like, what do you mean, dude? Like, dude. <laughs> step curve. So, I'm stuck in the dryer. <laughs> so, you know how like the groomsmen are supposed to get mayor or uh, the groomsmen are supposed to like get ready together? Yeah. So we had this like old lady. <clears throat> and uh so like everyone kind of being polite and going around the corner and i get all my underwear through me undies okay. <clears throat> and so i just so happened to be wearing these like gigantic eggplant emoji fucking underwear <laughs> <laughs> and uh so it's, so all my boys were just like bro what the fuck are you wearing and then the photographer came around the corner and was like, can you guys pose with him? So I was like, fuck me. I just had to start posing in my fucking underwear with this old woman, dude. <laughs> it was, uh, it was good times. It's so where the, uh, stuck in the dryer. Oh, uh, that was just, that was just me making a joke. I was fucking hammered. Oh. <laughs> 
BDS have typically been oh. banning Ying on uh, this map. We see a lot of Monty coming out from them good. as well. The Bravo ban is I don't think W7. I've ever been that coming out. Hung over be this Monty before once my again. This is the second time we've seen BDS ban the French Shield. Yeah, hmm. and I mean when you're looking at this, I just drive over two mountains to get home, and the entire time I was like, I need to pull over to take a nap. It's bad. Without that tool, that's gonna be a whole hell of a lot harder. Another new ban, BDS banning Maestro. One of the least picked operators in the siege, Maestro can be very good top floor, bottom floor. He's got his uses. This should be an Aruni. You you do computer yet? It will be Kai W7M. This is my last day in Vermont. On this map, so Kai going to Connecticut. The Maestro ban is uh, really, really I should probably there, be right? I suppose with Yeah, it's at my pops. Board, okay. You kind of do have to respect the Maestro. <laughs> and especially when you're thinking about holding that bakery site, what is going to be in Connecticut? It's going to be a year. Gonna be I mean, I could stop showing up whenever I want, but probably be. And at least through the winter. Just come springtime. Well, you're going to have a, gonna have a PC there, so... Still play, right? Yeah, but I could probably play, like, one or two games and can't be up all night. I have to show up to work at 6 in the morning. Yeah, you'll be fine. Just stay up all night. It's every fucking day. <laughs> you don't need to sleep. Herb is going to make it four days and then just die from exhaustion. She's so effective at stealing those evil eyes can turn Maestro from a powerful operator into a liability by giving that utility over towards the attackers. They said we've got to shut the Connecticut to Maestro and take any shenanigans out of this first half. It's a hard line to draw for BDS right now. How much do you give that respect to W7? How much do you disrespect be there somewhere there tomorrow? Yeah, I have to be in the center part of the state tomorrow. BDS seem to have it made for them. Isn't a bad drive. At like 3 in the morning. Mm. Better get to bed soon. I just woke up, bro. <laughs> Better get back to bed. <laughs> yeah, dude. I uh, came home, took a nap, and then. <laughs> my girlfriend has to work tonight, so I had to get up to like. Let her out and the dogs out. Cafe is not going to be easy for BDS. Yeah, W7M, dude. we're on a five-game <laughs> win streak. Your girlfriend go to the wedding with you? Oh yeah. Losing to Virtus Pro yeah. seven she is hurt. <laughs> BDS hmm. hoping to repeat that one. They've got that history. They know what W7M. She just tore her Achilles, so we were dancing and stuff last night. She woke up today and she's like, "Oh my god, my leg." <laughs> But it was funny though, because like there was multiple photographers, so that old woman, like we're all dancing and stuff, and then she sought me out and she's like, I just wanted to come up to you and say goodbye. And I was like, oh my god. She wanted the curve. She wanted the curve dog. So if you've got supposedly one of the best players in the world and somebody who is in constant conversation to be the goat, not doing what needs to be done, you can't rely on Solitaire. What is this? You can't rely on Leaky Fact to get all the kills. You need a concerted effort. It looks like with losing the opening pick, BDS have really stalled out. They want What's to go Blitz for a doing? push, but they haven't been able to find the Yokai drone just yet. The track might do it for Shiko. Prompt the push, but no, he jumps on drone instead. They are in no rush to get these picks <sighs> eventually. Oh my, and Loban thought he had another player. All right, fill me in. Has BDS been kind of throwing? Uh, uh, not really. Yeah. yeah, only like Night Haven was like a huge just like no general way. throw map. Oh God. No way. And now with bakery control, users might just have a spearhead into the site. Shiko still got to death. Why didn't they have the warden hanging out in bakery? And 40 seconds to do it, they might just have it. And the shield will run in. I guess maybe because they haven't been really running shields that much this tournament. But regardless, if you're gonna be pushing bakery, if you're gonna yeah, if you're gonna have if you're gonna have a warden, you may as well play him in bake. Now it's Dodez being watched by Shiko. Down goes Dash. Dodez last man standing. He wins the engagement, but now... Dumbest mechanic in the game. Right what there. a great operator. <laughs> Just murdered their whole team. Teamwork makes the dream work. BDS takes the first round. Users saw the shields getting uh, a little bit of a beating in the next update. It'd be kind of crazy, though, if W7M wins because they just had, like, the best year, traded out their roster, and they're already back. 
Apparently the operator twice yeah, props to their organization. Yeah. Perfect timing. Entering in through small bake, recognizing that Lovin had fallen off, gets that 2k entry and secures the final kill. As yeah, what happened well. to their older roster? You need from the best <laughs> they just wanted yes. better yes, contracts and yes, I think the organization couldn't afford it. Yeah, so probably Furia has just like bags of money. They just let him walk. Uh, they picked up uh, the old Los roster, and then Los went to NA. <clears throat> Los NA team is uh, not good. <laughs> no, they're fucking horrible. Wait, but I think they won like two, two maps like all year. Is it Sexy Cake on Los? When I feel like every single stage, Sexy Cake is on NA Los. Interesting. It was literally the entire team of Los that picked up by W7M, and then Los left for NA. One of his best operators in the game, and he's going gridlock instead. No calls on the board for BDS, despite the Dokubi being available. But Yuzu's not only has that skill, he's got that flexibility to bring the important ops the team needs. That is some. Volps on the last map that really started to turn things around. W7M. They need to rely on him again, but he falls off. He goes down the red stairs and will retreat. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't end up buying tickets to this because I was like, oh, I'll just go the day after the wedding. Yeah, this isn't that wasn't happening. You would be fucked. How far is Montreal from you? About well, from my house, about two hours. Oh, it's actually really close. By car? Yeah. That's close as shit. <clears throat> you would have been duking in the stands right now. <laughs> oh, I'm not like sick. I'm just like fucking hungover as fuck. Tired. Him playing in this position by the humidor. <laughs> oh, I didn't open the bets. Shit. Did I forget? No, I didn't. Do they know where right, this we're doing a two minute bet time. What the venue is? Um, I don't know, actually. Open them on match point. That's prime time right there, dude. That's prime time. It's actually a hell of people watching this game. People often forget that the ash charges, along with the Cali Lances, can destroy those black mirrors. The Verdun Auditorium. Every time there's a brief pause in our casting, somebody screams about BDS. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate it. I appreciate it a lot. They'll need that support to get back into this. A minute remaining now, as Direction. you brought up. Ash charge is being useful for cracking those mirror windows. Oh, I lied. It's two and a half hours from now. Can hold behind these black mirrors as BDS spends more time clearing out this utility. The setup of the is still solid for W7M. And the feedback might try to be the one that throws a wrench into the white stairs control. There's two players lurking down below. Should I go and dash now? Oh, it's taking place at the MGM? That's actually pretty lit. Dash just have no clue. It's just out. 30 seconds left on the clock. Wow. Still what a toss. Oof. Uses dies at the hands of Dota's. Big opening now for W7M. Retake from above. Shiko collapsed upon from two separate players. W7M's coordination looking mighty good at this point. Now it's and I'm two hours and 44 minutes from the SI venue. That window might as well have been a clown car. Every single player from W7M wanted a piece of the last body on side of BDS. And one around from W7M to tie things up. And that's been the mentality from W7M all throughout this series. They started a little bit slow way back on map number one. But since then, they've started to get more aggressive in the early round. And yes, they're going to let BDS waste their own time, okay? They're not going for spawn peaks, not going for jump out. You even saw that from Volps at the start of that round. He's being cautious. He's making sure that he doesn't take the first opportunity. He's waiting for the best opportunity. They bide their time. They don't get in early fights. That's C4. As as yeah, it's pretty common C4. BDS are ready to go for their execute. That's when W7M swing. And they don't stop. Yeah, they're the 5v3 that doesn't mean uh Loban's not gonna push forward in through cigar and take some massive aggressive risks and still make sure that they pay off it felt like every time bds stepped in the map every time they had some kind of map control it was being punished and at the end there with everybody flying out the window sending everybody at bds that's just a continuation of the same strategy they've been going for through the entirety of round two <sighs> and it's a continuation why do they keep promoting the oxygen skin the briefest interruption in round one for bds but I don't get it. Similar to what we saw on Clubhouse overall, which is 
on the attacking side, BDS giving W7M a lot of freedom to make plays or not providing enough problems for that W7M need to rotate and leave. The only reason <laughs> the only Gash reason? actually had to leave Humidor was so he could see for the Lion on Cocktail Repel, mm. not punish for it despite Licky Fact around the corner. Another example, Loban was in bathroom playing behind that mirror window the entire round. It's ass Did you guys play top it's four yet? just that. Beyond it, it's the only it's skin that hasn't sold. I don't know, dude. I mean, at least from what I understand, OXG is like done as an org, maybe? It's weird. I don't know. Cafe was the map that started the comeback from Beast Coast in the grand finals of Manchester. It could complete the comeback for W7M here in Montreal. Still 1 1. We're very early, but W7M showing that they're not going to give up easily. BDS need to win this one if they want to force a map 5. W7M 1 away. Here's the entry point from Shaiko playing his favorite operator, again attacking onto Cigar. Could be the comeback completed for W7M or. Yeah, his Seth is about the R6 uh, share snub. Uh, no. Oh, shit. BDS have tussled with the clock. They have struggled to keep on top of the clock. This round, it looks like they might be a bit better position. A bit better position, certainly. A bit better, but not completely well positioned yet. Mm. There's still somebody playing below Newbow, but there we go. That's what we need to see. D round two, Dash gets away with that, gets a C4. There, BDS are punishing him, and they immediately sprint it off the back of it. Now, Licky Fact will look to deny the verdict. Yeah, I'm trying to look below. for this. So, once they get that control, BDS will hop in, look to put this diffuser down, and convert the 5v3 that's been gifted to them by Yuzus. Look like Bree Day was going to be fodder for that. Partner teams have been. There's still an option, still an option. What? Hitting away at it. I. Don't know if the nitro self I believe it was shot. I think it was shot from above because it's not uh, active anymore say, in the top it, it right. What in the world yeah, are they, half of these awards, they had bro? To they had to clear, so that wasn't going to be a problem. Right now on red stairs, three players all in close proximity to one another. BDS got that earlier pick a uh -oh. second followed, and now they're just looking for the remaining three. Make that two. What is happening? BDS pulverizing W7M. These rounds have been so lopsided, and it's a flawless wow. round for BDS to regain the lead. Let me go to map five. From BDS, that is very puzzling for me. Good round win, ultimately, if not a flawless, a flawless round by the end. They get all the watch this anymore. I think is quite, quite good. But they spent so watch. long setting up. They get Wiki back down below immediately. I want to go to the gym. And yet there's still so much worry about that. players all the way on the top floor. They've got Solotov watching for the retake. And I'm seeing wins. They're giving a lot of respect to W7M. Wanna, like... But they take a long time getting set up. And ultimately it is that coverage right there. Mm. Holding off on that window. Then Licky Fact pushing deep. That makes it the best. But through all of that journey we just saw through those flawless rounds. Yo, Licky Fact is not the kind of guy I'd want to put on. Looks like orcs. Yeah, I mean, this is also a site where you don't need that much map control, right? What did they have there? They had red stairs. They had red <laughs> stairs. That's the map control that they took, and that's the map control that they needed to win the round. They were able to spend a lot of time on the mining window. They were able to spend a lot of time clearing out red stairs. They got the click onto the player inside of Cigar. That was so crazy. They really were using their time effectively. So they announced they the partner teams. If they had to clear through all of top and then all of basement, I guess. I mean, that's terrible pacing, but... They know what they're doing on the they, is this like an official announcement or is this just like a like a leak type of thing? Like cafe basement. Last time they went for a complete bakery, they didn't want to uh, push the top two floors at all. If they go for the top down take now, that's where I'm looking at the clock. This is one of the slowest sites to push if you're going to clear all the way from the top down. Uh. At the same time though, I'm seeing a Blitz, I'm seeing a Capital. This is a great operator lineup if you do just want to go in bake. Yeah, if, if you want to just go on bake, that'd be the exact thing you'd want to do. Hard recharge. I'm surprised none of the pros play with uh, the exact same play we saw last play with a hat on. The guy playing small bake I always wear a hat on. Well. I have headphones on. on uh, I don't think you're allowed to. Lined up for him. They're clearing the utility now. That no way. Destroyed. Yeah. Wear a hat. 
I'm almost curious though. What are you're they going to do to try to bring this back? Because as Loven just runs out one right. again, they're getting set up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are still feeling that confidence, feeling that ability. No, so that the hat doesn't plays. interfere with the wearing of the head. The head. That was the play right there by Loven to catch Leaky back up top. On doesn't the interfere for me. Not getting any better for BDS. Still what? So much of the round remaining. So the hat doesn't mm -hmm. interfere for me. Where I had all the time. Playing for money. In it just yet. Playing for money has been excellent so far through the start of map number four. Four kills. That's going to give me some extra intelligence. The drone might be looking into the site, but Volks is just in the corner the of Small Bank. If he waits and bides his time and never gets droned, he can go for this retake bakery, and Shiko needs to be good on that coverage. Volks looking for an opening. Three day eliminating dash. Volps off the bomb site. Loban. Right now, the last real line of defense is Volps down. Go. Gets hounded on these red stairs. Flashed. Pushed off of his position. Underneath that default or underneath the bulletproof cam. In goes Bride. Now Volps wondering what could be had. A nice shot on the Shiko. Bride also dropped. How did things oh. go so badly yeah. for BDS? George, when you played on stage, how well could you hear the crowd so? Uh, decently, but I mean, you can hear when they go like crazy and stuff. Wow, that's actually so crazy, dude. What the fuck is this? That's a very similar push once again. It's bakery focus. You've got a blitz, different operators being brought across the board, and different for like the teams that got picked. But it didn't seem to matter. W7M, I'm gonna be honest, they kind of did the Sonics dirty. Yeah, also, why is Black Dragons on him there? They've been in the game since year one, season one. Was always there. Great shot coming in to start things off. And it's because of these Volks. games that come in with money. The There's like no loyalty. It's all money. I mean, I'm going to be real. I don't know why any team from APAC is in like the program. Like, I don't know. They literally go to those. Half the reason they go to those regions is because they can pay their players like four cents and like just have a skin in the game. I don't know. Unless maybe they're getting paid better now. Yep. I just saw it. There's like, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. I mean, they put like Elevate in there. Who like specifically went to APAC to get a cheaper team. Isn't Scars like... No, that's Bleed. Bleed's the one that's like going like broke right now. Yeah, they just, they like, oh, one guy, like, 38 racks. It's pretty bad. I just, yeah. I mean, like, a lot of them I get why they're there, but, like, just a lot of the other ones are just really perplexing choices. Like, I don't know. Like, pretty much all these APAC orgs, like, I just don't know why they're there. And he can waste a ton of time. Not a great I mean, unless, unless, they, unless maybe these, these teams have, like, way bigger fan bases and other stuff that I'm not aware of or something, but I don't think so. I just don't like that it's five affiliates in NAL, EML, SAL, eight affiliates in AP. Why don't you just... I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I get, like, putting, like, PSG in there, maybe, because they're, like, you know, related to the soccer team, I guess, and stuff, and seem, you know, they have Fabian and Tengu, and I think, like, Jess on their thing, so, okay, they actually spend money in the scene and all that kind of stuff, but, like, I don't know, a lot of these other orgs just, like, pretty much are, like, I don't know, so it makes sense, I mean, most of them honestly make sense, it's just... I don't, know. I don't know if Sonics is in there over, like, Fury, for example. Like, what? <laughs> like, What's the uh, highest paid team? Uh, I don't know for sure, but I heard it's MAD. Lions go to the Super Bowl, hopefully. Then these teams that haven't had anything to do with Siege at all of a sudden come in. Got Luxo, I've never even heard of them. <clears throat> and there was one more that was in. I think you should sponsor a team, George. Um, I'm good. 
<laughs> basically, <laughs> it's just like kind of a money like, pit. It's just basically you just set a fire and just throw in money every month and just be like, <laughs> yeah. Well, that was fun. Creeping out from behind that shield, but everything after that, it is just hard to even believe this is the same. The NA, what are the, the NA ones? It's Dark Zero, M80, so scared, so uh, SSG. Those three make sense. BDS, and then it's Wild Card. The the world, and yet since What's then, the fifth? They start to find their confidence on Night Haven. They start. Uh... I don't see the fifth one. There's Furia, Falcons, BDS. Okay, those four make sense. The fifth one, or sorry, the fourth one's like blurred. The fix, the fifth is like Fluxo, maybe, or I don't know what order that is. I have to look it up. Wild card. Okay, wild card makes sense, I guess. Uh, CAG Osaka. Okay, I don't, I don't know how they're in there really over like Sonics, for example. PSG. Okay, that makes sense. Secret. Okay, that makes sense. Elevate. Don't know how they're in there. They had like a whole bunch of controversy before, but whatever. I guess they have been a really long Oregon siege, so like maybe. Scars, don't know how they're in there really, honestly. Phase, okay, fine. G2, Sonics, makes sense. Fury, why are they in there? No one knows. Fnatic, okay, makes sense. Liquid, DZ, M80, all make sense. I guess the only ones that I don't see like... I mean, honestly, it's fine that all those teams are even in there. Just make, like, 30 partner teams. I just don't understand how, like, Sonics is not in there or, like, I don't know. Like, Black... It's kind of, like, crazy that Black Dragons is not in there. They've literally been in the game since, like, beta. And they're, like, a siege-grown org. That's, like, a good size now. The, um... Uh, Brad, 99TM, thank you for the 23-month reset. Welcome back. Sonics, like their PUBG team is nasty. I can, I mean, their org is definitely grown. I mean, I see in some ways why they're not in there. Oh, I know C9BC is not in there. Yeah, so I think that's the fifth one because they they says there's two to be announced at S. Probably. I would hope Black Dra like it. Obviously, it's probably not Sonics, judging by what Super's saying. But I hope Black Dragons is the other team. Like they really do deserve it. BDS playing Continuum. BDS never played Continuum. BDS came in the game after CTM was done. The other one that's not in there is British Pro. That would kind of make sense. Damn. BDS feels it a lot. W7M now not able to gain this advantage until an impressive shot from Volps. They'll try again. As Volps still right now inside of train. He's got to read through the hard wall. One creeping up over by engine. Grenade goes out to move him out of this position. Volps plays this so smartly. Shigo doesn't usually lose these duels. All eight and eight health. No way. Very little remains on the side of BDS. Brede holding the diffuser, but hard pressed to imagine the case going. Wolves has to be the one of the BD best players. At least this year. A brief opportunity on the dots. The Type 89 is a great fire. Heard it again, dude. Pig, pig sound. Time to peel off at the first half is in the book for W7M42. Pig sound. Yeah, it's in your head, George. Are you just doing that randomly? For a long period of time, Me? But yeah. The squad that he's on. I was in the it's middle of talking. How would I make a fucking That's what I'm saying. I don't trust you. Wait, where? What's the time? Let's see if I can. I'm sure it's there. I'm gaslighting George. I bet you it. Probably what it is. There's probably somebody like near the casters, like playing it, and it's getting picked up on their mics. Hmm. He started his career back on that W7M team that lost to G2 in the 6th Invitational. Then he there it is again. Squad, went over to team Liquid, 
had another disappointing SI, then moved it didn't hear it. The it was in the replay even. Okay. It's for sure there. Captain now has kind of taken over the team and has done so much good work for the Bulls. He's going to have so much credit on his shoulders if they make this happen. But wow, what a defense now. Mm. What a defense, what a performance from Volps, and that last round, I think, really seals it for me, not necessarily the matchup, but for Volps specifically and his impact right there, because that entire time, W7M have never left him on an island, even though he's got a death mark tracker on him, even though he's got two different guns being trained on him. Okay, I can faintly hear it. It's definitely someone, like, in the stands doing it or something. Holy you shit, I hear it. I heard it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like faint. Someone's got to be in the stands using it or something. It sounds like one of those. Like a. Fantastic. Takes a lot of trust as well. Yeah. You have to trust in entirely and completely in your teammates to be able to hold that position. Kind of sounds like like a, like those dog toys. That you players want to get active in the gunfight. We'll circle back to the word that we use to describe. The defenses from W7M, we talk about other patient. They are a very patient team on defense. They play very conservatively. Now for the remainder mm -hmm. of this match, they're going to be on the Mr. Craze. And what can they muster? Adrenal surge goes off alongside Logic Bomb. You sick, Dogs dude? Punished by Uses. The bit is. is. Traded out immediately by Dota's yet again, W7M. <laughs> refusing to allow BDS to have an advantage. Breeding's now been picked off by Dash. Shiko locked inside a code check flash oh. out of his position. Solitaire down to the count of the hands of Dash. Shiko gets one before he runs oh. away. Now over towards Whiskey. Oh. To the He's okay. looking for a third. That goes mad. Range. He'll have another opportunity. He'll slip through his finger as now. He charges over. Shiko is, is trying to bring it back. Oh, he's dead. Oh, the throws. Just over top of Leaky Pack. Half of the round. What the hell? And yet we are in a one. <laughs> Did you see that? Mad weird. It is like... I don't now even know how to explain what just happened. Just needs to sit and wait, but Loban asserting himself, not giving up any ground minutes. whatsoever. Both tussling inside of the bomb site. A pixel angle was held, but Loban is exposed to Leaky Fack as long as he has information. The Why should have just stuck that, dude? Off of the plant. Oh, Leaky never mind. <laughs> Okay. Wait. Which one that? Yep. He wasn't even looking at him. They seem to make miracles right when they need to. W7M are coming to form and great calling in that final round. They recognize the BDS. They're I need to see a replay on that. Split across the top couple of floors. So what do they do? They say, guys, let's just hit it through bakery. They had that ram. Usually, you think ram going in through onto kitchen? That's gonna be doing a bunch of vertical destruction. You're gonna be working through the floorboards just for the sound cover, just to get the teammates in. Everybody on W7M working as a unit to clear through that site. They leave Lobin in the one v one, but it's always that trust. It's always the one player that needs to step on the up up for W7M that gets it done they might not care if the crowd's on their side or not w7m have forced a tactile timeout from bds they are two rounds away from being major champions at this point it seems almost unthinkable that bds gets out of this map without overtime which means that the job for them is even more daunting and even more difficult than it shows on the screen bds will have very very limited opportunities to get back into this game. W7M at every Daily perform on Saudi. That's dude. <laughs> honestly when 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 BDS is in Saudi and there's like monstrous amounts of money on the line, there's no better team in the world. There's no better team in the world than BDS. <laughs> disrespect but the old w7m roster casts such a long shadow that these new five players don't get the respect that they deserve solely keeping the most amounts of cash range of only one in saudi i think they won like a major one time too i forgot where montreal at the moment it is manchester that final that seems set up for bds when they let a dark horse from North America get too comfortable and work their way into a final that they had no business winning going into the event, but absolutely earned by 
by the end. They're on the brink of letting it happen twice. A team that didn't even make Manchester in the first place. That was shaking in their first playoff match. BDS is sandbagging? I don't think so, dude. I think they're just choking. They have looked so good, and yet BDS Every win five rounds in a row on the defense to stop themselves. I mean, they do have defense, but this is not that defender-sided, honestly. Ooh, the 2 HP blitz kill. But they have to worry about the clock. Adrenal surge from Dodez. Damage has been done to him. Volt still at full HP. He's got one E, one D left. He'll be able to parry. Bad timing. Oh, why would he peek that while the lion calling? What? They certainly went for broke. Dodez has enough bullets, but he hasn't seen He lion call and then swing. <laughs> I mean, start with a I don't know. We'll BDS see. Get it there. Repelling the rush from W7M, who coordinated quite effectively. The blitz hopping in through the single window, able to get the diffuser down despite the disadvantage, and ultimately that kill acquired by users on the top floor, paying its weight in gold as that man advantage was so tight the entirety of the round. Yeah! One thing's for sure. Yeah! BDS are not going to go out easy. Hmm. <laughs> This is again them switching to the stronger side. They had the choice of what side they wanted to start. Was it going to be attack or defense? They chose to start on attack. I don't think I could ever get that hype for winning a round. They want to run in the second half. They're on defense now. They can start to win more and more rounds as they go through their site rotation, try to catch W7M off guard. When you're in a high pressure kill. situation, as W7M are in right now, it's those attacks sometimes that get the most difficult. This is something that Pengu has said many times. When you're in high pressure situations, attacking is so, so tough because you're the one who's going <gasps> to be yes. We kind of clown on them for maybe picking attack to start. George, if you were in this game, would you rip down all the Christmas back? windows still? You don't get to the places that BDS has consistently um, of gone course. to without. Every round you never back down, kill. never surrender. One thing that really defines these top teams is your ability to stay in the game mentally. Shorthand that we use. Way to be just a chronic 4v5. Resiliency of a team nope. to not let the pressure and the weight get to them. See, look, they have all the windows open. I mean, it's quite the Herculean Good for them. The at the moment. I'm glad they do something that all the rank stars do not. All comebacks have to start somewhere. BDS had a good opening. W7M. The hear that, that dude? Big. Really nice attempt, but you can hear it in the background there. No way, Shiko! The jump out to take down Dash answered right back, and that might be an opening for W7M to gain more map control. The <laughs> way the pros prioritize jumping out of those windows to get picks. Oh, funny to me. See, jumping out. I was I was the, one of the pioneers of that. Okay. Now everyone does it. George, <clears throat> George, I literally was. I was one of the first people to jump out of those windows. There's literally old vods of me doing it. Good night. The vods of me doing it in Pro League like years ago, dude. Like literally in year one. Oh my god. Why are they fist bumping? Fist bumping is for winners. They clearly want to do something to stop this momentum, but they can't find it. W7M now. 
I just want to see a coach do that to a player. He has his fist out and he just looks at him. No. Fist bumps are for winners. What's for losers then? Nothing. Shame. The World Cup, the Esports World Cup. Wait, what was that? To say that has BDS won anything besides the Esports World Cup? Mm, they won a major, I think, one time. Mm. How much money did they win for winning the World Cup? Mm, I think a million? Think. Oh, yeah, they won the Yunkaping major. Yep, I think that's the only one they ever won. Did they win anything else? All they did was push in the last so. three players. Of Wonder how much each player gets after like organization get takes. Uh, they get close a lot and then just seem to. Uh, I don't know about this. They won the August 2020 major in Europe. I don't know what that means. Probably a cut thing. Shego has, I think, the most winnings out of every player. Yeah, but it's because of like it. It he does, but it's because of Saudi. Like Saudi is like the. It's pretty much like winning invite when you win Saudi. And they've won it like three times or something. The gamers eight, a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar prize pool. One dude, like one dude one said real, real men play CS:GO. R6 is for old people. Dude. Honestly, ugh, as an old man, I think we can win it. As an old man, honestly, probably Counter Strike is like the oldest man game that you could play. They saw how much pressure was being committed by BDS on the main floor. They saw how many players were down there. Recognizing that, that means there's probably no roamers on the top two floors, and they'd be correct in that. So they're going to take these floors for free instead. They've still got the buck. They've still got the ram. Just because they didn't find that opening pick over by VIP doesn't mean that they're not going to be able to find a way in through the top couple of floors. They're going to go to a backup plan, and this is one that could work really well for them. There's that pig honk thing. Inside of VIP on the Ella. Oh my god, what is that dude? CSGO is infinitely... Well, it's, it's CS2 now. But Counter-Strike is an infinitely better video game than Valorant. Valorant is a horrible... Horrible shit ass video game. And you are 0 2 in major grand finals back to back, and W7M get their vengeance. The only reason that Valorant even exists as a game is solely through like sheer will from Riot Games. Basically accomplishing everything they want well ahead of schedule. You've allowed I should have the time when we get some first layer of the floor. Valorant is literally for people who are bad at Counter Strike. Like if you're bad at Counter Strike, then like Valorant's probably the game for you. Looks like they're trying to go for a sink plan. Right now, as it stands, this will be a freezer drop. With the Osa holding on People also way overestimate the popularity of Valorant. It is a popular game, but it's... Oh, Curve, I think I figured out a way to get our Pro on my computer. A lot of the thing with, uh... Just remote desktop into, uh, one of the school Oh, computers. God. Wow. Bye, BDS. And that's it. GG easy. Damn. And W7 is not part of the uh, R6 share program. Yeah. <laughs> I have 7% left on these drops, I swear to fucking. Well, at least it's over and I can go to the gym now. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hydra. Mr. Hydra. What's up? Anyone? Um. Maybe. maybe like seven Brooke? minutes, bro. <laughs> Brooke and 13 first. They, they were already minutes. saying they wanted to play, so if they want to play. So, are you playing with a new BB? Mm, that comes out. 
when Test River comes out tomorrow or Tuesday, right? I'm gonna ban that shit. Like, just something about that logo, something about the name. Whatever. It's well, be broken. It just, it's enough. And they keep winning. They might have missed Manchester, but they make it to Montreal and make no mistake about it. W7M was the best team here mm. in Montreal. It looks like he might have a lot of recoil. Three different winners. But I don't know I how true that's gonna to be. See what SI brings for us. We're in for a good time in Boston. I'll tell you that right now, Parker. BDS, they've been to every finals, but it doesn't mean that they're going to be sick trophy. an easy run in Boston. Mm -hmm. They've been looking at this trophy all weekend, and now it's rightfully theirs. Folks, W7M are your champions. Ian, let's hear from you the winners. So happy. My wedge. No changes. It was dubbed the last dance they threw for the beat goes on. on us. Oh are you ready God. to raise your trophy? Ladies and gentlemen, your Blast R6 Montreal Major Champions is W7M! Woo! I'm actually happy they won. That's gonna suck so bad. You're trying to just like police up all the shit from your computer. <laughs> You're just getting confetti rained on you from the opposing team. Hmm. Yeah. That's actually is a really sick trophy. much money goes into or how much do the you see the organ rework really on the floor by the bunks being metal yes uh it should be in my youtube video i'm pretty sure my editors well, put it in there at least i hope they did pool, so major it's got to be like 200 grand at least yeah from your roster was just tenacity it's a nice paycheck to never give up are you at all surprised by this win, considering many saw you as the underdogs against BDS? Yes, I don't really know what to say. That is I a think crazy it's the best trophy. feeling Jesus ever. Christ. Like, like I said yesterday, it means so the two hundred and seventeen thousand. We lost all of those. And then so second place gets ninety-two thousand. We are so happy right now, and yeah, we just Ooh. wanna uh, feel the moment. Third and fourth get fifty-one. Five through eight gets thirty. That's kind of bad uh, between all, like think about if you like play for months you get 30 grand for five yeah. people yeah and your org takes some of it I need to speak to Volk. Take 20 percent it's like a 20 percent would be high i would be like most of them take like zero five percent ten percent i was told that the share is essentially like having another player Mm, depends on the team there were teams that negotiated for us to get zero prize money taken but so it just depends yeah I, I don't know what to say but i would say thank you all the um uh, you also got to think like i don't know what to say so the, so the sonic's got 30 grand but they also just won an additional 30 grand from like not even a month ago it makes it even more magnificent that you've managed to do it so quickly when maybe nobody expected you to. Yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, absurd, absurd. Hey. Jumping, Lobin. <laughs> so uh, I think the feeling is the same. Like I said with Eldinho, he's always said that we, we're here to make our history with our roster. I know they have the pressure because uh, we have three titles here and it's going to be a fourth, like you said, yeah. And yeah, I know he's an uh, amazing... Uh, Look at these guys, they all have sweatshirts and stuff on because that the place is gold. And do you think this is just the start yeah, I heard it's like freezing in there. Of trophies, and how much are you looking forward to the sixth invitation in Boston? Of course, yeah. We, are, we feel, I said a lot of times that we feel like the best team in the world. We show it here, but we have to show it again and again. You know what I want to see again and again? You lifting this trophy. <laughs> so I want you to do it again. <laughs> One more time, Montreal. Give it up for your Blast R6 Montreal Major Champions. W so I wonder who actually gets the big trophy. Um, like I don't know if they let you keep those ones. 
I think your org gets it and stuff. Like the invitational one, they actually like you can't take it. It goes back to Montreal. It's like the Stanley Cup kind of. Hammer. Mm -hmm. Just etch your name in it or something. Yep. Yeah, because don't you have a little small hammer or something? Yeah, they give you like a mini one. I got like a McDonald's toy. <laughs> <laughs> What was the prize pool for that one? A uh, hundred grand, but much lower. First prize was 50K. We each got like 10 grand. That's nothing. What is it now, like two million? Three. First prize is a million now. What the hell? <laughs> that trophy is sick. Now it's time for all the degenerates to go to the bars. Yep. What's wrong with that? Nothing. That's a curse, dude. <laughs> I know. Dude, no, I am Curfew. done so. I am in recovery mode right now. This is awful. <laughs> All I know is that these drops better stay live. I'm going to be streaming a lot longer, so they'll be there. Oh, wait, never mind. I don't give a shit. I already have it. Mm -mm. Quebec. 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 Are you going to play later? Um, I'm playing right now. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much to uh, like one or two, and then go back to sleep. Thank you very much to Ubisoft for allowing me to co-stream the um, major and for the drops. And I'm gonna keep streaming, so drops are still on. Streaming, yeah. Launch my video game. I don't know if I should boot up the main or the all. Mm -mm. The main. Yeah, I kind of want to open up all the esports packs, I guess. Man, well, no balls. Loading up your your alt thing means that you think we're gonna lose. Ain't no losing happening. I don't play any different from my alt to my main. Fire. Just a matter. It's terrible both ways. <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> all right, what's we'll you guys the, expect? The, start the YouTube. Ah, oh, shoot! I've done that. Whatever. The YouTube <laughs> Oh my god. Actually just... oh, YouTube, dying. YouTube slowly, is like slowly dying. The actual <sighs> worst platform when it comes to like live streaming sometimes, <sighs> I guess. Oh, there we go. Do 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 do. 